Supervisors, please take their seats. I hereby call to order the Wednesday, January 15th meeting of the Brown County Board of Supervisors. At this time, oh, be before we go to Vice Chairman Len, for the, for the folks in attendance this evening, if uh, you seek a little more comfort, there's an adjoining room with a television and audio um, on the other side of this wall. You're more than welcome to uh, uh, partake in the festivities of the evening there. Uh, board staff, perhaps, uh, Dan, there's a clicker there for the volume if anyone wants to go in there. So with that, we'll move on to the invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Vice Chairman Lund. Vice Chairman Lund. Okay. Dear God, please be with us this evening as we deliberate issues for the citizens of our community. We ask for your blessings for all who work to keep our citizens safe in, in dangerous winter conditions, members of law enforcement, firefighters and rescue, and those that clear snow off our roads. As always, we ask that you keep our soldiers serving overseas out of harm's way so they can be reunited with their loved ones at home. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, let's uh, begin the evening opening roll call. Supervisor Siebert, thank you. Supervisor DeWayne, if you please engage your device. Thank you. I know <laughs> Supervisor Nicholson is in attendance. Can you uh, please do so? Thank you. Supervisor Hoyer, if you'd be so kind. Supervisor Grzynski is en route from Madison. Supervisor Lefebvre is presumably en route. Uh, Supervisor Erickson, if you will. Thank you. Supervisor Borchard. Supervisor Evans. Supervisor Vanderlees. Supervisor Buckley. Supervisor Landwehr, thank you. Supervisor Dantine. Supervisor Brusky. Supervisor Ballard, thank you. Supervisor Castor. Supervisor Van Dyke. Supervisor Linson, thank you. Supervisor Kneisel. Supervisor Delorier. Supervisor Tran. Moynihan is in attendance. Supervise Vice Chairman Lund. And there you have it, Mr. Clerk. With the board's indulgence, I'd like to amend the agenda this evening by moving 11E after number two. So moved. And we will strike 12A, B, and C. No closed session this evening. So I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended by Supervisor Nicholson, second by Supervisor Duane. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those Aye. against? Aye. Yep, it is approved. We move on to comments. Comments from the public. Please state your name and address for the record. Comments will be limited to five minutes. At the four minute mark, I will give you uh, a one minute warning. We're, there's uh, probably 40 uh, folks who want to speak this evening, and I'm going to keep very strict to the five minute rule. And it's the board's role to listen to public comments and not to ask questions, discuss, nor take action on said public comments. So. Um, for those who haven't filled out, want to speak tonight and haven't filled a comment form, board staff at the front here has those forms. Fill it out and uh, Mr. Process will deliver them to me. In the meantime, our first uh, comment form is from Mr. Jim Pyle. Mr. Pyle, if you please step forward, state your name and address for the record. Uh, Jim Pyle, 2833 River Forest Hills, Pulaski, Wisconsin. Thank you, Mr. Moynihan. Thank Good you, Supervisors. Evening. I'm in here in regards of the uh, Eagle Nest uh, boat landing proposal. And uh, if you notice this year, Mother Nature has been cruel to all the boat landings, up and down both sides, uh, where anything that was exposed to them, uh, they are damaged heavily. Uh, the uh, Green Bay Metro boat ramp is uh, flooded and uh, needs repair. Uh, Bay Shore is totally devastated. And our Swamico boat landing, well, it's, it's, it's small and, we, and there's no way to, uh, to improve on that one because of wetlands. The other issue is uh, all the way around the bay, um, most of the lands are, are wetlands. So the only possible and feasible property that's left is the Eagle's Nest uh, property 
and Beagle's Nest Marina that was there many years ago was a marina, a supper club, and landing. Um, I actually had moored one of my boats there once before um, and was very popular and used quite a bit. With the Eagle's Nest possible boat landing, it would serve a couple issues. It would give us safe haven for our boaters. And as, if, as I mentioned, Mother Nature, you've seen what it did to the rest of our, our boat ramps. That's the only one that is somewhat protected because of the fact of uh, off of uh, Vincent Point, there's a sandbar that runs about five, 600 yards that actually calms down a lot of the waves. And uh, it uh, gives them safe haven for just about majority of all the winds. I also in, in the building industry in my my company, and I've talked to several people uh, about the properties and actually looked at the properties, and we all came up with the same thing. Uh, two people that I talked to are pretty dominant in building in the area, and they looked at it for possible condos, uh, maybe some developments. Um, but the thing that that comes up all the time is where the building is at right now because once it resumes to a new owner all the setbacks and, and ordinances and variances all have to be accommodated with the property the way it sits you couldn't do it once that once that structure comes down there's no way of putting another building on that area because of the ordinance the permits the dnr the wall um, and I'm not sure if there was even oil tanks or gas tanks. I know there was there when we got fuel for our boat. So that would be an issue that nobody really knows about. And until this something happens, we'll find out. But the other main thing, too, is the utilities, the sewer and water and everything goes right down the middle of a lot. And according to all the ordinances and variances, there's no way of putting a building on, on the water side because of the setbacks, and there's also not enough room on the front side with the setbacks. So in order to come in and do something, to build something, it, it would totally be unfeasible. It, it, the cost factor, you would never get it out. And that's why it's been sitting there that long. Plus the unknowns about the building, uh, the building that I seen when I was there, you know, it's... Uh, it, it costs non, uh, very, very high costs on, on even rejuvenating this thing. And uh, plus it's infested with varmints and, uh, you know, considerably, realistically, it's, it should be a health hazard and kind of be condemned is what it should be done. So um, that's pretty much what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do. I'm going to keep it short. I'm glad everybody's here and supported the boat landing, but uh, <laughs> thank you. And then uh, um, less than a minute. So that would be it. Uh, um, like I said, realistically, for, for a developer to come in there and do the property, um, it's just not feasible. So thank and, you, and thank you, thank you, sir. Next speaker, Jan Palmer. Good evening. Jan Palmer, 2040 Elmwood Road. Um, I'm concerned about this sanctuary city law. I understand that gun owners, responsible gun owners, are concerned about the slippery slope. I think I need to remind everybody that in the past 20 years or so, really, there haven't been any more infringements on gun rights. They've kind of only been increasing. I like to think of it as when we think about slippery slopes, it's not a cliff, but it's two sides to a mountain. One side, you're worried about your gun rights going away. The other side, we're worrying about being shot, <coughs> quite frankly. I work in schools. I'm a substitute teacher in a number of districts. I work in grade schools. We have to do intruder drills now. It used to be the intruder drill was get the kids as hidden as you can. Hide them. Hide them. 
run for cover. And then they said, you know what, this doesn't make sense. If a gunman comes in and they find you, you are a sitting duck. You can't go anywhere. So they said, we've got to rethink this. And now the plan is, this is literally what we teach five and six year olds. If a bad man comes in the building, you and you have to try to get out. If there's nobody in the hallway, run for it and hope for the best. If you can't get down the hallway, break a window and climb out and meet us all at the same place. We have a, a designating meeting spot. If you can't break the window, throw anything you have at the bad man. Five, six, seven-year-olds, their defense against somebody with an automatic weapon is throwing their crayons and markers at him. Can you picture this? I have a grandson. He's six years old. I can't picture it at all. And when you say, well, you know, the good guy with the gun, we can't arm every teacher. I'm not going to go out and buy a gun. I don't have the money for it, and I'm not interested, and I feel fairly certain that I couldn't hit the broad side of a barn if I was calm. If I'm scared to death, I'm not going to be able to save those children's lives, much less my own. And I, like I said, I understand the slippery slope argument. I know what you're afraid of, but I'm afraid of my slope as well. I walk into schools nearly every day, and I see these young children's faces. And can you imagine what it's like to tell a six-year-old, well, honey, there might be a bad man. When he does come, we have a plan. We're going to throw our markers and crayons and whatever we can get a hold of. Hopefully you have a stapler that's heavy enough to hit him in the head and knock him out. What do you think the likelihood of that is? What do you think the likelihood is that some small child is going to be able to knock out somebody with an automatic weapon? One more minute, ma'am. Uh, that's, that's my argument there. I understand your slippery slope. I don't think the um, good guy with a gun argument is helpful. It's just not likely. It might happen once or twice, but it sure isn't going to be there every time. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, next speaker, Ruth Feldhaus. I, I'm a nurse, and I worked in the emergency room, and I was head nurse, and I was all kinds of things at the hospitals. And one of the things that I learned in my very first start of nursing was the emergency room. And what I found was that people do dangerous things often without even knowing what the possibility is of hurting somebody. And for us to allow people to carry guns virtually unwatched and expect that that's going to be safe for all of us just doesn't make sense. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't have guns. I'm saying we have to take more action on protecting the use of the guns that might be killing people. So we have to come up with something new as far as how to contain these people when we are saying everybody has a right to bear arms. I agree with that, but I do not agree that you can shoot anybody you want to just because you feel like it or because you're mad or whatever. And I think we have to really think about 
how can we handle that problem instead of ignoring it? People do dangerous things when they have guns that they maybe never intended to do. But if you have the weapon and it's okayed, what are you going to do? I hope I'm not stomping on anyone's toes, but I just want us to be safe. And I hope that everybody thinks about the safety of guns as well as the availability of guns for anybody who wants to use one. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the next form, uh, Barbara Vanden Bogart does not wish to speak. However, she is in support of the Second Amendment language as proposed this evening. The next speaker, uh, Arthur William Marquardt Despins. Please step forward, please. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you for getting my name right. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm new to Brown County. Could you state your name and oh, address yep. for the record? Arthur William Marquardt Despins, the first. Um, 1278 Garland Street, uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm not a public speaker, so super nervous. <laughs> but thank everyone for coming out, and I believe that this is this is what it's all about. Uh, I am in support of the second um, amendment here. Um, this is our rights. Um, it's the rights of all citizens of the U.S., and it's also a humanitarian right. Um, I've been to countries around the world, uh, deployed three times to Afghanistan, have seen what has happened when these rights are not addressed, and they, peace citizens don't have it. Uh, so please protect our rights. The oaths that you took require it. Thank you. Thank you. No, no. no. No, we're not, we're not going to go there tonight, folks. Let everyone speak. Be respectful of each other's position, but we don't need clapping uh, this evening. Uh, next up, David Duquesne. David Duquesne. Oh. Good evening. I'm David Duquesne, 2389 Little Rapids Road in De Pere, Wisconsin. And I have some comments, but I'm probably going to deviate from them somewhat. I went to school in the 60s, and at that time there were no school shootings. And I think a good part of the problem is that, if you've noticed, that the government's closed all the insane asylums. And what they've done is left the people run loose, they drug them. And if you watch TV, you see what these drugs do. Hey, take this drug, but if you have wild mood swings, uh, you feel like suicide, call us. But ask your doctor if it's right for you. Um, as far as this one lady that said in, nobody's infringed, our rights have been infringed. I mean, you've got to get uh, background checks, you've got to things like that. <coughs> now, I guess the question is whether free people should have the rights taken away by the people they elect to office. Now, when the Constitution was written, like the Second Amendment, that they were very careful with the words. I mean, infringed, I looked it up, it means undermined or eroded. Um, militia, they say it's only for the militia. A militia is an organized group of citizens that are in response to either the military to support it or to oppose it. Now, the Founding Fathers, if you go through the Ten Amendments, they're all negatives. Uh, you cannot change religion, I mean, have a state-sponsored religion. You can't take the right to free assembly away. You can't, uh, whatever, you know, and then they get to the keep and bear arms. Now, when the colonists um, passed this and, and brought the Second Amendment in, they weren't worried about losing their hunting rights. They were worried about losing their freedom. And if you watched the news last week, Afghanistan, and I didn't know this, but Afghanistan has a freely elected government. Uh, so they elect a supreme leader. But, of course, the supreme leader doesn't allow any guns. It's pretty much impossible to have a gun in Afghanistan. I'm, not, I'm sorry, not Afghanistan, Iran. Uh, and on the news, I just heard that they had shot in these protests. They shot 1,500 of their own people with live ammunition. 
Now those people have no recourse. And throughout history is littered with people that have lost their rights and they've lost their freedom. And a good example is also Germany. I mean, they passed the law, you couldn't have any, any guns. There was a lot of rioting going on in Germany before Hitler took over and he said, I can end this, and he did. Uh, took all the guns away, he sent out the brown shirts, they had to collect them all up. And then he determined that the Jews were unclean and they should have these showers to get rid of the lice on them. So he sent the brown shirts out to them and they brought them to the shower rooms and exterminated them. So history is full of examples where people have had their guns taken away and shortly after they lost their freedom. And that's not true in every country. But all it depends is if you have somebody like Beto O'Rourke who gets up here and says, hey, damn right we're gonna take your guns. And you got somebody like Tony Evers that says, yeah, I'm behind him 100%. And then you have these people that say, we don't wanna take your guns. We don't wanna take your hunting rights. All we want to know is what kind of gun you have, how many bullets does it shoot, um, how many do you have, what's the serial number, and where do you keep them? So then you elect Beto O'Rourke, and many, many laws that this country has are unconstitutional. I mean, the government has absolutely no right if you go according to the Constitution. The Constitution is all negative. It was written to limit the government. This is the Constitution of the United States, the, the Declaration of Independence, all 27 amendments, and some comments, and this isn't near as, bill as big as the health care bill. You know what I'm saying? I mean, these bills are stand as tall as a person. Now, what's happened, the, the power was, the Tenth Amendment says, everything we didn't tell you you can do is reserved to the states and to the people respectively. One In other words, excuse me? One minute more. Okay, boy, I got lots to go yet here, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the whole point of it is, the government has many things it shouldn't do. Oh, I was getting back to these notes here. The gun safety people, yeah. Um, agree. Well, the sheriff and, I mean, this lawyer agreed last time that we can't, you know, if they pass a bill, we're going to have to follow it. I mean, we have no right whatsoever to um, uh, not enforce a bill. So then you're right back to the brown shirts. I guess you're going to have to send them out to collect the guns if they do it. And believe me, these people aren't interested in gun safety. Gun safety is not standing in front of a loaded gun, not letting your kids play with loaded guns. Or if you're a burglar or a home invader, pick only the houses that have the sign where it says no guns allowed. So I would strongly urge you to pass this bill as you propose. I would urge you to go back to the original, really. But thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, Dr. Randall Pay. Um, good evening. Again, my name is Dr. Randall Pay, and I live at uh, 1006 Mount Blanc Court. Um, I'm a health care professional, and I've been practicing in Green Bay for over 40 years. Um, tonight I'm speaking in favor of making Brown County a Second Amendment sanctuary. Uh, and I urge this board to pass a resolution that's not watered down. It has been said that for evil to triumph, all that is necessary is for good men to do nothing. We are experiencing an unprecedented attack on our Second Amendment, our Constitution, and in general on our way of life in the United States. I hear rhetoric from people like Michael Bloomberg, who wants to be the Democratic presidential candidate, uh, by the way, also the founder and financier of Moms Demand Action, <coughs> Moms Against Guns. He actually stated and this was actually earlier this month, and I quote, we can't let the average American have guns. This is a guy who wants to be our president. This is coming from a man who has 24-7 armed security. A um, little hypocritical, I would think. Um, but of course, he's one of the elite, okay? The, those laws wouldn't apply to him. Um, we are just the little people, and he would feel a lot more comfortable if we were not armed. I also hear from the Democratic left promoting gun control that it's about protecting the children. If we can just save one life, blah, blah, blah. This is, this is, coming, this is coming from the same people who support organizations like Planned Parenthood. Hey, we're not, we're not excuse me, sir, we're not going to be jeering one another. Thank you, thank you. 
who, by our own statistics, have in the last year aborted over 600,000 babies. Let me rephrase that. They murdered over a half a million children. I find it difficult to believe they actually care about the children. The Second Amendment protects the rest. If the proponents of gun control successfully destroy the Second Amendment, what other parts of our Constitution are they going to attack next? How about the First Amendment? Okay, the, the freedom of speech. How about the Fourth Amendment? Uh, the right against illegal search and seizure. Let's, let's pick some other amendments we're going to attack. This is not about gun control. It's about people control. Disarming my wife and my daughters will not make anyone safer. Responding to violent criminal acts by punishing me is like, um, in the words of Clint Eastwood, castrating me because you think my neighbor has too many kids. Let's talk about effective gun control. We heard, I heard it earlier here. Germany, early 40s, the German people were told banning firearms is going to make them safer. It will allow the police to do a better job. And we know how that ended. It was called the Holocaust, the genocide of over 6 million Jews. Do you think that would have happened if the Jews had not been disarmed? I don't think so. Other examples, Russia, China, Africa, Venezuela, Effective gun control results in dictatorship and genocide. Let's look at Venezuela, pretty current. Ten years ago, Venezuela was a vibrant, prosperous, capitalistic economy. People were happy, healthy, and doing very well. The socialists took over and implemented their agenda, including gun control. Now, ten years later, Venezuela has become a third world economic disaster. People are starving and they're rioting in the streets. And guess what? They're being shot down by their own government in the streets. Have you seen the videos? I have. Again, I asked the board to support the resolution to make Brown County a Second Amendment sanctuary. We must resist these illegal, unconstitutional decrees. And in the words of a man called Such, I ask you to be strong, to be of good courage, and long live the republic. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Sandra Stoddard. Sandra Stoddard. Good evening. Good evening. Sandra Stoddard, 4478 Pitco Road. I am speaking in opposition to the proposal uh, to make Brown County a Second Amendment sanctuary. Here's the thing. When other states or our own federal government enact laws to strengthen background checks that would make it harder for criminals or people who are mentally ill to get guns, do we really want them to come to Brown County to get their guns here where our, our um, people would be more lenient if and when laws are passed elsewhere to ban assault weapons, the ones whose only purpose is to kill as many people as fast as they can when those guns can't be purchased elsewhere, do we really want those people to be coming to Brown County to purchase their guns? Come on to Brown County. We'll make sure you have a good supply for you right here. That's what this proposal would do. It isn't doing away with the second, there's nobody doing away with the second amendment. It's, this proposal is extending over what other um, legal bodies might enact. That is what this proposal would do, and is that what we really want in our backyard? Ask your wives, your sisters, your mothers, and see what they think about it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker, uh, Janine St. Marie. Good evening. Good evening, Janine St. Marie, 120 Allard Avenue here in Green Bay. I'm here to speak in support of the resolution unchanged from its current form to make Brown County a Second Amendment sanctuary. I'm deeply concerned about many of the laws being passed in this country. Red flag laws in particular have already cost the lives of law-abiding citizens. Such laws are also unconstitutional, arguably violating provisions of several amendments. I have no wish to see those laws here. However, my support of my God-given right to self-defense is far more personal. In 1993, I was attacked in my own home by an ex-boyfriend. 
He ripped my clothes beyond repair, broke my glasses, and tore out huge chunks of my hair. My life was saved by a man who was on the scene with the tools he needed to stop the attack. The police would not have been able to save me even had I been able to reach a phone to call them. Here in Green Bay, perhaps seven, eight years ago, a group of youths decided to ease their boredom by finding people to beat up. The police caught them, but while they were being hunted, they found four people and abused them quite badly. Among that group were an elderly man, a mentally challenged teen, and a woman caught in her yard and forcibly home invaded. In each of these cases, a firearm on scene might have turned the tables. With no way to protect themselves, four people were brutalized. While the Green Bay PD has done a wonderful job of reducing violent crime in our city, we still aren't the safest place in Wisconsin. There were 267 violent crimes here in 2018 compared to the national average of 207. In fact, we rank 26 out of 100 for safety. I have a 1 in 217 chance of being the victim of a violent crime as opposed to 1 in 338 statewide. While this could be worse, it's still a rotten day for the 1. A firearm can turn the odds in my favor, stopping an attack before I'm brutalized and hospitalized, perhaps even killed. At my age, the last thing I need is a hand-to-hand -hand brawl with someone who is half my age, twice my size, and every bit as trained as I am. There are countless examples nationwide of law-abiding citizens using firearms to protect themselves every single day. Some studies estimate 2.7 million defensive gun uses annually nationwide. This includes domestic violence cases where a firearm was used to stop an attack. Mass shooting attacks have been stopped by armed citizens, the most famous examples being Sutherland Springs and the White Settlement Church. In both cases, body counts would have been much higher if not for the presence of good people with guns. Gun control advocates like to say that if gun control saves one life, isn't it worth it? This assertion is largely unproven. I say that if guns in the hands of law-abiding citizens can save even one life, isn't that worth it? Many lives were saved in white settlement alone. The human heart still has a lot of growing to do. Until that happens, I prefer to keep my access to the best tools available to protect myself and those I love. As the old saying teaches, God created man, Sam Colt made us all equal. By declaring a Brown County a Second Amendment sanctuary, we send a message that our God-given rights will not be infringed. We protect our police officers by not requiring them to enforce unconstitutional laws, and we protect the lives of our citizens. For all of these reasons, I ask this board's support of the resolution unchanged from its current form. One minute. Thank you. To declare Brown County a Second Amendment sanctuary, and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Next speaker, Ronald Zahn. Good evening. Thank you, gentlemen. Ron Zahn, 2811 Legend Lane, Du Pere. I certainly agree with the lady who spoke earlier about the uh, sad situation in our schools when all that children have is crayons and paper clips to defend themselves against an intruder. She was so right. Her solution was so wrong. The solution is not paper clips. It's another kind of clip in the hands of a secretary, a principal, a teacher, not forced on anybody, but those who are willing, trained, and able. As another has said, there are countless examples filling books of guns in the hands of the citizen saving people. And even if there were zero examples, we have a constitution. Some say we have no constitutional authority to take an action like this. And I scratch my head to the point of bleeding. No constitutional authority to defend the constitution? No constitutional authority to stand up for the constitution? The founders were not flubbing around 
when they began the Constitution with the words, we the people. Therein lies the power and authority, not in the hands of an elite, unelected, black-robed individual who may decide this or that. Our defense is in our own hands, according to the founders, wise men who weren't flubbing around. Some say there is no assault on the Second Amendment, so why are we here wasting time? No assault. Let's see. There are gun-free zones all over, but that is not an assault on the Second Amendment. There are whole cities that said citizens couldn't have guns. That's not an assault. Language is being connivingly used. Those who oppose this speak of gun safety. Think about it. Gun safety in opposition to the Second Amendment, or they use orange as a uh, symbol of their activity. Orange typically represents hunting. That's very, very wise, but conniving. Could have been an accident to use that color, but I rather doubt it. And why are there so many cases before the Supreme Court? This session, again, there are gun cases before the Supreme Court. It's because there's an assault on the Second Amendment. No one is proposing yet to simply eliminate the Second Amendment. But they sure are working at chipping away. Some say there's chaos if Brown County is a sanctuary county, but neighboring counties are not. They cannot imagine the chaos that that would result in. Funny thing. When unconstitutionally municipalities across this country declared themselves immigration sanctuaries, I didn't hear the word chaos. Didn't seem to be a concern of anybody that that kind of sanctuary would result in chaos. May I suggest that following the greatest constitution that was ever written on the face of this earth and that has stood longer than any constitution on the faces of this earth is not going to result in chaos. Others have said it's just a political move intended to divide us before an election. I scratch my head even more. A political move defending the Second Amendment? That it divides us? May I make this certain? The division is caused by those who will fight against the Second Commandment in any way. One minute. The one division minute is not the result of those who stand by the Constitution. Less than a minute, sir. That is all I'll take. I could do another hour, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, Kathy Nashus. Good evening. Hi, good evening. How are you? My name is Kathy Nashes at 4461 Annabelle Circle in Green Bay. Um, I am here to in support of the resolution and to have it stand as unchanged to declare Brown County a Second Amendment Sanctuary County. I don't have a lot to say except that it used to be not long ago that you could assume everyone would just support the Constitution and all its amendments. Not anymore. Now we need resolutions to support and to state the obvious, what was written by our founders. I encourage the Brown County Board of Supervisors to support this timely and logical resolution. And as a reminder, as of today, guns don't kill. It's the person that pulls the trigger that kills. And also to remember our freedoms will not be infringed upon. And as Ron eloquently pointed out, especially by blaze orange hunter safety signs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, Dave Racine. Good evening. Evening. 
My name is Dave Racine. I live at 442 Meadow Wind Drive here in Green Bay. Got a couple things I'd like to say. I'm pro the resolution. I've got, uh, most of you are familiar with the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution. That's why I'd like to read to you Article 1, Section 25 of the Wisconsin uh, Constitution. Wisconsin Constitution, Article 1, Section 25, as created November 1998, the people have the right to keep and bear arms for security, defense, hunting, recreation, and other lawful purpose. It's out of the state constitution. Here I've got a photocopy of the Brown County Sheriff's Oath of Office. It's got a signature on it. It's got Judge Tammy Jo Hawk's signature on it. It reads, I, Todd J. Delane, the undersigned, who have been elected to the office of Brown County Sheriff in and for the said county, but have not yet entered upon the duties thereof, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin, and will faithfully discharge the duties of said office to the best of my ability, so help me God. Signed, Todd J. Delane, subscribed and sworn to be for me this 21st day, December of the, in the year 2018, Tammy Jo Hawk, Judge Tammy Jo Hawk, Brown County Circuit Court Branch, <coughs> number three. I expect you folks to preserve the right of the people to keep and bear arms. Thanks for your consideration. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, Linda Clementson. Hope I was close. <laughs> Hope I was close to the pronunciation. You, you were close. I'm Dr. Linda Clementson. I live at 2040 Seeker Lane in uh, Greenleaf, Southern Brown County. We all want everyone to be safe. Everyone in this room <coughs> wants everybody to be safe. That's not what we are arguing about. However, we have different thoughts on why we might not feel safe, why we not, might not be safe, and how to become safer. And I'm not going to go into that because <coughs> that has been stated quite eloquently here uh, by others. Um, if you believe in our rights and our responsibilities in, as written in our Constitution, and in our Second Amendment, I urge you, Brown County Supervisors, to vote in favor of the resolution as recommended unanimously last week by the Brown County Executive Committee. It, uh, as written, it, it changed at the Executive Committee, but um, it, it has no legal standing, from what I understand. However, um, as proposed, it has no legal standing. However, declaring Brown County a Second Amendment sanctuary county sends a very strong message and a message that's easy to understand by our legislators at all levels and by the people that we take our Second Amendment and our Constitution very seriously. Um, Brown County being a Second Amendment sanctuary county needs to remain in this resolution. So I urge you to vote, to keep, do not change the resolution, keep it a Brown County sanctuary uh, county, Second Amendment sanctuary county, and why would you not vote for that? If you believe in our freedoms and our rights and our responsibilities, why would you not vote? To, to declare us, uh, uh, call ourselves a, a Second Amendment uh, sanctuary county. I don't think there's any loss with that, and I s think it sends a very strong message that we believe in our freedoms. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Next speaker, Denise Gomer Hutchinson. Good evening. Good evening. 
My name is Denise Gomer Hutchison. I live at 3184 Herman's Road in New Franken, and I am in Supervisor Dentine's district. I'm here tonight to, sp <coughs> excuse me, to speak against the Second Amendment Sanctuary County Resolution. <coughs> excuse me. I had an opportunity to attend the committee meeting last week where I sat and I listened to a lot of speakers regarding the resolution. I also listened very closely to the county's legal counsel when he addressed many of the components and the illegal elements of the resolution. I then listened to the debate by the supervisors on the committee and their final proposal. What I really heard out of the entire process is that the Second Amendment rights of the citizens of Wisconsin are not at risk. As, a count, as county supervisors, you all take an oath to protect the Constitution of the state of Wisconsin. Therefore, the Second Amendment in the Constitution and in the state's Constitution is more than protected in Brown County. No one is proposing to take away the Second Amendment, and there is absolutely no reason or need for this resolution to create a sanctuary county. The Second Amendment in the Wisconsin Constitution is intact and not threatened. There is no slippery slope regarding the Second Amendment in Wisconsin. Therefore, there's no need for a sanctuary in the Second Amendment. Instead of wasting time on the Second Amendment, which is so protected, there are a number of issues that need to be addressed like Health and Human Services in Brown County, making sure there are enough mental health providers to serve the needs of those in Brown County and to help to get rid of the opioid addiction, making sure everyone in Brown County has access to broadband and great communication services, making sure everyone in Brown County has clean drinking water, making sure it is safe to hunt deer in Brown County and that chronic wasting disease isn't an issue here making sure we are creating a Brown County that is attractive to businesses and economic development. We are a big part of the New North Project to bring new businesses and industry to Northeast Wisconsin and keeping it here. Attracting, recruiting, and retaining quality workers who want to live and work in Brown County and, include, and improve the tax base for everyone in this community. Instead of worrying about a protected Second Amendment as supervisors, please worry about the economic development in Northeast Wisconsin. And finally, worry about quality health care for services for everyone in Northeast Wisconsin. If you want to send a message to Madison that Brown County is worth listening to, then do it for the reason that can benefit our entire community. Thank you very much. Thank and you. please do not move forward on this resolution. It has already been handled by not only our state's constitution, but also our federal constitution. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next speaker, Annalise Wagoner. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm here to speak on something else, a little change of pace. Um, my name is Annalisa Wagoner. I live at 121 Green Avenue in Alloway. And I'm here to speak in support of the proposed ordinance entitled Redistricting Procedure, although I have some reservations. This ordinance was drafted by a committee of county board members and citizens people who volunteered their time over several months. It is disappointing to see that their recommendations and their work have resulted in a watered down involvement for the proposed citizen drafting ad hoc committee. It seems there is a reluctance on the part of some county board supervisors to involve citizens in certain governmental projects. I would argue that we need more citizen involvement, not less. The final, ver the final version of this proposed ordinance puts the major responsibility in the planning department. Even the citizen advisory committee's recommendation during the process have been virtually eliminated. Who is going to want to serve on such a committee with such limited input? 
Finally, if this passes, and I hope it does in some amended form, I would also recommend that in section 1507 of the proposed ordinance, the words, or planning department staff, be added after the word, words, discuss, quote, discussing with the citizen drafting committee. In other words, that elected officials be prohibited from discussing the maps with any of the parties involved, not just the citizen involvement, uh, uh, the citizen committee. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, John Mahan. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, John Mahan, uh, 1035 Butternut Lane, Hobart, Wisconsin. I think I have a, oh, I'd like to speak on the Second Amendment sanctuary uh, proposal. I think I have a unique perspective, uh, though perhaps not the only one. Um, I'm a refugee from California. <laughs> California has all of the gun laws that the anti-Second Amendment people want. And I was looking at the violent crime statistics for my town, for Green Bay, and for cities around the US. And even in the smallest town that I grew up in, not much bigger than Greenleaf or De Pere, the violent crime rate there is four to five times more violent than it is in here, in Green Bay. And that's not even to speak of where I live in Hobart. The, uh, as someone said earlier, the Obama CDC studied gun usage. They estimated at a minimum 300,000 to 3 million defensive gun uses a year by lawful gun owners. Compare that to the 10K murders that people who pass these laws are trying to stop. Mind you, those murders won't necessarily be stopped by gun laws. Those murders would probably still happen in most cases. But they want to take away the tools that women use to protect themselves, that fathers use to protect their children. Wisconsin's gun laws are good in my books by the fact that there's so few of them. But I think it could be better. Texas learned that. Texas learned that gun-free zones are bad. Sutherland Springs was made a lot better by the use of a man with an AR-15 dealing with a threat. But he was hamstrung. His gun was in his car. He had to go get it first. That's precious time. So they learned. And they passed a law allowing for certain people to carry, even in churches. And we saw a white settlement. What could have been a massive massacre resulted in only two deaths. Or was it three? One of, the, one, uh, one of those two. Gun laws make things worse, not better. As someone said earlier, who opposes uh, this uh, statement, the Second Amendment isn't under attack yet, and that's true. However, Virginia has shown that our rights are only ever one election away. One election and your gun rights can be taken away, and we could become California. Look at California. Look at the mass murder, the shootings. Look at the other lascivious crimes that people commit because the populace cannot defend themselves. Do you want to see that here in Brown County? I know I personally don't. I came here for the freedom, and I would hope that you all would try to keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, Jean Sweetland. Good evening. Good evening. Jean Sweetland, 827 Winford, Green Bay. Um, I'm here because of the redistricting uh, uh, ordinance that was proposed. I'm very disappointed in the way the ordinance before you was watered down to significantly reduce citizen involvement. So I urge you to amend this piece to return it to its previously recommended involvement 
of the Citizen Committee and pass this ordinance to call for more input by this committee into the redistricting process in our county. You already sent a resolution to the state recommending a non-legislative process for redistricting. Let's show that we can do this locally and that our local officials stand by their beliefs. Understand that you as supervisors want to hold on to your seats. That is why you campaign so hard. Unless you're sitting in the council chambers, you can't accomplish, accomplish what you want for the county and the citizens of your constituency. If you are doing the right thing for the citizens, you have no reason to fear citizen involvement. They will support you. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Rick Beverstein. Beverstein. Good evening. Good evening. Name and address, please. I, I, uh, I simply uh, want to say, uh, uh, Chairman Moynihan and County Executive Streckenbach, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen, um, I am gaining <laughs> an increased appreciation for the responsibility you all uh, share and the effort and time required to effectively serve the people of this community as their elected supervisors. You help guide an operation, a huge operation, with 12 departments, 1,900 employees, and an annual budget in excess of $230 million. Simply looking at tonight's agenda, there are a large number of significant items to consider. You will be asked to weigh in on some very pressing issues involving, among others, the library, county parks, redistricting, as you've heard, our airport, and as has been eloquently mentioned, economic development. You will face some difficult decisions on major questions that will ultimately impact every one of Brown County's 200,000 citizens. Frankly, ladies and gentlemen, the sanctuary resolution is not one of them. Rather, it's a drain on your time and a distraction from your responsibilities. It has been stated, including a few minutes ago, that passing this re resolution, now modified so as not to be deemed as presenting a constitutional impediment by your corporate counsel, will send a message to Madison. What message would it send? What message can you send? that perhaps 50 or 100 or even 200 people expressed anxiety over what legislation might someday be passed and upheld? Okay, so be it. But if you must, send just that message that a small number of motivated people led by a fellow supervisor expressed some anxiety. However, do not declare this a Second Amendment sanctuary county. The citizens of Brown County have not said that. It's 144,703 registered voters have not so directed you to do that. You have been given no mandate to speak for them on this arguably purely philosophical issue one that was virtually on no one's radar screens less than four weeks ago. In contrast, you've been mulling issues like the Neville Public Museum building for years, and clearly that's within your mission. It's what you should be about. It's unreasonable to put the Second Amendment resolution on the same plane. In that light, and in good conscience, please don't hastily acquiesce to this. I ask you not to pass the resolution. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
Next speaker, Susie Beverstein. Good evening. Good evening. Name and address for the record, please. Yes, my, my husband forgot to do that, yes. so I'll do it for both of us. <laughs> Jeez, Rick. <laughs> Hi, my name is Susie Beverstein. Rick and I live at 5261 Edgewater Beach Road in Green Bay. Despite the last-minute wordsmithing at last week's executive committee meeting that made this resolution far less egregious, I was keenly disappointed by the outcome of the Brown County Second Amendment sanctuary vote. Misinformation and unfounded alarm over reasonable gun laws have led to such resolutions. Proponents demonstrate a fundamental misunderstanding of the American system of separation of powers and of the rights and limitations afforded by the Second Amendment. As the Supreme Court made clear in the conservative Chief Justice Antone Scalia's 2008 majority opinion in the case of the District of Columbia versus Heller. And I quote, it is not a right to keep and carry any weapon whatsoever in any manner whatsoever and for whatever purpose. In that Heller case, the court did indeed protect an individual's right to keep and bear arms for the purpose of self-defense. But in doing so, the court confirmed the legality of, and I quote, the long-standing prohibition of firearms owned by felons and the mentally ill and the legality of laws forbidding the carrying of firearms in sensitive places, such as schools and government buildings. Translation, a bona fide restriction on the Second Amendment. We don't have to look far, for examples, for the need of some reasonable gun legislation. Two weeks ago in Milwaukee, a driver pulled over and opened fire on some pranking kids who threw snowballs at his car. Over the holidays, a former Packer player involved in a divorce dispute sent his religious brothers to a school Christmas concert to videotape his children. Those brothers were armed with firearms and knives. Let's go back to 2006, when three Green Bay East High School students nearly pulled off a mass murder spree at their school. The mastermind of that trio had a shooting range of mannequin heads in the basement of his home. A red flag law may have allowed family members or school authorities to step in before the 11th hour when, in fact, a tip from a fellow student thwarted the plan. No doubt someone in this room had a child or another family member or an acquaintance at East High School that day. The classroom doors, in addition to the outside doors, of my grade school-aged grandchildren remain locked at all times. They routinely engage in intruder drills and mock lockdowns, just as you heard the, the substitute teacher testify. The result is that they are growing up with the fear that someone wants to shoot at them, harm them, or even kill them. Where is our collective outrage? And speaking of that, if, if I may just digress from my, my prepared notes, the gentleman who quoted from the Wisconsin Constitution had the first part of it exactly right, but he didn't read it all to you. So in addition to the right to keep and bear arms for security, defense, hunting, recreation, or other lawful purpose. One minute more. The state constitutional right to bear arms is fundamental, but it is not absolute. The section does not affect the reasonable regulation of guns. The standard of review for challenges to statutes allegedly in violation of this section is whether the statute is a reasonable exercise 
of police power. That's the entire section. Most sensible individuals would look at innocent people being shot and see a problem. What about my rights to safety? To be protected from bad actors who have unrestricted, easy access to firearms anytime, any place, anywhere. A week ago, I heard proponents of the Second Amendment sanctuary largely ignore the ruling in the Heller case, instead pronouncing any gun legislation is unconstitutional. This proposed sanctuary resolution is misguided. I implore my county board to lead with reason, common sense, and respect for the law. Thank you. Please vote no. Thank you. Next speaker, uh, excuse me, uh, doesn't wish to speak, but James Jake is in favor of the resolution. I'm presuming the Second Amendment. Uh, next speaker, Henry Rahr. Henry Rahr. Good evening. Good evening. Um, what my name? Name and address, please. Name and address. Henry Carl Christopher Rahr V, 2920 Crosshaven Avenue, Green Bay, Wisconsin. We've heard this before. The people have the right to keep and bear arms for security, defense, hunting, recreation, or any other lawful purpose. It has been misconstrued by some people here. This was voted in in 1998 by 78% of the population. Listen to we the people. Thank you. Next speaker, Bronson Smith. Good evening. Bronson Smith, 1525 Smith Street, Green Bay. And no, that's not a purpose. The Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms, the well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the key people to keep bear arms shall not be infringed. Notice how all the Founding Fathers kept that short and sweet. They did that intentionally because they thought it was so easy to understand, nor did they lengthen it to, uh, to anything longer uh, because they didn't want to comp... They didn't want to... Want to compl complicate it? When the right, when the when the Bill of Rights was drafted in 1789 and, and ratified in 1791, in the older English wording, well well regulated meant well supplied, because the militia was not a government body. It was not the current day National Guard that answers to the governor or could be nat or could be nat uh, nationalized by the President of the United States. It was we the people. It was average, everyday people. Farmers, shopkeepers, ministers, professionals, yes, and even a few women fought with arms during the um, Re Revolutionary War to, to rid the co colonies of, of the tyranny. They were called Minutemen, people that would grab their weapons at people that would grab their weapons at, at, a mo at, a, at a moment's notice if and when called upon to defend their state or, or country like they did on April 19th, 1775. The founders wanted to make sure that in the future the people would have the ability, weapons, and the means to not only depose a future tyrannical government, but to have the ability to defend to defend ourselves wherever and whenever we needed to. All weapons in the late 1700s were more or less modern military arms of that period. Why, you ask, am I giving you a lesson in 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 um, uh, 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 Mer 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 American history. I'm sorry, I stutter. Um, uh, it's because so many of the anti-gun people have forgotten our history. With all privately held weapons, the United States of America would not even exist. The flag that flies outside on the pole would be the flag of the United Kingdom. 
Now we see a new effort to once again impose tyranny on the Second Amendment loving, law abiding people of the United States of America, which number over 100 million people that own almost 400 million guns and over 1 billion rounds of ammunition. But not by a foreign power, but by our own fellow, our own fellow um, countrymen and women that hate our guns and hate the fact that we as private people can legally own them. They want the government to step in and take our guns away. In the 1990s, it was, it was um, Bill Clinton's assault. The web, 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 weapons ban. Now states like California, New York, New Jersey, etc. are imposing highly restrictive gun laws. And very recently, and very recent, recently in earnest, in Virginia, when the, gover- when, the, when the governor called out for an outright, called for outright confiscations of all guns. Yes, he even floated the idea of having the police and the National Guard go door to door to take weapons from, from law-abiding gun owners that had done nothing wrong. Our current, our current governor, on September 19th, Wisconsin Governor uh, Tony Tony Evers, less than a minute, sir. Attorney General Josh Call, Representative um, Sergeant, and Senator Taylor um, held a press conference. Press conference calling on the state to. Calling on the state. Rep- representatives to vote the Second Amendment um, to violate the Second Amendment by one allowing confiscation of of guns without due process and two by criminalizing private transfers. This is why we are here today because we can no longer trust our state lawmakers. Oops, I mean our representatives to to represent us. We pay our taxes, our representatives get paid by those taxes, then they slowly try to erode our basic rights. That's fine, sir. That's it. Thank, oh, thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Jane Benson. Good evening. I'm Jane Benson, 3672 Hallers Creek Road in Swamico, Wisconsin. I was at the executive committee meeting last week in support of the redistricting process ordinance and to testify against the Second Amendment sanctuary resolution. I'm back this week at the full board meeting in support of the redistricting process ordinance with revisions that should come tonight, and I want to testify against the proposed Second Amendment resolution. When I went home last week, I was distressed by the testimonies of so many people who did not seem to have read Commissioner Delorier's actual proposed resolution. Testifiers talked about, quote, taking our guns, quote, and brought up a lot of situations not relevant to the resolution. The resolution wanted authorization to disobey federal and state laws. That was its root. The title of the resolution, Second Amendment Sanctuary County, is part of a movement across the country that's inflaming both sides of the gun issue. You witness it here. The Executive Committee 7-0 vote in favor of the revised resolution made the front page of the website BearingArms.com the very next day. Mr. Delorier's resolution and process seem to follow the step-by-step method described in the website AmmoLand.com. To quote briefly from that website, quote, such 2A sanctuaries may be symbolic but symbolism can be a powerful political tool, especially with lawmen and local government officials leading the way. As background, Mr. Delorier's website was blocked by Facebook because it, quote, did not meet community standards. That should tell you more about the extreme views he represents. 
He has the following Facebook page post from 13 January, just this week. Quote, there are well-organized opposition efforts to remove the, quote, Second Amendment sanctuary wording from this resolution, even from more conservative members of the board. Hold them accountable. In all caps, your public comment should include that the Second Amendment sanctuary wording be kept. Without it, this resolution is meaningless. Attend and speak at the January 15th meeting of the full county board. Here's one more quote from Amoland.com. Two major Second Amendment organizations publicly threw their weight behind the, quote, Second Amendment sanctuary movement, now sweeping Virginia, Illinois, and several Western states, essentially pouring political kerosene on a situation that already threatens to become incendiary, unquote. I urge you to vote no on this resolution. Keep your cooler heads in charge. Our nonpartisan county board does not need to go down this hyperpartisan, volatile path. This is not about taking away guns. It's about respecting law and order and diffusing an extremist challenge to our county. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Ellen Sarns. On deck, Nancy Schleiss. Let's do it that way. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ellen Sarns. I live at 824 Riverside Drive in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, the orange color that you see that on these cards is the color used by the organization Every Town for Gun Safety. The reason for this, if I can get it back up, why orange? Orange is the color that Hadley Pendleton's friends wore in her honor when she was shot and killed in Chicago at the age of 15. Just one week after performing at President Obama's second inaugural parade in 2013, after her death, they asked us to stand up, speak out, and wear orange to raise awareness about gun violence. So that's why we use the color orange. None of the people that are, that are using these orange cards today are here to take your guns away, <coughs> your guns either. We just want to make sure that the people that do have guns are responsible gun owners. We don't want them to have the ability to terrorize us and threaten us, the rest of us law-abiding citizens. Some county supervisors are responding to citizens' requests to vote no on this resolution by saying that they are supporters of gun rights for law-abiding citizens. They seem to be saying that declaring Brown County a two-way sanctuary county is the same thing as being a supporter of gun rights for law-abiding citizens. I don't agree with that. Creating Second Amendment sanctuaries in Wisconsin gives the impression that co county officials can selectively decline to enforce state and federal gun laws according to some interpretations of the Second Amendment outside the courts. Actually, not enforcing those laws would be illegal, as we heard from the county attorney at the January 6th meeting. We've heard from 2A proponents and members of this board that we are sending a message to Madison in reference to red flag laws and background checks. The majority of Wisconsinites already sent a message to Madison in November when we elected Democrats across the board for governor and all statewide offices. The platforms of those Democrat candidates included support for some limited gun restrictions. The 2A resolution movement is mostly Republican, partisan national movement that would go against the will of the people of Wisconsin if the county approves it. According to the reputable Marquette Law School poll from September 4, 2019, more than 80% of Wisconsin registered voters support extreme risk protection orders and background checks on, on all gun sales. CBS News reports that only 37.4% of Wisconsin voters own guns. Counties that resolve to become Second Amendment sanctuaries are siding with the pro-gun lobby and a small vocal minority of citizens over the majority of Wisconsinites. 
It is my opinion that the Second Amendment sanctuary movement is dangerous. It potentially prevents evidence-based, life-saving legislation from being enforced, and I oppose it. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next speaker, uh, Nancy Slice on deck, Tim Everard. Good evening, my name is Nancy Schleiss. I live at 3540 Highland Center Drive in Green Bay. We have guns in our home. We are also law-abiding citizens who do believe in the Second Amendment. It is my understanding that if you have an issue with laws, the procedure is to bring legal action in the courts. It is not to decide to have local sheriffs and county board members decide if we are going to follow the law. I believe we all must follow the law. I do not support this gun sanctuary implications and resolution having the distinction that the gun sanctuary resolution brings, I believe is wrong and dangerous to Brown County. I ask you to vote no. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Tim Everard with Sherry Howard on deck. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Tim Everard, 3314 North County Road P, New Franken, Wisconsin. I'm here to speak in favor of the resolution. Uh, to make this a sanctuary uh, I agree <coughs> with some of the people <laughs> that are opposing it that I'm sure the board members have better things to do while I was coming here I was thinking to myself why is this even necessary that people are coming out and having to defend the Second Amendment like Abraham Lincoln said, we have a republic as long as you can keep it. And there's people that do want to take away the Second Amendment rights. I grew up in a family that my dad was a hunter. His dad was a hunter. He taught me how to use uh, guns safely and, and that they're not a toy and respectfully. My other grandpa didn't hunt, and I asked him when I was young, I said, how come you don't hunt, Grandpa? And he said, I carried a gun for years, every day. Um, and he said, I'm glad that you like to hunt and you can carry a gun. And he says, but I choose not to right now. And I, I asked him, I said, well, why'd you have to do that? And I was pretty young then. And he said because the people that we were helping had no guns because they had their guns taken away and they couldn't defend themselves. That grandpa was uh, in World War II and he fought in the Battle of the Bulge where 75,000 Allied forces were killed and 120,000 Germans who took the guns away from everybody so that they could control the population. I'd, I would rather that we wouldn't have to have this discussion, but it seems like what's happening in other parts of the country, you might as well get it out in the open and come out and support the Second Amendment because, as somebody else already stated, if good men don't do anything, other people, well, the term is evil will prevail, but other people will seek to take away your rights. So I am in support of this resolution and I hope it stands. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Next speaker, Sherry Howard, followed by Adam Timmerman. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Sherry Howard, 4292 Annabelle Circo in the township of Pittsfield. Uh, thank you for giving me the time this evening. Um, I'm a wife, a mother, a grandmother, a Brown County businesswoman. I'm also a certified firearms instructor, 
and the co-founder of the national nonprofit organization, the Well-Armed Woman Shooting Chapters. We are a group of dedicated volunteers devoted to educating and empowering women for the effective and responsible self-defense with a firearm. Seven years ago this week, I started the very first chapter of the Well-Armed Woman right here in Green Bay. Today, the organization has roots in 50 states with over 350 chapters and 11,000 members. As certified firearms instructors, my fellow chapter leaders and I have dedicated thousands of hours to training women in our communities, doing our part to instill in them safe firearm handling skills, an understanding of the law, and the confidence to use their firearms, whether for self-defense, hunting, or shooting sports. One could say that we are the foot soldiers in the efforts to support the Second Amendment, making sure those who wish to own firearms have the ability to do so legally and with confidence. As our representatives at the district and county level, we are looking for you to demonstrate your commitment to protecting the constitutional rights of your constituents. You are our next line of defense against any erosion of the rights from those whose political agendas would use gun control as a means to greater control over the people of this country. Let's be honest about what's happening here. Never in the history of humankind have gun control efforts been about the safety and the security of the people. And they certainly aren't today. This highly emotional and divisive conversation keeps people distracted and divided while behind the scenes, the conti continuous efforts to chip away at our Second Amendment rights march steadily on. We can throw statistics at this discussion all day long. We can debate the interpretation of the wording of the Second Amendment and the Founding Fathers' real intentions. We can even pacify ourselves into believing that the gun control advocates seeking the highest offices in our nation actually have our safety and best interests in mind. It doesn't change what's happening around us. We as individuals have our votes, we have our money, and we have our words to help us protect our rights. But we also have you. I heard some comments last week at the executive meeting about concerns that by adopting the original resolution, you might be breaking the oaths you took when you were sworn into office. I also heard a statement the other day that might help with these concerns. It was to remember that those who protected Anne Frank during the war were actually breaking the law, while those who murdered her family were following the law. What we are looking for from you is moral clarity. Should the time arise that political waters become murky and you have decisions to make. By signing this resolution, you are sending a message to Madison that the people of Brown County will protect our rights against any and all illegal and un unconstitutional actions. But more importantly, you are reaffirming your commitment to us, the people of this county, the very people who put every one of you in office. We want to know that you have our backs we don't want to be out there worrying about this. You're going to see and hear any potential problems that come down the pike long before we were, we do. One and, we, and we want to know that you have our best interests in mind. I ask you to think about the message you will be sending with your votes tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker, Adam Timmerman, followed by Lauren Keenan. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Adam Timmerman, 1789 Grant Street, Apartment 7, De Pere. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate your time and I apologize for taking up your time. Uh, the reason I'm here is, as I stated last week, I have some sincere concerns of what is going on in our nation as a whole. I, it seems as though many people aren't aware of things that are going on in Virginia right now, and it deeply concerns me, and that is why I am here. Uh, I do not anticipate any current 
gun legislation being very infringing and the thought that preventing future shootings, I, I deeply do agree that that is something we should try to do, but these are the people that aren't following the laws. These are the people that don't care. And so what I ask of you is to show support for the Second Amendment sanctuary as a show that Brown County will not tolerate any infringements upon the Second Amendment as it stands. And I had a couple notes here in that Merrill officially is a Second Amendment sanctuary city, I believe now, from what I read. Florence County has already supported this as well. And Ebers had said some pretty concerning things in the beginning of this of 2019 in that he would be supportive of a gun buyback and red flag laws and such and so that is also why I'm here and I also am in opposition to a separate topic which came up tonight uh, with the Eagle's Nest. I do not believe that should be developed. I believe if possible we should support that going towards a boat landing. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, Laura Keenan, followed by Cheryl McCutcheon. Hi, um, I'm Lauren Keenan. My address is 102 North Broadway in De Pere. Um, so I'm here to speak on redistricting. Um, so I'm extremely supportive of the work done by um, the redistricting subcommittee in order to um, essentially change and eliminate gerrymandering in um, Brown County. So I am supportive of the redistricting procedure as proposed with two exceptions. Um, so first, in 15.05 um, of the drafting procedure, um, I would recommend that um, base the Citizens Drafting Ad Hoc Committee um, shall recommend one of these maps for passage. And then also um, in 15.05, 06 um, that the recommended map shall be voted on prior to any other map being voted on um, because otherwise what is the point of having citizen involvement if we're not going to consider their maps first um, before any that can be drawn by anyone in power so thank you thank you uh, again sorry it's Cheryl or Sherry McCutcheon Cheryl. good evening Hello, my name is Cheryl McCutcheon and I live at 3430 Shady Lane in Swamico. I wanted to share my support for the redistricting ordinance on tonight's agenda. I'm a citizen member of the subcommittee that drafted the original ordinance. As I've learned about redistricting over the past two years, it seems obvious that citizens want to ensure a fair and unbiased approach to how voting maps are drawn. A January 2019 poll conducted by Marquette University Law School found that 72% of likely voters, including Republicans and Democrats, say they would prefer to have maps drawn by a nonpartisan commission. Additionally, in the fall of 2017, the Brown County Board of Supervisors voted to adopt a resolution requesting the state legislature to pass legislation that creates a fair, nonpartisan procedure for the preparation of state legislative and congressional redistricting plans. I feel this ordinance will deliver those objectives at the county level and I'm asking you to approve it with two adjustments. Contrary to the changes the executive board made at the January 6th meeting, I'd like you to include at the end of 1505, the citizens drafting ad hoc committee shall recommend one of the maps for passage, and second, in 1506, the recommended map shall be voted on prior to any other map being voted on. Without these steps, the citizens' participation is basically symbolic. Please demonstrate fair maps leadership by passing the Brown County Ordinance with the citizen involvement included. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Linda Patsky, followed by Ken Bonwine. Good evening. Good evening. 
feels good to stand up and stretch <laughs> around. Uh, my name is Linda Patsky. I live at 5252 Norway Drive, Pulaski. It's in the town of Pittsfield. And um, I am a member of Moms Demand Action, which I kind of think maybe it should be Demand Action Moms, and it would be damn. <laughs> But I'm a grandma. I'm a mom and a grandma. I have number seven coming along uh, January 22nd. So uh, I am going to, I have my, what I want to say, but I want to uh, respond to some of the misconceptions that were stated that are just terribly wrong. And I feel it's just this decrepit uh, propaganda that's out there. I mean, we have to use our brains, you know, we have to sift through. Start really researching things. Don't just, oh, go to what? I don't know. Is it Fox 11? I don't know where you get your information, but moms demand action, as you see, is for gun sense in America, common gun sense laws. Not to take guns away from people, no. Moms demand action started in the model of mad moms against drunk driving. Do you know how many lives mad saved? Do you know we have work to do on that yet? Do you know that in Brown County? Are there still drunk drivers all out there? Don't we have work to do? Ah, moms get mad. Grandmas get mad when people who are supposed to be caring about my Kids and my grandkids don't care. And I'm talking to the gentleman who said, oh, he doesn't think we care. Okay. Not only am I mom's demand action, I stand up against bullying. I care about kids. <coughs> See the able, not the label. Special education kids, I care about kids. I care about the environment. Who are the people who's not, not doing anything for the environment? Who are they? Tell me who they are, who deny that there's even a problem. You tell me who cares about our kids. I'm going to quote from a Newsweek article. I just looked this up. I mean, you can, all, you can look up things. And this is from the state of Illinois who are passing these sanctuary. Oh, okay, while designers... Now, this is from Newsweek, April 20th, 1918. While designers and supporters of both resolutions for these becoming a sanctuary county for all firearms, they said they are meant to create a safe haven for people who want to bear arms. But both groups acknowledge that the bills are largely symbolic. Oh, largely symbolic. Why make a big hoopla? Distraction. I've heard the word used, distraction. Who are those people who want to distract us from the real issues? If I would have known that, you know, I, I want to be here speaking about the redistricting too. I didn't know we could do two things, but I'm going to let you know I support what uh, <laughs> Miss Sweetland said because, yeah, who's taking away from the real issues? Who's doing that? Uh, ads by the board members who helped draft the measure told Newsweek that the resolution served two purposes to irk the progressives by borrowing the term sanctuary from immigrant rights bills and the second one to reassure gun owners that county leaders have not been swayed by the recent surge and gun control activism. One minute more. Oh, I'm not, well, I'm going to tell you what that word sanctuary does to me. It's blasphemous. Look up the word sanctuary. It's regarding a holy, sacred place where people can go. It even says to experience peace. Somebody said about twisting the words all around the language. Who's doing that? Sanctuary. There was a George W. Bush who used the words shock and awe when we bombed the hell out of Iraq. And they didn't even have anything to do with the, what, what he was being accused of. 
awe, wonder and awe. Those are gifts of the Holy Spirit. Who took those words, religious holy words, and used it to build up their support? Who's taking that word sanctuary? That's five minutes, ma'am. Sanctuary. Thank you. Look it up. Next speaker. See what it really means. Next speaker, Ken Bondwine, followed by Lee Roy Schlorf. Good evening, sir. Good evening. <clears throat> Ken Bodwine, 853 Knoll Terrace, Deep Beer, Wisconsin. This country is a constitutional republic. The Constitution is the law of the land, and it clearly states in the Second Amendment the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The purpose of this sanctuary city or county legislation is to send a message to local, state, and national <coughs> lawmakers and representatives that we, the good people of Brown County, <clears throat> will not tolerate nor comply with any infringements on our rights, including, but not limited to, red flag laws, magazine restrictions, banning of certain types of firearms, gun buybacks, etc. With that being said, I strongly urge you to support this resolution without any change to the wording. Anyone who is willing to sacrifice freedom for security deserves neither. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your time. Next speaker, Leroy Schlor, followed by Taku Ronsman. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. I'm not a professional speaker. C could you state your name in uh, Leroy Schlor, Jr., 1416 Riverdale Drive, out in Hobart. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I really didn't have anything planned for speaking, but as more information from both sides of the argument. I prefer to stay somewhere in the middle of this, but I would have to unfortunately lean for those that are against it. Uh, I would prefer that we would be more in tune for sticking with our constitutional values of how we started this country. Yes, I agree that we had muskets for starting off and things have evolved and progressed through technology and doing very well in keeping ourselves armed as best as possible. Yes, I know we have fabulous law enforcement, but when seconds count, I don't have minutes to wait for them to arrive. Um, whether it's for myself for protection or to even help out my neighbor that may be in distress. We all have a responsibility and or duty to help out one another. We have all done this through many hardships of whether it's been in our communities of, uh, well, for instance, over this past summer of our fabulous weather that we've had, of our farmers having hardships of flooding and <coughs> other residents having property damage from our great mother nature. But we've all banded together. As stressful as it has been, we've all made it work. And I ask that we all really look deep in how our Constitution is written. And as oddly enough of my hat being of don't tread on me, I respectfully ask that we do not tread on not only my rights, but the other rights of my other fellow citizens. And uh, please vote for, as written, for the Sanctuary Amendment for the county, and thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, Taku Ronsman, followed by Deb Hutchison. Good evening. I just need to get organized, but I'm not an organizer. Okay, my name is Taku Ronsman, 1688 Beaver Dam Drive, Green Bay. Okay, uh, this is a real hot potato topic. Obviously, I'm going to talk about the Sanctuary City proposal. And uh, I've been thinking 
a lot about how our country is very divided right now and we're getting ready to have an election in November with a country that's split down the middle. Us against them and red against blue. And I keep thinking, uh, how can we kind of uh, work through that instead of dividing us more and more? And it seems like the sanctuary city um, I, I actually agree with Linda, but I, I um, kind of calmed myself before I came here so I won't be yelling and uh, angry because <laughs> when I'm angry, I say stupid things. So I'm uh, feeling good right now, and I'd like to say that um, I do believe in sanctuary um, uh, having a sanctuary county, but not for for guns because the Second Amendment is already in force, and it does seem like a distraction for us to, d to keep us divided, and it seems silly and kind of laughable, which reminds me, yesterday I was watching Donald Trump in Milwaukee. I mean, I wasn't there. I was watching him on TV, and part of the time I wanted to laugh, and part of the time I wanted to cry because I see this really sad... Um, person that's obviously very insecure saying silly things about uh, our, our dishwashers and drip, 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 and this and that, and, and it's like, and, and, and then people cheering and cheering when he says mean things about people that are different from him, or, or saying ridiculous things about our um, legislators, that they're traitors, etc. And I'm thinking, who, oh, Where's the sheriff? Stop my time clock. I, I stopped it. So anyway, I want you to know I have no animosity toward Donald Trump, and I have no animosity toward Republicans that vote for him, but I do want to see our nation heal, and I want to see us starting to get along. So if you want to have a sanctuary county, I'd like to see a sanctuary county free from gerrymandering, a, a sanctuary county supporting sustainable practices like uh, the Green New Deal, uh, free from Russian hacking of our county voting machines, and I'd like to see, I'd like us to revisit making City Hall be gun free because um, that is an allowable, it, that was, is constitutionally allowed. And I was thinking too, when people were talking about um, how, how people like me that um, want the Second Amendment to mean um, what it says about a well regulated regulated militia be necessary for a sec security of a free state to interpret it th that the militia is to um, support the government, not to fight the government. And I feel like the people, the people that want to bring guns everywhere, they seem f really fearful of everybody around them. They're, they're afraid somebody's going to shoot them. I guess that can happen uh, no matter what, because if you have a gun, somebody can have a, a hand grenade, somebody can have a bomb, somebody can have a knife, somebody can have poison. I mean, we, I guess we should be fearful every second of the day, but um, I've decided we're all going to die sometime, and I'm going to enjoy my life, and uh, whatever happens, happens. One minute more. So... I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I want, I want the county to really think this over, not make any um, rash decisions. There's this city lab online, citylab.com. They talk about gun controls laws that work the best in the United States. And I want, to, I want you to start thinking about how can we make, instead of mega, make America great again, we're already great, we've always been great, we'll always be great even in spite of all our differences, let's think of MACA, make America kind again. So here's, I'm going to leave you with this little ditty, and I hope it haunts you in your head tonight. And this, go, this is dedicated to my fan, Andy Nicholson. Here, here. <laughs>
<laughs> Let us be kind, be kind to one another. Let us be kind, we are humankind. Be kind, be kind, we are humankind. Be kind, be kind, for we are humankind. Yeah, that's five minutes. And I'm done. Thank you very much. Hallelujah, amen. Next speaker, Deb Hutchison, followed by Ed Forrell. <laughs> I should have dedicated it to John too because he's my he's my supervisor. I don't recall that. Oh. Hi. Hi. Good evening. My name is Deb Hutchison, and I live at 1140 Livingston Street, Green Bay. And I'm speaking in opposition to this. I've lived here for 32 years with my family, and um, it's been a great place to raise families. It's been a great place to work. We have beautiful recreation all around us. We have unique environmental features like the bay and uh, Bear Creek and woods and um, great bike trails. It's just a really nice, friendly place that a lot of people want to move to nowadays. It wasn't always like that, I don't think, but it's changing. We have friends who hunt. We have friends who are Republicans, Democrats, independents, all different kinds of people live here. We have seen a resurgence um, over the last 30 years in great theater, great music, art. We've seen an interest and support in the importance of local and healthy food. Uh, people are talking about these things now. Uh, you, you know, we're not a place unto ourselves. We're moving forward. We're excited about the future. We're proud of our natural resources and taking care of our surrounding environment. Young families are proud to build their lives here with their children. And Green Bay is gaining a reputation as a go-to place to live. We want to attract young, educated families that enrich Green Bay, that stay in Green Bay, that bring good things to Green Bay. This resolution, to me, the Second Amendment Sanctuary County Resolution, is embarrassing. We have a Second Amendment. Amendment. It is in place, but tweaking it is perfectly what? normal. The guns are different. We have more people. We have more guns. There are more different situations. The Second Amendment's intact. Uh, you know, making changes, tweaks to it, is perfectly normal. So this sanctuary idea is not going to give Green Bay a better reputation, a safer reputation, a more popular reputation. Young families will hear about this and think twice about coming to settle in Green Bay. People already living here will have to live with the embarrassment, frankly, of passing this measure. We need to think bigger and to be better examples to our children and to the people of our state. Vote for the future of Green Bay and vote no. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Ed Forrell, followed by Jason Cray Ranger. <laughs> Sorry. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Edmund Forrell, 2219 James for Avenue, Green Bay. I want to start by um, thanking the supervisors for taking the time I appreciate the intention of the um, making the declaration, the resolution. Um, I would like to offer some constructive um, feedback on it and maybe some suggestions on how I personally believe it could be improved. Uh, to me, uh, at first, at first read, um, and then putting it in context with other counties, uh, other resolutions in other states, it seems to be more reactive than proactive. Um, I think it would be more productive if it would have the verbiage of what it's really trying to accomplish. And the fear is um, things that are happening like in Virginia, where there's a threat of confiscation without due process. With um, Wisconsin has a process where if somebody's a threat to a domestic partner, a threat to public at large, a threat to themselves, a judge could um, 
produce an injunction. They could be either taken into custody, their firearms would have to be surrendered, and then they would be offered a hearing to say their part so that there would be a due process. Um, taking it another step, you know, that's the goal, eliminate that. I appreciate that the supervisors want to make a statement regarding Brown County being um, a county that supports a right to keep and bear arms. And I believe that's where the focus should be. Um, trying to say a Second Amendment sanctuary um, is very vague. It's hard for to come out of that which actionable steps, what are we gonna do moving forward? And I guess some suggestions were, would to begin with some internal housekeeping in Brown County. Um, there's a ordinance 8.07 um, which is residual, didn't get cleaned up after Wisconsin changed their statutes. Um, kind of a synopsis says, no person shall carry or have on their person any firearm unless it is unloaded and encased. So here in Wisconsin, we have state preemption. Um, any polit political subdivision may not enact an ordinance unless it is similar to and no more stringent than Wisconsin state law. Um, it wasn't in 2011 when concealed carry was brought into place, but it was a year or two later where Wisconsin got rid of the state prohibitions of having a firearm in a state park. And that eventually went towards, you didn't have to be a licensee. It was, uh, the, the prohibition was removed. So now political subdivisions with those ordinances on the books should really be cleaned up. Uh, taking the next step, um, in the in the, declar in the resolution, um, it mentioned that Brown County believes the right to keep and bear arms to be inalienable. So saying that another way, um, it's a right, it's a liberty that we hold sacred, it's self-evident, it's naturally endowed by, uh, to us. We're not given that right by, the, by either the Second Amendment or the Wisconsin State Constitution. They merely affirm it and protect it. Um, so it's not only ordinances and laws that the Supreme Court would rule as infringing on the Second Amendment. Um, I would suggest that we also take a look at current, either if there's ordinances or Wisconsin state laws, which are curtailing our right to keep and bear arms. As an example, um, federal gun-free school zone. Um, One minute more, sir. Okay allows an exception for licensees to possess a firearm on school grounds. Now, I'm not suggesting that we open up our schools and, and uh, unregulated necessarily allow people to carry, but as a parent um, and, and other parents, right now under Wisconsin law, we're subject to a felony charge, even though we're licensees, if we were to pull into the parking lot to either drop off and pick up our child. We're not leaving the confines of our car, but under Wisconsin state law, uh, that's prohibited. They don't recognize the exception under federal law. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, Jason. <laughs> Please do. Uh, followed by uh, Nick Alam. Go ahead, My sir. name's Jason Cravenger. I live at 640 Kids Row. Um, I just want to start out with saying that every gun law is unconstitutional. Shall not be infringed is pretty brief and clear in the way that it was written. Thomas Jefferson said, the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. I wanted to also make a note that if this council doesn't also nullify the National Firearms Act, the Gun Control Act, and every other infringement, you're not really a Second Amendment sanctuary. It's just half-assed pandering, pardon my language. 200 years ago, we had a 3% tax on tea, and that's what led to the Boston Tea Party and eventually a revolution. Now, we pay for dog licenses, fishing, hunting, trapping licenses, property taxes, income taxes, Social Security, wheels taxes, registration on our vehicles, and a multitude of others. Our founding fathers would have been shooting by now, and that's a fact. I'm not here to ask your permission with the Second Amendment Sanctuary City because I am not going to comply regardless of the decision. You know, I listened to your bullshit hey, and sat quietly, hey, so I'd appreciate it. I'm going to cut you say. off, sir, please. Now, Epstein did not kill himself. Taxation is theft. 
and anyone that votes against this is a tyrant. Thank you, sir. Nick Lam. Nick Lam. Nick Lam. Moving on. Uh, the individual does not want to speak. Stephanie uh, Toot. <coughs> Against the re uh, resolution. Carl Koenigs. Carl Koenigs. David O'Neill uh, does not want to speak, supports the legislation. Polly Olson does not want to speak, is in favor of the resolution. Stephanie Tust, Tust does not want to speak, is against redistricting resolution without more citizen input. With that stated, is anyone else in the gallery like to speak under open comment at this time? Oh, please step forward, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Please state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Carl Koenigs, and I reside at 380 Rainbow Drive in uh, Marinette, Wisconsin. Actually, Pestigo. Um, I wanted to speak to the reason why we have the Second Amendment law. The story that I'm going to give you is set into record as evidence by the discovery of the Bundy Ranch family and several other patriots who fought for constitutional law and order. In 2014, I went down to fight for the rule of law, particularly the Tenth Amendment law and the six, actually seven, constitutional laws that expressly prohibit the U.S. government from owning or managing any land in any territory that's been transformed by Act of Congress into a free, independent, and sovereign state. Th approximately 3,000 men, women, and children went down to Bunkerville, Nevada to fight for the rule of law, for the Constitution for the First Amendment and the Second Amendment and all the rest of the amendments in the Constitution. We were confronted with 213 battlefield dress U.S. government agents from several different agencies. We had learned later in court from BLM whistleblower Larry Wooten that they had a kill list. This is in the court record and a part of discovery. We have reason to believe that Larry Wooten Memo 2, which was not made public, was going to say that they were green-lighted to start shooting the 3,000 men, women, and children out there. The American Militia Freedom Forces of the Second Amendment Law, operating under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 15 of the Constitution, tactically outmaneuvered the U.S. government and those murderers out there. And we... Uh, put them in a, in a situation where they had to surrender to us and beg us for a safe escort out of the area. We saved the lives of up to 3,000 men, women, and children out there who were standing there with the Bunny Ranch family to protect the Bunny Ranch family and to protect the Constitution for all the people of America. We were protecting their lives, their liberty, and their property, and we saved them. That is the purpose of the Second Amendment law. It's not for hunting or any of those sorts of things. It's not even really for personal defense, but defense of our life, liberty, and property. And if we don't have a sanctuary city in this county here, this movement to destroy the Second Amendment law, let me also tell you this, in the, at Bunkerville, they actually built a uh, free speech zone, which was a, an area surrounded by some uh, hills and stuff like that, and it had an orange fence around it and you're only allowed to have your First Amendment right inside of that area. And that brought a lot of people from states around to um, enforce the Constitution. Uh, so what I'm telling you people is, if, we, if Brown County doesn't provide for the sanctuary city and we lose our Second Amendment right, we are going to lose all of our rights, we are going to lose our lives, our liberty and our property. The U.S. government killed one of my friends, shot him in the back three times. His name was Lavoie Finnicum. Why was he shot? 
he was shot uh, behind. He was driving his vehicle along. He was going 450 residents of Grant County, the next county over from the Mellier Wildlife Refuge, asked him to come and speak about the Constitution. They set up a military L-style desk stop behind a blind curve in the Oregon wilderness. One minute more, sir. Okay. They stopped the vehicle. They were shooting into the vehicle and shooting out the windows on the way down, and that was the U.S. government and the Oregon state state troopers at that pl at that <laughs> place. And this is all on video on YouTube. You can watch it. I would like to also refer the board to the true story of gun control. It's called Betrayal of Innocence, and it's on YouTube. I would ask that you review that, and it'll tell you about the history of gun control and how, and how it has resulted in the, the stealing and robbing and usurpation of powers and liberties that are, were, were given to us by, our, by God our, himself. And so um, I'd ask you to look at that and also look at the Lavoie Finicum uh, recordings because Shauna Cox, a close friend of mine, uh, was recording inside the vehicle when the windows were getting shot out and they were getting and they were praying that there were two girls in the car and they were praying for their very lives. That's five and, minutes. Sir. And that's what the Second Amendment is for. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Sir, you wanted to speak? Please state your name and address for the record, please. Um, hello, uh, my name is Scott Jemski. I'm at 441 South Quincy Street. Apartment 108, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54301. Um, yeah, um, I guess um, I don't quite agree with like a sanctuary city type of thing. I know people in my past might not like that. Um, I was really young, thought guns were cool, whatever. But um, I never owned one. Not that that matters. Um, but anyway, um, I, I recently a couple of years ago I started. I came across a book. Oh, History of the Second Amendment. Oh, should maybe I could read one of those sometime. So I read this book um, um, by her titled Loaded, A Disarming History of the Second Amendment by Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz. Um, that also I came across a, an article in UC Davis Law Review, Volume 31, Winter 1998, The Hidden History of the Second Amendment by Carl T. Bogus. <laughs> um, but in uh, Dunbar Ortiz's book, Loaded, a, a Disarming History of the Second Amend Amendment, she writes that the um, she just wrote that the the word militia in that amendment did not mean um, um, states and national guards, but rather um, militias that were formed to in, at, the, at the first states and as well as the colonies previous to the states militias that were organized to go out and kill Native Americans and destroy their livestock and and their crops. Um, also, um, as slave patrols in the southern states. Um, UC Law Davis also talks about the, the slave patrol issue. Um, to me, that's a pretty interesting history, um, <laughs> or an inter interesting take on it, I guess you would say. Um, yeah, and um, she said that the, um, the militia did not mean states' militias because that was dealt in the Constitution proper, which was um, written a number of years before the Bill of Rights. Um, I think this is an interesting history that at least maybe friends would. I'll, no matter what the view, we might take a look at at least. Um, basically, about white supremacy. Um, yeah, um, with the our um, Native American um, friends now. Um, back then, it was not. It was not just an issue of like, you know, neighbors not getting along. It was. It was not domestic violence. It was, in, you know, international violence. Um, then Bar Ortiz writes a couple things like about about. Um, well, this stuff, um, I guess we have, she already said we have belief that guns are a source of political power rather than wealth. Um, those that dominate the economic and social order, um, they like make sure that some um, symbolic power sedates those who actually have little financial leverage and thus extremely limited political power. The gun. Um, and then guns, as purely utilitarian for settlers, um, this belief is not actually so. She says it's illogical to assume that that away the immediate sense of power and domination that firearms offer, power to kill and control other human beings. Um, also, in this day and age, I guess she writes uh, that the uh, firearm became a representation of 
of ongoing racist domination, a kind of war trophy, not just of Native peoples and their territories, but of African Americans and the world. Um, when I've read Demar Ortiz's book, um, and I believe that um, she came out on um, gun control or not, but um, she, I do remember reading that she had came to the conclusion that um, all these school shootings are not going to end until U.S. Imperials men's, um, all these lies for wars, whether no matter what party is in power. Um, I guess that's almost about it. I guess there, I also came across an article by Fair, Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting, about how the NRA rewrote the Constitution. This article is in 1996, September 1st, um, by uh, Howard Friel, F R I E L. One minute more, sir. Um, this article talks, it was in 1996, talked about how for the previous 60 years, the Supreme Court had, um, excuse me, the Supreme Court had, had always uh, not decided that the Second Amendment was an individual's um, right to bear arms, but like, that is like the state militia for the you know, previous 60 years up to 1996. But the Supreme Court, or the, uh, NRA being a in industry um, lobbying institution, um, supporting its industry wants to sell more weapon, more items of its industry, so they push that. Um, but yeah, I think the main thing is Dunbar Ortiz talked about it. The militia is not, um, sorry, <laughs> the word militia is not really about National Guards, but killing Native Americans and slave patrols. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else from the gallery? that has not addressed the board thus far? Uh, Elvin Meyer does not want to speak, but is against the sanctuary county legislation. Is there anyone else who has not addressed? Please step forward, sir. State your name and address for the record. Uh, Steve McAllister, 850 Kellogg Street in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Thank you all for being here. Um, I'm asking for your support for the Second Amendment Sanctuary. Thank you for uh, bringing it up. Uh, I, I find it interesting, you know, we're, we talk about a slippery slope or chipping away at the at the rights that, that we have. Um, congratulations, your Facebook account was taken down, so your freedom of speech is being limited. It happens, folks. Uh, we need to reaffirm the Second Amendment. It would be great if we could step up, send that message. We all have messages we want to send. The orange signs over here, they're sending a message. We need to step up send that message to Madison saying we don't want to have to go through what we went through in Virginia or what they're going through over there. So I'll be asking for your support. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else from the gallery who has not addressed the board would like to speak? Please step forward. State your name and address for the record. My name is Jerry Johnson. Uh, I live at 1120 Sandstone Court in Green Bay. Um, I'm a retired police officer from the city of Green Bay, 30 years of service. I have also trained out at Northeast Wisconsin Technical College, and I'm a Department of Justice trainer, uh, firearms trainer, and I've trained thousands and thousands and thousands of people uh, to safely and responsibly carry weapons, uh, some of which are in this room, actually, and none of which have ever inappropriately used a weapon. Uh, I think uh, I, I stand in support of this Second Amendment resolution to send a clear-cut message to uh, our our um, uh, the governor in um, Madison that we in Brown County stand behind our lawful citizens and we want to support their ability to be able to protect themselves. Um, one gentleman hit it right on the head when seconds counts uh, police officers are minutes away. Uh, I think it would shock a lot of people in this room to to know actually how many police officers are patrolling your city streets at any given moment uh, with budget cuts and whatnot and, and um, minimum staffing requirements. Uh, again, I, uh, citizens need the ability to protect themselves responsibly um, uh, until the police are able to uh, arrive and assist them. So, again, I speak in support of the Second Amendment. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Please step forward, sir. State your name and address for the record. 
My name is Ron Defner. I live at 470 Cottage Grove Avenue in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm here to voice my support for the passing and approving of the Second Amendment uh, Brown County Sanctuary County Bill, County Bill as proposed. Um, as everybody knows or has seen on TV over the last few years, um, virtually all the mass shootings have happened in gun-free zones. Uh, the, the shooting at the church in Texas just a few weeks ago was tragic, and two people and the gunman died. Um, but how much worse would it have been without the church's security team? Um, the gunman was stopped in six seconds from the time he first pulled that gun to the time he was engaged in, and, and finished that assault was six seconds. As the police officer just mentioned that Police don't get there right away, and seconds count. Um, I know people who have concealed carry uh, licenses, and they are not any kind of threat to anybody. On the contrary, I would trust, I trust them with my life. If they saw me in trouble, they would come to my defense. And I would say that they would come to defense of anybody here that they saw that was being assaulted, attacked. They would lay their lives down to help their fellow citizens, no matter what, you, what, you, what your standing is on issues. We all have inherent human dignity and a right to life. Um, guns save lives. Uh, as one other person said, and I've seen the statistics too, too between 500,000 and 3 million, uh, um, there's def defending their rights, defending their families, defending their property, 500,000 to 3 million times a year, people stop crying. And the police aren't there, otherwise the police would be doing it for them. Um, the Second Amendment Brown County Sanctuary County Bill uh, affirms, I believe, it just affirms that all citizens have the right to bear arms. I mean, history is full of examples of governments restricting and then taking freedoms from their citizens. Uh, Germany was in chaos after World War I. And they were desperate for a solution with all this chaos and economic turmoil. And just, it was, it was crazy. They had dozens of, of political parties and nobody could get, get along. Adolf Hitler wrote that the people would be willing to give up almost any right or liberty if it is framed on the premise that it is for the good of the children. Well, his party took control, and then they took the guns, and then they took the lives of over 16 million people, plus all the other ones that died in the actual battles. The Sanctuary County Bill just reinforces that every citizen has the right to be able to defend themselves, to defend their families, to defend their property defend their neighbors <coughs> and um, I just uh, I'm here in support of the second amendment sanctuary bill as proposed thank you sir thank you anyone else from the gallery like to address the board who hasn't addressed the board previously anyone else anyone else last time moving on we move to 11 e uh, resolution declaring Brown County to be a Second Amendment Sanctuary County. Supervisor Delorier. There was four comments that I was asked to make on behalf of the... Oh, please do, under All right. comment. All right, first one is from Daryl and Victoria Sobeck, 1810 Oak Hill Drive, Green Bay. We would like to give our opinion on the Second Amendment Sanctuary. As taxpayers and residents of Brown County, we are in support of the Executive Committee approval without any further weakening and requesting the Second Amendment Sanctuary County language remains as written. Kindly present our opinion to the Brown County meeting under North Jefferson, Room 203, Wednesday, January 15th. Daryl and Victoria Sobeck. 
second one is from Andre Jacques, State Senator, Wisconsin 1st District. I'm unable to attend the county board meeting tonight due to the legislative obligations in Madison, but I want to thank you for your leadership in introducing a resolution to declare Brown County a sanctuary for our Second Amendment rights in accordance with the United States Constitution and, quote, right to keep and bear arms for security, defense, hunting, recreation, or any lawful purpose, unquote, under the Wisconsin Constitution. I commend the executive committee in unanimously supporting this declaration and declaring its opposition to unconstitutional laws. The current form of the resolution, which I support fully, consistently and cohesively, achieves your purpose and pushes back against attempts by state and federal lawmakers seeking to usurp our freedom and I urge its passage in its present form. Sincerely, Andre Jacques. Next one. John Mako, Representative 88th District. Chairman Patrick Moynihan, Brown County Supervisors, the Honorable Troy Streckenbach. Dear Chairman Moynihan, Mr. Streckenbach, and board members, Wisconsin has a strong history of support for our Second Amendment rights to bear arms, not just for sport and hunting, but also defense. Our main hearing room in Madison is called the Grand Army of the Republic, the GAR hearing room. On its walls and ceiling are listed the wars and skirmishes from the Battle of Sewell's Point and the Battle of Boonville to the Battle of Chattanooga and the Battle Chickamauga in which the Wisconsin militia has served. If you have a chance to tour the Capitol, please be sure to visit the GAR and acknowledge the individuals who have stepped forward to defend our way of life. Although there are those in executive branch who seek to amend our constitutional rights, Wisconsin remains fortunate at both chambers of our current legislature, as well as our current Supreme Court, have consistently supported and defended those rights. However, that may not always be the case, and therefore I support the Brown County's board effort to reiterate our Second Amendment rights here in Brown County and Wisconsin. To be sure, there are those that would mean public harm. Wisconsin is diligent in, in its efforts to prevent that. The Wisconsin Department of Justice, as well as the National Instant Criminal Background Check System, consistently ensures that all background checks are conducted so that those who have not, those who have lost their Second Amendment rights are not able to purchase a weapon. Our law enforcement agencies work behind the scenes along with Homeland Security in identifying and investigating those that would mean us harm. Additionally, the Wisconsin legislature has strengthened the straw man law, preventing an eligible person from purchasing a weapon for an inel ineligible person. As such, thank you for your leadership in reaffirming our Second Amendment right. Sincerely, John Mako. Shea Sortwell, Second Amendment District Representative. I am writing in strong support of your resolution to designate Brown County as a Second Amendment sanctuary. Our constitutional rights are the bedrock of our legal system and the proud liberal tradition that began in 1215 with the Magna Carta. Recent attacks on the Second Amendment are disturbing and must be opposed. So-called red flag laws are in direct violation of our Second, Fourth, Fifth, and Sixth Amendment <coughs> rights and their corresponding sections provided in the Wisconsin Constitution. Contrary to counsel David Hemry's claim, it would violate a supervisor's oath of office not to support this message. Elected officials take an oath to the Constitution of the United States and the state of Wisconsin, both of which recognize the inalienable right of the people to bear arms without reservation. When politicians pass laws that are in direct violation of the Constitution, such laws are not laws at all. They are, by definition, unconstitutional. It is the duty of all elected officials and officers of the state to uphold the constitutional rights of the people against such measures. In our Republican form of government, it falls on those elected bodies closest to the people to protect their rights when the powers are assumed which have not been delegated. In this instance, our county officials, the sheriff, the municipal officers have the solemn duty to refuse to enforce unconstitutional red flag laws, just as our Wisconsin Supreme Court and legislators refuse to enforce the un unconstitutional Fugitive Slave Act in defiance of the federal judiciary. Our system is not a free-for-all in which politicians can invent themselves new powers or abridge our rights. That is the very purpose of the Constitution's restrictions on government power. As Thomas Jefferson stated, quote, in questions of power then, let there be no, let there be, let no more be heard of confidence in man, 
but bind him down from mischief by the chains of the Constitution, unquote. Representative Sorwell, thank but, you. Okay, the comment period is over. The resolution is before us. You have the floor, Supervisor Delorier. So I think I owe this body a little bit of background on why I brought this forward. It was not to divide the community. It was not to divide this body. I have deep personal interest in the Second Amendment. I have deep personal reasons for my vehement defending of it. Um, I believe everybody who spoke tonight has the same goals. I believe we all are interested in safer places. Without, with, with, we all have a different perspective on how best that be done. I choose to my vehement support of the Second, Second Amendment because of personal safety, defense of my home, my property, my family. Now, that may be very different to anybody else. It may be different. It may not, it, if, I, if I didn't want to have anything to say, it doesn't mean that I would give up my First Amendment right. And some people don't have guns who spoke tonight, don't hunt, don't have a gun for self-defense or any other means. But they still defend the Second Amendment because it's part of the Constitution. Our founding fathers had the clarity to put it in for many reasons, better articulated than I ever could tonight. I believe when I brought the original proposal to the Executive Committee, I knew very well the more controversial portions of it would be pulled, and I was fine with that. I wasn't married to the language. I was looking to have this Brown County Board make a strong statement to state and federal legislators to protect our state against what is happening in Virginia. And I thought the very astute amendment by Chairman Moynihan was appropriate. I immediately fully supported it. I believe it boils it down to the very essence of what I'm asking for, is a declaration and how we define it in this resolution is simply an affirmation of both our state constitution and the U.S. Constitution. It does nothing more than that, but it is a voice. The declaration is where the power is. And without the sanctuary declaration, this truly is meaningless. There is nobody here that would say, I'm against the Constitution. Of course we support the Constitution, but where the power of this action is in the power of numbers of counties across 18 states doing the same thing. I got a lot of calls from supervisors who were objecting to the word sanctuary. The reality is when you read the actions that have been taken across these 18 states by counties, the overwhelming vast majority of them are very sound legally, very logical and cautious, much like the amendment that Chairman Moynihan brought forward. It distills it down to the very essence. There are outliers, very few outliers. If you read actually what these Second Amendment sanctuary uh, resolutions entail, it's very much like the one we have in front of us. And if we don't tend to the constitutional rights we have, they will go away. Virginia is a perfect example of what is possible. And people say, well, why are you dealing with this in Wisconsin? What's the problem here in Wisconsin? The problem is in the words our state leaders are using in the debate of guns. The governor of our state has been very pro-gun control, lowering the standards for confiscation, red flag laws that would take away a person's ability to get due process, supports a mandatory buyer or gun buyback, which is the most incredible euphemism for a gun ban. And there's five bills sitting at the state legislature that are stalled. But like was very clearly articulated tonight, that could change on a moment's notice. That could change on a whim of the governor with an executive order. That could change on the basis of an event that would happen. It could change overnight and it could change through an election. 
To try to overturn a law once it's passed is nearly impossible. My engagement on one particular issue for the last 16 years is absolute proof of that. To try to overturn even a obviously very biased and flawed law is nearly impossible once it's done. This resolution is here to protect the Constitution and protect like what was said tonight, and everybody interprets the CDC numbers differently, but let's just take a low number and a high number. The CDC uh, report said between 300,000 and 2.5 million defenses, defense, defensive uses of guns per year. What about the value of those lives? Yes, the mass shootings are egregious, and they're done by criminals who shouldn't have guns for the most part already. We already have protective laws. What about the defensive gun uses that levels the playing fields for those who cannot defend themselves without a gun? They have rights too. A gun is only a danger when the person who's using it is insane. Defensive gun acts are incredibly important to this country, incredibly important to me. Um, I ask that we look at this, what is actually in front of us, and not a lot of, on both sides, a lot of the more extreme talk tonight on both sides, that we look at what's actually before us. And it's very calm, logical, and I think prudent. And I think if there is any question to the, the necessary declaration, Without it, this is meaningless. The whole resolution was to declare a sanctuary county and to define what that means to us, just like counties across 18 states have done. They have tailored their wording to their people's needs. So I, I truly encourage you to look at what we're actually voting on. Uh, this is not intended to divide. I'm not partisan. I've never been to AmmoLand.com. I am not a Republican. I am not a Democrat. I have voted for both. I look at the quality of the person who I vote for. I am not partisan. This is not a partisan political stunt. I am not running for office again. I get no political capital from this. I ask that you seriously take this under consideration, and I ask that you uh, pass the amended version and uh, protect those that use guns defensively, protect those rights of the people of the United States. I can't even believe that the topic of supporting the Constitution is now so divisive. It, it is utterly amazing to me that we would have such divisive talk about a simple reaffirmation of the Constitution. Thank you. With that and, and I will make a motion for passage. Thank you. That's what I was about to ask you. I have a motion made by Supervisor Delore to approve the resolution before us, seconded by Supervisor Castor. Under further discussion, Supervisor Evans. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll state I am a gun owner. My fiance is a gun owner. I know how to use a gun. I've shot guns, of course. My fiance has. I'm also a certified Alice instructor to lock, during, lock <laughs> alert, lock down, and form a counter and evacuate. I wish you didn't have to to be one, and I wish we didn't have to train people on how to make sure that children are safe in schools, but that's not what we're going to be talking about here tonight. What we're talking about here tonight, and let's, let's just put it on the table. You know, you guys know me. I upset a lot of people because I always like to get to the heart of things, and I always like to speak the truth. So why are we talking about the Second Amendment? What do we have, like 27 amendments? But tonight we're talking about the Second Amendment, and we're having this discussion in the United States here in our state, now in our county. Do you know why? Because gun ownership is under attack. That's what it's about. There's a faction of people that say, I want to keep my handguns or my guns. And there's a faction of people that say, we've got to get rid of guns at all costs. You know why? Because there's some bad people out there that have killed people. So what we have to do is get rid of every single gun. That's what it is. I mean, who's going to argue about gun? I mean, the Second Amendment. But that's what it is, Mr. Chairman. You can stand up and say everything you want. The fact of the matter is, gun ownership I, it, is okay. under attack. Uh, gun not, ownership not, can, can you, is you, under attack. And say they don't like it because it's the truth. And the truth is always what hurts. And you say it. 
Gun ownership is under attack, and that's what it is. This is the Second Amendment. It's been around for a long time. We've got guns. That's what it is, right? So let's all put the cards on the table. Let's talk about the real subject. Some people don't want you to have a gun. That's what it is. This isn't about, oh, we've got to have more laws here and there about making sure people can you know, pass some sort of test or background. We have that in place. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. Knives don't kill people. People kill people, right? There's all sorts of things like that. Right, so that happens. So we have to keep that in pro in, in check. We have to understand what we're really talking about, and that's what we're talking about tonight. Is our second amendment? We have to reinforce that here in Brown County. It's sad that we have to vote on the second amendment in Brown County to say we support it. That's sad. I, I feel bad about that. But what happened is it's been under attack. And if you don't think that guns can be taken away, a lot of you know I do international business, thirty countries in the world. I used to go to Venezuela. It was a beautiful, and somebody mentioned it, a beautiful country, and the people, everything. And then it went toward more of socialist thing. And then guns are taken away. And now I can't. I won't step foot in the country because it's so dangerous. I go to Brazil. I had a company in Brazil. Just sold it. Been to Brazil forty-five times. I've been shot at in Brazil. Do you know gun ownership in Brazil is illegal? Individuals, in citizens cannot own guns in Brazil. Guess what? There's a whole mess of people in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and Rio de Janeiro that have guns. And they get them, and they get them illegally. And it's dangerous. And don't think that, if you think that can't happen in the United States of America, you are incorrect. Because it can happen. And it can happen by an assault on our Second Amendment. And so... That's what we have to do. We have to protect, unfortunately, we have to protect our Second Amendment because gun ownership is under attack right now. I, there's so many things I could talk about. But, you know, it, like how do you stop a bad guy again with a good guy? We took the six seconds. We've heard everything like that. So l let's just get it out on the table. If you support gun ownership, if you support the Second Amendment, then this is easy. This is simple. You vote yes. There's no, there all these machinations about everything around it that, to say, oh, well, don't support the amendment. No, that doesn't work. No, this is what it's about. You either support it or you don't, and you support gun ownership in the Second Amendment, then you say, yeah, this is great. We're reaffirming the Second Amendment. So I'm going to support this. I support the right. I support the Second Amendment. I think it's great. I think that we can consider, I don't know, why, sanctuary county, I don't know why. I mean, everybody should be supporting this. We shouldn't even have to be doing this. But since it's here, I guess we do it. But, but let's talk about the real reason, Mr. Chairman, and that's gun ownership is under attack. So I'm supporting this, and I hope everybody else does, and we can just move on to do what the other gentleman who was against it said, and he's absolutely correct. We should be talking about other things, and we really should, because there's other things that we can talk about, you know, that are more pertinent, but this is important. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank support you, this. If you clear your lights, sir. Next speaker, Supervisor Sinan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I am a gun owner. I've had guns since I was 13 years old. I have a concealed carry permit, and if somebody comes to my home, the first thing I'm not going to do is call 911. Okay. Um, with saying that, I am very much a proponent of the Second Amendment, and um, I've listened to the parties here this evening talk about their interpretation of what this means as far as being a Second Amendment sanctuary county. The different interpretations of it proves part of my point that I will get to as far as it is very unclear on what a sanctuary county means. But there was one lady that uh, said you should look up the definition of what sanctuary is, and I did so. Um, it is a place of ref refuge or safety it is also a religious or holy place where someone or something is protected or given shelter, where people who are in danger from other people can go to be safe. 
the resolution that's being written that's written up refers to um, the opposes Brown County opposes the enactment of legislation that would infringe upon the constitutional rights of people of Brown County to keep and bear arms. It says nothing about a place of refuge. It says nothing about a place of shelter or protection. I also went online and looked uh, because I've talked to several people and the connotation about sanctuary has many meanings to many different people. So sanctuary is not a legal term, but it's a general term often used. There's no single definition for it. More than over 300 jurisdictions do not fully comply with federal immigration efforts and there are differing policies and laws among them. Most uh, sanctuaries areas are related to immigration, so it's got a stigma attached to it. Sanctuary can be a city, council, or state. It is when the laws tend to protect undocumented immigrants from deportation or prosecution from federal authorities. Procedures can be by law, or they can be by action, can be a low priority or all immigrants. It li can limit cooperation with federal immigration and enforcement agents. The local government and police protect undocumented immigrants and refugees. These are all different portions that could be in the, the definition. It makes it unlawful for local officials to ask people about their immigration status. Law enforcement cannot question crime suspects about the immigration status. And local police are forbidden from detaining people for the purpose of checking on their immigration status. Some areas m must follow certain police procedure procedures that shelters illegal immigrants. These procedures <laughs> are despite federal immigration laws and refuse to designate tax dollars for enforcement of immigration laws. Most of those are a lot different from what we're talking about as what is specifically identified in the proposal that says opposes the enactment of any legislation that would infringe upon the constitutional rights of people of Brown County. We are merely taking the position of opposing. The use of the word sanctuary has a negative connotation, and by definition, it does not meet what we are talking about. And as it was said, that this reaffirms, okay? This is really a Second Amendment reaffirmation county ordinance. It's not a sanctuary county ordinance. So with saying that, I would like to make a substitute resolution or amend it that this goes to the advisory referendum regarding whether Brown County should be declared a Second Amendment sanctuary county and let the residents of the county decide this issue. Um, it is an issue that is really not within our jurisdiction the, as far as enacting a law, we can definitely uh, voice our opinion on it, and by doing so, it opposes any legislation that would infringe upon our, the rights. Um, and one change in the wording of it is that um, upon the, to get a definition more meaningful, just a couple of words would need to be changed in it and such that after a Second Amendment Sanctuary County insert meaning that Brown County and then continue with the rest of it opposes the enactment of any legislation that would infringe upon the constitutional rights of the people of Brown County to keep and bear arms. So that's, I make a motion that we do by substitution or amendment uh, 
to put this resolution for a contingent referendum regarding whether Brown County should be declared a Second Amendment sanctuary county. I have a motion made by Supervisor Sinnon to amend the resolution. Is there a second? Second by Supervisor Van Dyke. Under discussion. Mr. Chair, can I yep. Uh, just to clarify, Supervisor. Can you use your microphone, Corporation Council? Just to clarify, Supervisor uh, Sinan, uh, are you also asking to strike the word sanctuary so it would read a Second Amendment county? I did not ask for that. Uh, if people are so hung up on the word sanctuary, um, I don't care as long as it's defined. In my preference, it, it should probably be a reaffirmation, but um, there seems to be a lot of wind behind the sails to just keep the word sanctuary in there. Just clearly define it so it doesn't become totally distorted. Okay, we have a motion by substitution or amendment uh, Mr. to. Chairman? Yes, well, is Super. Is that the one that was on our desk but with some changes? He made some change. Well, someone put this here. If, if I may, uh, prior, prior to the meeting, a alternate resolution entitled Resolution for a Contingent Referendum was passed out on all the supervisors' desks. That is what Supervisor Sinan is referring to, but he just made one proposed change. That's why I asked. I just wanted to call you. Where's the change? Where's the and his change is on the top of page, uh, the second page. Uh, his change is to the question that would go to referendum. Uh, after his change, that question would read, should Brown County be declared a Second Amendment sanctuary county Comma, meaning that Brown County opposes the enactment of any legislation that would infringe upon, and the rest stays the same. So basically, he is placing a comma after county in the first line. He is striking the word that, and he's replacing the word that with meaning that Brown County. Yes. And that's what we're debating. Yes. That's my understanding that's of Supervisor Sinan's motion. Basically, motion by substitution with what is provided before us. Okay. You clear your light, Supervisor Sinan. Supervisor Lefebvre, on the motion by substitution. Um, I was going to mention on the other one, too, but um, I would like to speak on that. Um, well, we have to dispense of this yes, first. Yes. Um, I do uh, support uh, Supervisor Sinan on this. Um, I feel that we just have a small sampling of our you know, for and against that are here tonight. I mean, very minuscule. We have, what, over 100,000 people in our, you know, county, so uh, close to 200,000. So I think this has to go before them all. And I also uh, question the uh, sanctuary. Uh, if I can put in, um, I also went on um, online and I went to the Webster Dictionary definition, and the one that's really it talks about the religious and all that, but the most important one is um, under 2B, the immunity from law attached to sanctuary. From law. So actually what you're doing is you're saying, it, it doesn't say some law, little law, this law, that law. It says from law. So actually what you're saying when you're putting sanctuary in there, you're saying you don't want any law to say we can't have the guns, which is contrary to our law. <laughs> we do have a right to do some restrictions. Thank you. Thank you. Clear your light, please. Uh, next up, Supervisor Erickson. Thank you, Chairman Moynihan. Um, I received a lot of emails and phone calls, and this is it, similar to, to tonight. It was running uh, close to 50-50. Sometimes it depended on the day. This has been going on for about a week. And uh, I, would, I didn't count it exactly. I'd say there's just a slight edge right now on, uh, in favor of uh, on, the th on the items that I received. Now, I'm going to take us back. 
probably about two years or almost two years when the marijuana uh, topic was up. And we spoke about it, and I look into the audience, and I commend all the people that come, because whether you're pro or con on this subject, uh, many times it takes courage to get up and speak in front of us and in, and speak in front of your peers also. But uh, there were good points made on both sides. And it's, it's, I don't know if it's fair to some of the people or even the whole county because we've probably had uh, 50, 60 people probably that came forward and spoke. 56. Uh, 56. See, I'm counting pretty good here for a lame duck. But, but, An old man. but we take I, I I I take that as an insult, old lady. But anyway, oh. uh, hey, wait, whatever. Throw me out early. Just keep paying me. But uh, you're going to get me off my subject here, and then I, I'm going to take even longer. But I'm as, timing you. Yeah, I know. Five minutes. So uh, as everybody spoke. And like I said, I made reference to the uh, the marijuana topic. Uh, people finally came forward, and as they spoke, with only 56 people in the gallery speaking in favor, uh, asking 26 people to make a very important decision that I feel, uh, and Supervisor Delore, I feel, uh, but we're speaking for roughly 250,000 people in the county, uh, what is 144,000 registered voters, uh, 60 and 26 is 86 people, uh, and not even all in favor of. So if we had half, we're, you know, we're talking 50 people that are influenced this one way or the other. And the idea of the referendum, and in the November election, we're going to, that's the biggest uh, voter turnout that we have uh, every four years also, but uh, I think we'll get a good uh, feeling for the general, from the general public as to, as to how they feel about it. And as a gun owner, uh, concealed carry permit owner, uh, that's, my, that's my private life. I don't go around flashing weapons I you know uh, I'm not carrying right now I never carry I, I have a concealed permit for a totally different reason but point is I think the referendum is a very good idea uh, in a former life I actually had a job and I spoke I had a lot of police departments that I that I sold to and I remember after an incident that made national news I spoke with a uh, one of the chiefs, and he said, you know, people are talking, let's take guns away. You know, he said, let's take assault weapons away. He said, he talks to police officers and, and chiefs and captains and sheriffs all over the country, and he says, and the definition of an assault weapon is a weapon that someone assaults another person with. It can be any kind of a weapon. He said, if you try to completely take weapons and remove them away, People will still get weapons. He says the easiest way to do it, if you think about it, is to walk up behind a police officer with a ball bat or a brick or something, hit them on the head, take their sidearm. If they have car keys, go to their trunk, remove a shotgun or a rifle, whatever, and now you've got weapons. So let's put this before the voting population in November and get their opinion. I don't think this body as a whole has the right to say we're going to do this or we're going to do that without a non-biased opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Clear your light, sir. Supervisor Landwehr. Thank you, Jim Moynihan. Uh, looking at, at this, I appreciate the work that was done at the executive committee to clean this up and, and um, change the language. Uh, <laughs> tweak it and such I would have had some issues with the original language with that being said I believe with if if this thing were sent to referendum um, it's going to send a couple of messages it's going to send a message that we're afraid to take a stand on it or vote on it which I so and um, also I, I 
think it also confuses people that once they vote on something, just like with the when we did the marijuana one, that they think that it has some sort of um, actual standing or effect or a law change, where this obviously, as a referendum, would not have anything. I would much rather that we vote on this tonight and then encourage the constituents to to remember that this really is symbolic at this level and to really make this and, and support the Second Amendment long term you have to keep the pressure on the state and the federal representatives. That's where that's where this stuff is actually where the teeth are to it. So with that tonight, I would ask that that we uh, vote no against the motion for referendum and instead vote on it tonight. Thank you. Thank you, sir. To clear your light, please. Supervisor Linson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I guess I have some concerns about uh, the referendum as written. Um, I, I, and it, it goes to some of my concerns with all this stuff. I, I think the question as it is is uh, rather confusing uh, to the public, and, and I don't think it, me it has a clear meaning to the public, and I have some concerns about that. Some people brought up uh, the marijuana issue, and, and I think there's some key distinctions with regards to how this referendum is crafted versus that one. Uh, the marijuana, I, I think this board rightly recognized that it didn't really have any authority to uh, address marijuana laws or, um, you know, restrict funding for marijuana enforcement. I, I mean, there's other ways I could have gone about that are more analogous to what's being done here. Uh, what was decided is to do a referendum uh, to gauge uh, the public's opinion on a topic and provide that information to the state legislatures who actually hold the power to, to handle those types of laws and these types of laws. Um, and if there was a referendum being uh, proposed on, uh, you know, does the public feel that uh, no gun law should be in effect, that some reasonable re legislation should be in effect, or uh, all guns should be taken away and we're just taking a poll of the public, then maybe there's a place for a, a non-binding re referendum on something like that. Um, but to ask the, the general public to comment on a Second Amendment sanctuary county, which is words that literally have no meaning. Um, I, I, they, they don't have any meaning. It, it reminds me of the, the, there's the episode from The Office where uh, the main character comes out and declares bankruptcy, and everyone just kind of looks at him like, that doesn't mean anything. That's exactly what sanctuary is in this context. It doesn't mean anything. It's a it's a buzzword that's thrown in here, and and I understand it had some meaning when there was uh, additional uh, uh, resolutions that were included in the original uh, uh, resolution, but those don't exist anymore. So it's just a hollow word. It doesn't mean anything, and we're asking the public to vote on something that literally doesn't mean anything. So I don't. I don't think the ref a referendum on this particular topic as written is appropriate. I also have an issue with the same thing I had an issue with the marijuana referendum is uh, these types of elections, I, I, I don't like them being on the fall general election, presidential elections. I think the marijuana one was on a, a midterm election. November. It was a midterm, yeah, well, mid yeah, it was yeah. a midterm election. Um, well, yeah. go, but go but my, my point being is that I, I think in that case as well as probably this case, uh, uh, not, not that that was necessarily the intention of the people that drafted it, but there would definitely be people who take advantage of that and use that to try and drive turnout. And I think there may be a large group of people who may use that uh, for not the purpose it was intended. So I, if we were going to do any resolution or refer, I'm sorry, referendum on, on this particular topic, I would also ask that it be pushed to, to one of the 2021 elections. I, I'm not aware of any pending legislation that's about to be passed. I, I know people keep claiming that everything's under attack, everything's under attack, yet no one cites an actual bill that they want us to weigh in on. They're, it's just a bunch of hypotheticals and uh, what I see as fear mongering uh, among people who are afraid that that legislation is going to take place, there's no movement on that in the legislature. And with how divided our legislature is, I don't, I don't foresee that coming to fruition anytime soon. At least not uh, that quickly. Um, so I guess I, I oppose a referendum um, as written. 
I would reconsider that if someone wanted to amend it, but I'm not going to make that amendment. I just think that would be a more appropriate topic for referendum if we're going to go that route. Thank you, sir. If you clear your light. Next up, Supervisor Gazinski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I um, appreciate the uh, comments from my uh, other uh, colleagues in the state legislature. I wish they could have uh, made it back as well for this uh, meeting this evening. I think it's an important topic. Um, it's not the right to keep and carry any weapon whatsoever in any manner whatsoever for whatever purpose. That's a quote. Um, I wanted to state that quote because it's not from some, uh, it's not from anyone this evening. It's not from some liberal state legislate, uh, legislator. It's from Justice Scalia, definitely not a liberal, uh, in a majority opinion uh, in D.C. versus Heller. And I bring that up because we had quite a few constitutional scholars speak to us this evening. And um, I wanted to make sure that um, we were actually leaning on the highest court of the land when we were thinking about this decision um, as we were moving forward. We've heard quite a bit about background checks and ERPOs uh, being unconstitutional or infringing on constitutional rights, yet uh, our Supreme Court of the land has not stated that those things are unconstitutional um, and, have, and, and that decision have pointed to very specific cases where um, we should be looking at these sorts of pieces of legislation uh, as we move forward for additional protections. Um, I'd also like to point to when we have this discussion about ERPOs, when you look at other states around the country where um, Indiana, also not a liberal bastion, has had this on the book since 2005, and, and yet that hasn't been challenged either. So, um, I mean, I'm a gun owner. I take those rights incredibly seriously, and if this was just reaffirming the Second Amendment, I'd be all on board for that. But that's not what we have here, and I think the executive committee did a nice job moving forward, stripping some of the un unconstitutional parts of this language, but as long as this moves forward and still contains the sanctuary language, to me, it's a delineation that goes a step beyond what we're trying to do here if it's just reaffirm the Second Amendment. Uh, by con continuing to keep that sanctuary language, we're saying that something else is happening here, right? Uh, that we need, for Brown County, we need protections that are going above and beyond what our Second Amendment rights are stating. So um, I, I take great issue with that, with um, the way both this uh, resolution is written for a referendum question, but then also what was uh, brought to us this evening. Um, I believe that we can have we can make common sense reforms, but at the same time, very much protect our Second Amendment as we move forward, and that should be the direction. Um, also, we traditionally start these sorts of resolutions with big ideas, right? And then at some point, they get distilled down when we send these resolutions to the state. I've I've helped draft a few of these as we move forward as a body. And eventually we get to the point where we're naming out specific pieces of legislation. And I think that would be appropriate. If this board wanted to take an up or down vote on background checks, wanted to take an up or down vote on ERPOs, or other pieces of state legislation that are moving forward in the process, I think that's completely appropriate and we should do that. But this is written in such a vague way compared to how we traditionally do these resolutions. So um, I'm a no on uh, this as it moves forward unless we do some serious revisions or send this back to committee and uh, strip out some of the language here. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, sir. Clear your light, sir. Supervisor Linson, can you clear your light as well, please? Next up, Supervisor Buckley on referendum substitution. So there's a lot of people in the audience here to get to see how politicians work. You pick a single word in the whole thing, and that's what we're going to focus on is the sanctuary. That's what we're going to debate, so we don't have to really actually debate the issues. We can, we'll debate the word used. It's a word. 
it does have meaning. It has meaning to a lot of people. It has meaning to the people that brought this forward. That's why they use the word. When the people use the word um, in the immig immigration sense, it has meaning. That's why they use the word. But we're going to get hung up on a word versus really looking at the topic, the issue, the right to bear arms, the right to defend ourselves. A lot of misinformation thrown out here tonight. Um, I don't know. I didn't really hear anybody that says we're not going to still have background checks. I know I've bought four guns in the last year. Had a background check each time. Real significant one if you want an automatic weapon. I hear auto, automatic weapon thrown out here numerous times. Do you know what you have to go through to get one? You can't just walk into Walmart and pick one up. It's a process. And I'd say very few, maybe there's two or three in this room that actually have a stamp for one. It was also brought out, you know, a good statement, it was highlighted again by a second person, is something happens where you actually need a weapon the police aren't necessarily going to be there within six seconds. I know, as a retired police officer, I know typically I live on the far west side. The response time to my house is several, several minutes because typically they're coming from downtown. People that live out in the county, their response time is probably even greater. So why not give them the ability to defend themselves? Also brought up, and I want to reiterate, because we make these decisions. Because we look at budgets, because we decide how much we're going to give a police department or sheriff's department, you know, they have minimum staffing. And there's very few officers out there for the job that they do. Again, why not let people defend themselves? And we talk about school situations, we've talked about church situations, but guns in, the, in lawful ownership with the right people can help save people. How many people, uh, there was some uh, talk brought up about some things that happened here locally. Were those lawful gun owners that did that? I bet not. Don't punish the masses for the few mistakes that people that aren't lawfully carrying guns do. I am a gun owner, have been for years. I carry probably 90% of the time because of a lot of the reasons I just stated. I sit on the executive committee that brought the, the, the current resolution that we have that was subsequently uh, requested to go to referendum. Um, I voted on it. It was voted unanimously at executive committee. Um, would I like to see more language in there? Yep. Did I get hung up on a word? One word? Nope. Now we're going to take it to referendum. I'm torn because I didn't agree with taking the marijuana issue to referendum because that wasn't our place to take a referendum. But I do feel, in this case, that we can make a decision on the resolution that was brought forward. I don't necessarily agree with taking a referendum, but I don't mind. I think a good point was brought up. That will bring more people out to vote. But I really think, as a county board, we were elected to do a job and that's vote for our constituents right here on the floor. We have the ability to make that decision tonight. And I would encourage my fellow supervisors to actually look at what we're here for. We're not here for one word. We're here for what the whole resolution means. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Clear your light. Next up, Supervisor Evans. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
a, a couple things. Well, first of all, um, I supported the dark store referendum and the medical marijuana referendum. And after that, I said, I'm never going to support any more of these feel good, send out to the public advisory referendums because it's absolute, just really was unfortunate on all of those. So I'm not going to support that basically on, on this. I mean, we, we do get elected to make decisions. This is one of them. I mean, we passed, and this kind of, it goes back to about, 16 years ago, maybe, Supervisor Lund, some of us. English is the official language. Remember we had that, and that was a big thing. We passed that as a county board. We didn't send that to an advisory referendum. Uh, we also passed uh, a uh, half percent sales tax, which would come out to be, what, about $120-plus million. <laughs> so I think we can vote on this tonight. You know, I mean, this, I, I'm not supporting any more of these advisory referendums. If it's a referendum that's going to really have some substance, then do it. But let's not play these games anymore. Let's just move on and get this done with. Um, if you do move on, then we should, uh, with this, maybe you should take the question and, and make it so it's uh, you know, properly, um, a proper sentence as far as positive. So you should probably have it say, should Brown County be declared a second amendment sanctuary County that supports the constitutional right of the people of Brown County to keep and bear arms and against the enactment of any legislation that would infringe such right. That's what you should have. But the way it's written now, you want to talk about confusing people. It's going to confuse a lot of people. This is how you should do it. So, uh, I'm not going to support this. I don't think we should do it. I think we should just vote on it tonight. Um, we, we've messed around with this dark store and medical marijuana stuff, but we passed things that were similar to this as English is the official language, but we passed some real stuff, you know, $120 million, and our budgets are $200 million. <laughs> so, so I'm not going to support this, but if it does get passed, I, I mean, hope somebody will go back and we can, I can give you the wording that's going to be actually correct. But, I, but don't support this. If you clear your late, sir. Uh, point of clarification, uh, uh, several supervisors have referred uh, to the referendum resolution before you as an advisory referendum. Uh, in the past, that's typically what the county passes, our advisory. Uh, this one, however, is a contingent uh, referendum. What that means is that, and this, as it says on the uh, uh, second page, uh, be it further resolved, as long as a majority of those voting on the contingent referenda question vote yes, then Brown County shall be a Second Amendment sanctuary county. Uh, so I just wanted to note that distinction. Uh, th this is contingent upon the vote. If, if a majority votes for this, uh, then Brown County would be a Second Amendment sanctuary county. Yeah, yeah, this point of clarification. I, I appreciate that. And I noticed that. To me, it's a more or less an advisory one. And it's nothing that, I mean, this doesn't have a big impact. If you were going to put something out to a referendum that's going to be a real referendum, like you think this one is, or I appreciate what the corporate counts, then we should have done the half percent sales tax. Let's get serious about that. But So I'm not going to support sending this out to uh, to referendum or, or whatever you want to call it. We have people here that, and in the Everybody knows what's going on, and everybody's expecting us to take a vote. So let's do it. We've we've taken bigger votes than this one, I'll tell you. So I'm not going to support that. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. you. Clear late, sir. Next up, Supervisor Sieber. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I still am a believer in facts. So if you want, uh, if you would just allow me, uh, it was brought up at least four times tonight that. Uh, Germany took away guns uh, before World War II. Uh, it probably doesn't surprise a ton of people to learn that that was not correct. Um, I got it right here. Um, so we'll just say it's not. Just look it up from a reliable source. You'll see that it's not. Um, also, Brazil does own gun ownership. You must be 25 years old to legally buy and register a gun. So just wanted to correct the record a little bit there to make sure people left this evening with uh, accurate information. Um, so, Supervisor Sieber has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so oh, you know, I voted for this at um, the executive committee, the original resolution before us. I thought it was a good compromise. Um, people got to say, you know, we're a 
Crown County, Second Amendment, Sanctuary County, but we stripped everything out of there. We stripped the entire meaning of Second Amendment, Sanctuary County out of the legislation. To me, it's like passing a resolution saying we believe in Santa Claus. That's basically all it does. It means nothing. Um, so, and then I get here tonight and I see and I hear uh, the comments, and it's clear that that's not the case. It's clear that this, the word sanctuary has meaning to a certain uh, group of people, um, law-abiding gun owners. They, this, this word sanctuary has a definite meaning. Um, it, it means basically what was in the resolution to them, that individuals can decide what a constitutional gun law is uh, and not the courts. It's removing the power of the courts, the equal, co-equal branch of government, to decide what's constitutional and unconstitutional and leaves it in the hands of the county board or the county sheriff. Uh, that's, that's just not something I want to be a part of. That's not something Brown County should be a part of. Um, it, it was said tonight that passing a sanctuary county will send a message to Governor Evers. That's not in here. That's not what this says. It's not, it's not passing, uh, sending a message to the governor. It's not sending a message to the legislature. But some people believe that it is. Some people believe that red flag gun laws are in here, but it's, it's not in here. Red flag gun laws are not addressed at all in here. It, this is saying we're leaving it up to the courts to decide what's constitutional, which literally means nothing. So if we put this on a referendum, people are going to look at that and say, well, sure. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't oppose, I oppose any unconstitutional laws. We took an oath in April that says we will not pass anything that's unconstitutional, but we don't decide what's constitutional. The courts decide what's constitutional. So as I read this question, it says, should Brown County be declared a Second Amendment sanctuary county, meaning that Brown County opposes the enactment of any legislation that would infringe upon the constitutional right of the people of Brown County to keep and bear arms? Of course. Of course. The problem is the word sanctuary, and it is a big problem because that sends a message, or that, that's a word that conjures up uh, certain elements to mean something that it doesn't. That's not at all the message that we're sending. This, th this whole thing just needs to go away. We've seen it tonight. Um, if, we, if we pass this and we put it on the, on the referendum in November, uh, the divisiveness that we've seen here tonight, I've, in my eight years on the board, I've never seen anybody escorted out of the county board chambers ever. The divisiveness that this has caused is unbelievable. And the meaning of this is nothing. It literally is nothing. I, to leave this in our community till November, I think, is a travesty. I think we have to just get rid of this tonight and be done with it. If, uh, if people want to know if we believe in the Second Amendment, come here when we get sworn in in April. We'll, we'll all stand up here. We'll raise our right hand. The judge will swear us in. We'll say we affirm our oath to the Constitution, which includes the Second Amendment of the United States. And it also uh, affirms our, our belief in our oath of office in the Wisconsin Constitution, which has been quoted several, here, several times here tonight. Um, I, I, I have never heard of anybody wanting to take a gun away from somebody for self-defense. That's just not going to happen. I've never heard of anybody wanting to um, impose some of these ideas that, that have been talked about tonight. And if those ideas come up, I would be happy to send a resolution to the state saying we, we don't support that. Don't put that on our people. That's not what we want here in the state of Wisconsin. But I have not seen anything come forward. And until that day, I will not support anything like this. And the word sanctuary has to be come out of anything before I pass it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Clear your light. Next up, Supervisor Castor. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to support sending this to a referendum. I think we should vote on the uh, resolution before us tonight and pass it. And uh, that's it. Thanks. Thank you, sir. If you clear your light, sir. Uh, Supervisor Tran. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm just wondering how many other amendments would this board give a sanctuary status to? I mean, if I was the First Amendment, I'd be kind of feel like I'm being discriminated against. Um, so I would vote definitely vote no for this resolution. Um, the other thing, words matter and context matter. So sanctuary means something to a lot of people. So I cannot vote for it if that word isn't in there. Um, and people mention that guns don't kill people but grenades and missiles don't kill people either <laughs> unless a human being is involved in that process. So um, I can't support other one. Thank you. Thank you. Clear your light, please. Supervisor DeLaurie. I shared uh, Supervisor Linson's concern with the marijuana referendum about the general election, and I want you all to know I was not 
approached by anybody to do this, and I do not want to go to election. I do not want my resolution, which has intense meaning to me and my constituents, to be used as a get out the vote tool for whatever side. I hated it with the marijuana referendum and why I voted against it, and I would hate it for my own resolution to be used in that manner. The word sanctuary does have meaning in a good way. It means something to the legislators and the governor because they know what the meaning of sanctuary is to Second Amendment defenders. You know, I, I talked about this in uh, exec. I, I grew up in Cook County, southwest of Chicago. Most gun laws of any place I've ever lived. It made nobody safe. It made people feel good. Politicians get elected. It made nobody safe. This word sanctuary is important, and the message is important. Do not create laws that would infringe on our constitutional rights. I, I did not swear an oath to do this job to defend medical marijuana, but I did raise my hand and defend raise my hand and swore an oath to defend the constitution I carry around this piece of paper every meeting for the last two years I take it intensely seriously I think it's worth that word and I agree it has meaning and I don't endorse it going to referendum this is something that we swore an oath to is simply affirm the constitution the sanctuary word is critical. That is the message to legislators. That is the strength in numbers. And it's not radical. It's nothing to be feared. Guns for self-defense is critically important. And I, this, this, this sanctuary movement is important to, um, to give a message. Uh, message to Governor Evers especially. He does have the power to do independent acts with his executive order powers. Um, may not rise to the level of what Virginia is doing, but he still has immense bit of power there. And his words is what's causing this movement to start in Wisconsin. So I will definitely not endorse this going to referendum because I do not want my resolution to be used in a way as a get out the vote tool. That is not the intent. I'd rather have it voted down here tonight than be co-opted like that. Um, thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Did you clear your light, sir. Next up, Supervisor Dwayne. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not going to support this either. Uh, I got to tell you, when, when I finally heard this through the news that there was a supervisor that brought this uh, sanctuary for up for to be a sanctuary county, I was like, boy, this guy's leaving office and he's going to go out with a bang. And it didn't take long. No, no pun intended. Yeah, pun intended. <laughs> and it, I got a call from my son out of Milwaukee. He goes, Tom, what is or Dad? He, he doesn't call me Tom. He calls me Dad. <laughs> he goes, what? Is, what is this guy doing? I says, yeah, I don't know yet because I didn't hear yet. I got to, you know, I got to make my phone calls and, and get the whole story. And then I started getting more phone calls and emails than anything in my 14 years on this subject. But those that heard the word Sanctuary County thought we were going to sell guns to everybody in the world and, and they're going to be running loose and what are you doing? We support the Second Amendment, but the way this is written up, you guys are just allowing anything to happen. And then I get the two other calls that said, hey, Tom, I, I wish you'd support it because if you don't vote for it, I'm going to lose my guns. I said, wait a minute. No, we, we don't have a right to change that. You're not going to lose my your your guns. This is supposed to be in a resolution form saying, Brown County is asking you, Mr. Governor, and our legislative people, this is how we feel. But this put such a strain on people and what they thought was going on. You saw it tonight. Really good people coming out here, and you got people wanting to pepper spray people, and you got people throwing papers and and supervisors' faces, and it, you know it just does, it's just not right. If you really wanted to do something like this, real plain and simple, say 
Listen, if you're thinking about changing the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, and the right to carry a concealed weapon, we're asking you as Brown County that we object to that, any change in the Second Amendment. That's an easy resolution saying, hey, we believe the Second Amendment as it is written, and leave it at that. People will understand that. I, have, I, I don't own a gun, but I know where I can get one now, and I don't have to go register. I'll just ask one of these guys. <laughs> and I can get one. But this really, really nonsense of what this, I, I'm not going to, I don't believe we should waste the people's time on something we can't do. But if we want to send a message, let's do it properly. Because I have family members that go hunting all the time. I have family members that, uh, relatives that carry. I got friends in this building that carry. Uh, we don't need to send a wrong message that we're trying to disrupt life as usual. And so I, I, when this is all done and this goes, this part goes away, uh, I almost like to see this received in place on file and bring it back in a real form if necessary, if you want to continue this nonsense. Because people have the right to bear arms in Brown County. And I'm not scared that because someone out there is thinking that someone's going to come in our house and take their guns because it's not going to happen. Thank you. Mr. Thank Chairman. you, sir. Clear your lights, sir. Uh, next up, Supervisor Ballard. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> Every time I sit in this chair and engage my voting device here, I think to myself, I'm reaffirming my oath that I took a few Junes ago because I was appointed and then ran for re-election. I recognize my ethical obligation to carry out the laws of the nation, the state, the county, and all the amendments were within. And in that, you know, we talk about calls that we've gotten and whatnot. Most of my constituents, the people that actually live in my district, the calls that I got were, why is the county board even taking this up? This is not your purview. And often in my life, I talk about time, place, and manner. Is this the time in our country to discuss this? I think it is. I think there's lots of good ideas on both sides. There are constitutional scholars arguing about where the <laughs> comma is in the Second Amendment and what that means. There's a lot of things in there. But this is not the place. This is not the manner for us to discuss this. This resolution, whether we send it to referendum, is full of sound and fury signifying nothing. It absolutely doesn't make a difference in people's everyday lives. I value everyone that came out tonight and spoke their heart out on this. This obviously is a voting issue for folks. They should be contacting their national legislatures, the people that appoint judges, the people that are sitting on the Supreme Court that are interpreting our Constitution, interpreting our state Constitution. For me... I'm a no on both of them, and it's not, I am a gun owner. I, am, I have a concealed carry permit. I have the, the great stamp for the assault. But for me, this is not about my vote. is isn't contingent on whether I'm a gun owner and whether I believe, you know, believe the strength of the Second Amendment. I took an oath to make the county a better place to live, to bring in tax bases, to bring in folks, to retain talent, to recruit talent. And for us... We've wasted two and a half, three, sorry, three and a half hours. We've been here for a while. My math is not great. On things that don't matter and don't make the county a better place. It doesn't bring in economic development. So I would hopefully have my supervisors, my fellow supervisors, wake up and say, this is not the county's business. This is not what we were elected to do. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do you clear your light? Supervisor Lefebvre, second time. I do believe that the, the people in the county should have a say, and this is a very important, important uh, statement that we're trying to make here. And um, because the uh, referendum thing talks about sanctuary, I can't support it. I do not believe that we should have the word sanctuary because it 
has a bad connotation. It ha People are taking it wrong. As I said, the Webster Dictionary says the immunity from law. So they're meaning no laws, okay, just open. And some people had, and even a, one of the supervisors said, no laws that infringe their rights to bear arms. So are they saying that our laws that we do have on the book books we should get rid of because we have some restrictions on the right to bear arms. We have them already. So I think this is ridiculous. But another thing, these people are so oh slippery slope and we're going to every it's gonna eventually they're gonna get rid of our guns. Are they aware that there has to be a constitutional amendment? And you know what that takes? Two-thirds of the U.S. states have to pass a resolution, not a resolution, uh, a constitutional amendment to take away the Second Amendment. Then it goes to our Congress, and they vote. Do you think that's ever going to happen? I don't think so. I don't think that'll ever, ever happen. So this slippery slope is a bunch of baloney. And I really get upset when people talk about that. And this is a lot of paranoia. I don't, I don't believe in paranoia either. I think people got to step back. And yes, we do need to talk about this maybe. But we need to come together as a people, discuss it calmly. <coughs> And understand, I don't, I don't, I'm not would ever be in, for, in favor of taking away people's guns. I think everybody has a right, how they feel, whatever they need to protect themselves. That's their decision. I don't own a gun. I, des I decided I don't need one. I live and I, I um, am the representative for District <coughs> 6. And I've had people say, oh my God, you know, day streets in my district. Oh, the shootings happen there. Well, they happen all over. I go out and campaign. I go out at night. I do have someone walk with me. Some stay in the car and just go along with me. But I've never, ever felt threatened. I've been felt nothing but welcome to my district. I have a lot of good people. Yeah. Crimes happen, they happen everywhere. And a lot of times it's drugs. I'm sorry, it's because of drugs. And it's people who don't have a connection to the community. So, as long as sanctuaries in both of them, I can't support them. Thank you. Thank you. Clear your light, please. Supervisor Sinan, second time. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I wanted to address a couple of issues. The November election in 2020 is going to be the presidential election. There's going to be a very high turnout. The number of people that might show up in Brown County for this particular issue is going to be percentage-wise extremely small, uh, whereas I felt the marijuana issue was a much bigger drawer. So I don't believe that this is going to be a tool to manipulate any part of the election. Um, Another thing is that uh, I just did a little bit of research. Uh, the German right passed their first laws to remove guns in 1928. 1931, they used uh, the uh, food for guns uh, where they thought people had guns. Uh, and in 1938, they had their final um, regulation re removing guns from all German citizens. World War II began September 1st of 1939. Um, <clears throat> the situation about uh, the wordage here, I, I believe that we shouldn't get hung up on one word. As I stated, I do think sanctuary is the wrong word. If people feel better with reaffirmation, that's a possibility. I have no problem with that because um, I do think Sanctuary is totally the wrong word, but to not get hung up on one word, I would allow it to go that way um, in my uh, comment. Um, when I first saw this, there was one other supervisor who just made a comment that said, what are we doing with this issue? 
it doesn't necessarily belong at the county level. That was my first impulse towards it. But we've got it here. It's got a big head of steam, steam behind it, wind behind it. We need to dispose of it. And uh, uh, my feeling is you either dump it out to the residents of Brown County and let them decide which this would be a binding resolution or we vote it down because it just has the word sanctuary in. Thank you. Thank you. Clear your light, sir. Supervisor Dantine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just sitting here for a long time, listening to all the people that came here, and I first of all thank them for coming out. They were very informational, and I had various phone calls, and I agree with Supervisor Ballard that we, most of the phone calls I had were, were very educational, they were very polite, and they were wondering why we were doing this. That was, that was we have a lot of county issues to take care of, and they were really affirmed us that, that we should be doing county business instead of state business and federal business. And with that said, you know, I, I think we're missing the point that when our judge swore us in, we're sworn in to uphold the Constitution of the United States. So with that said, I don't think I'm going to support the referendum because that doesn't, we're here to do, do a job. So with that, I'll, I'll leave that go. Thank, Thank you. you. Clear your light. Supervisor Borchert. I was just going to ask if uh, Supervisor Sinning could cite his source that he got that information from. It's important to know what sources are. And we heard a lot of information tonight with no source backing that, and I think that is important when we talk about correct information and correct facts. Sources are important. There's biases in those sources. Well, not to speak for Supervisor Sinnon, but Supervisor Sieber did not say what source no, either. No, I know. And so. Vice Chairman Lund. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we should go to advisory referendum. I think that we should pass this today. If people want to take out sanctuary out of the resolution, that's fine. I think that we should support the Second Amendment. I'm willing to vote on that this evening. But having this as an incendiary thing over the next six months to 11 months to... Uh, to get the people riled up, I don't think serves anybody. I think that this county board can enact on this and, uh, and support the Second Amendment in the state constitution and send that to our legislators to, to make sure that, they, uh, that when they're doing their job, they make sure that they support the constitution. So I'm, I'm gonna vote against having a referendum on this and uh, and let's just vote on this today, either up or down, and, and get going. We have a lot of other very important things on this, this agenda, so that's, that's how I feel. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Clear your light, please. Supervisor Hoyer. <coughs> Thank you, Chair Moynihan. According to the German, uh, <laughs> we're just, we're just going to finish this up. No, seriously. Um, According to the German Historical Institute, uh, the laws that were passed in, 19, in 1938 were actually specifically to take the guns only from Jews, while any existing legislation that, that was there to, uh, to actually, to the other non-Jews, were relaxed. Uh, so I guess that's more a case of a leader convincing uh, those that followed him that other members of the citizenry that disagreed with him were evil somehow. So, not sure where I'm going with that. <laughs> secondly, <laughs> secondly, uh, California, uh, a lot of concern about California. Welcome. Obviously, we want all citizens to come from California. California doesn't have, I, I looked at the, looked at the constitutions of all the states because I like looking at those sorts of things. And, that California didn't, they have no provisions anywhere in their constitution about, uh, about the Second Amendment or about the right to uh, protection to, to, uh, to bear arms. We all know and we've all heard about in Wisconsin what kind of protections we have. And those are, are, are very, very important. So uh, I, I, I definitely agree with a lot of what's been said about 
uh, the use of the word sanctuary just feels a little buzzwordy when someone said this will not have meaning unless it has the word sanctuary in it. Um, yeah, a rose by any other name would smell so sweet. So, a little Shakespeare for you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Clear your light, please. <clears throat> Supervisor Van Dyke. I'll be brief, but since we're into fact checking this evening. <laughs> Um, I just want to, there was a comment made about the, um, the difficulty in, in removing the Second Amendment and taking away our right to bear arms. I just want to point out that the Second Amendment is interpreted by the Supreme Court. So by the vote of five people, the Second Amendment can be interpreted in different manners. So if you think it takes the changing of the Second Amendment to take away someone's guns, you are sadly mistaken. And maybe you should read a little bit closer because if the Supreme Court votes five to four, you are incorrect. Thank you. Thank you. Clear your light. Supervisor Randy, can you clear your light, please? No other lights are lit. Use the board. Before you is the referendum. Contingent referendum substitution resolution. <coughs> Supervisor Evans, Supervisor Van Dyke. And that motion fails. We are back to the original motion. Any, f well, hold on. Once the clerk clears, any further discussion on the original motion? First up, Supervisor Brusky. I would like to make a. Can you use your microphone, please? Sorry. I would like to make a motion by substitution for the attached um, resolution. In, in it, it I could should I read it to you? It's quite long. Um, but it basically well, affirms our, our uh, commitment to upholding the United States Constitution and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin and the Code of Ethics section or in, for Brown County. So the resolution states, whereas the Brown County Board of Supervisors was elected to represent the citizens of Brown County and have sworn by their oath of office to uphold the United States Constitution and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And whereas Wisconsin state senators and state representatives have also sworn by their oath of office to uphold the United States Constitution and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And Whereas the Brown County Code of Ordinances states in its Code of Ethics section 1.112 as follows, number two, re responsibility of public office. Public officials and employees hold office for the benefit of the public. They are bound to uphold the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this state to observe its highest standards of law in the exercise of the powers and duties of their office, to impartially carry out the laws of the nation, state, and county, to discharge, fully, to discharge faithfully the duties of their office, regardless of personal co considerations, and to recognize that the public interest must be their prime concern. And whereas the county board recognizes its ethical obligation to carry out the laws of the nation, state, and county, including any and all enacted amendments to the state and or federal constitutions, including the constitutional right of the people of Brown County to keep and bear arms as is noted in the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin, Article 1, Section 25, 
which states, the people have the right to keep and bear arms for security, defense, hunting, recreation, or any other lawful purpose. Now therefore be it resolved that the Brown County Board of Supervisors hereby affirms its support to recognize and uphold the constitutional rights of all Brown County citizens as guaranteed by the United States and Wisconsin constitutions. And that's it. Do you have a copy for the clerk? Yes, I do. It would be nice if you had a copy for everyone. <laughs> Second by Supervisor Borchert. Yes, sir. So I appreciate what Supervisor Brusky's trying to do, but this seems to be a very lengthy, full, substitu or full substitution of a resolution that doesn't seem to have like a, almost a 24-hour notice or been vetted by anything. I think we're getting really away from this Second Amendment uh, resolution that's in front of us to something that's completely you know, a way, and that would be, I think, better served as, I mean, if you've heard the meaning of it, I think that's, I, I don't personally believe that it should be applicable to this discussion. I mean, it could be yeah. sent to a, could be, it could be sent to it as a communication, but I, I mean, I just can't see that this is working. What's your opinion on this? In, in, in my opinion, the subject matter is the same, and I believe it is a valid amendment. I would not refer to it as a substitution a true substitution, you really would need to notice. It's an entirely different document. This should be a motion to amend, but because the subject matter is the same, I, I believe it's allowed. That would be my opinion. Talking about Second Amendment, or I mean, it's all fluff. I mean, I mean, so it's okay. I'll talk about that with you. I mean, it's your opinion. Supervisor Shadow, you have the floor. Well, the only, the only thing I was going to say, Mr. Chairman, is when she was reading it, I was reading the one we were debating, and all of a sudden I realized she was using the same words in the whereas as, as the one we were, this original motion. So I'm like. Well, that's I'm, why I accepted yeah, it as yeah. a motion like, by I don't, substitution. I don't know what the difference is. I'm like, hey, it's the same words. Well. That's what you meant. You say potato, I say potato. Anything further, Supervisor Brusky? No, thank you. Can you clear your light? Supervisor Deloria. Very briefly, I, I, I won't support it because this is a fundamental difference. The title, the meaning, the, the, uh, the resolution is the declaration with definition. Um, I, this is fundamentally different than this resolution before us. I, I won't support it only because of that, not because of the content. If that was a separate communication resolution, so be it. Again, I would ask that the original, as amended by exec resolution, be the one considered tonight, voted up or down. Let voters know where you stand. Thank you. Clear your light, please. Supervisor Linson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I would support this. I think it's more in line with um, what the actual topic we're debating is as opposed to this whole sanctuary county stuff. I, I understand where Mr. Deloria is coming from with regards to uh, it means something to him and we've heard a number of people speak tonight about how it means something to them and we've also heard other people talk about how it means something completely different to them. Um, so in this type of situation words matter. Um, making distinctions that don't have the same meaning to everybody are pointless like it, it just doesn't matter so I, I'd rather if if we're gonna have a discussion about whether we affirm the Second Amendment let's have it be a discussion about whether we affirm the Second Amendment not whether we're going to adopt some hollow title that is just gonna satisfy some people and make absolutely no change uh, while uh, basically splitting people on the particular issue I, so I, I'd rather see us vote on this particular resolution rather than the one that was in the packet. I think it's more in line with what the topic actually is about. Thank you. Thank you. Clear your light. Anyone else? 
Supervisor Van Dyke. Mr. Chairman, before we vote, can I, I don't want you to can you reread I'm, I'm just gonna read, the, I'm gonna read it all the now therefore piece, the whereas is or whatever, but I appreciate the thoroughness of the information and the whereas is, but the now therefore is the meat of it. So okay. at least can we reread that? I will do I will do so. Supervisor Buckley. Uh, if you could read that first on my answer to my questions. Resolution affirming support of the Brown County citizens' constitutional rights. Whereas the Brown County Board of Supervisors was elected to represent the citizens of Brown County and have sworn by their oath of office to uphold the United States Constitution and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And whereas Wisconsin State Senators and State Representatives have also sworn by their oath of office to uphold the United States Constitution and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. Whereas the Brown County Court of Ordinances states in its Code of Ethics Section 1.11 sub 2 as follows. Responsibility of public office. Public officials and employees hold office for the benefit of the public. They are bound to uphold the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state. To observe the highest standards of law and the exercise of powers and duties of their office. To impartially carry out the laws of a nation, state, and county. To faithfully discharge the duties of their office regardless of personal considerations and to recognize that the public interest must be their prime concern. And whereas the county board recognizes its ethical obligation to carry out the laws of the nation, state, and county, including any and all enacted amendments to the state and or federal constitutions, including the constitutional right of the people of Brown County to keep and bear arms, as is noted in the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin, Article 1, Section 25, which states that people have the right to keep and bear arms for security, defense, hunting, recreation, and other lawful purpose. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Brown County Board of Supervisors hereby affirms its support to recognize and uphold the constitutional rights of all Brown County citizens as guaranteed by the United States and Wisconsin Constitutions. That is what's before us at the moment. Supervisor Buckley, you still have the floor. Well, I don't think this uh, amendment carries the spirit of what was originally introduced to us at uh, the executive committee. And, and I'm concerned that um, once again we have politicians here trying to hide behind words and deflect away from what was clearly brought forward at executive committee. And in myself, I would like to see us vote up or down what was brought to exec brought and amended by executive committee and nonetheless voted unanimously to be brought to the county board floor here uh, for a vote versus, okay, we're going to water it down because, yeah, we're all supposed to, you know, uh, we took an oath and we're all supposed to follow the Constitution, state and federal. Got it. But... Let's vote on what was actually brought to the executive committee. Let's not try to deflect. Let's not try to water it down. Let's not try to just divert away from the word sanctuary because we have people in the room that are afraid of the word sanctuary. Let's just move forward, vote up, vote up or down. Thank you, sir. Clear your light. <clears throat> Supervisor denies. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Been privileged to sit here tonight and listen to some very good conversation from a lot of people. Um, I'm just going to address uh, this particular uh, substitution at this point in time. If we get to vote this up or down, the other one I'll speak further at that point in time. I have to agree with uh, Supervisor Buckley. Um, let's take the original resolution as was presented and vote that and let it ride up or down on what was presented. That's what everybody was expecting when they came here. Let's take it from there. Um, like I said, if we uh, if this fails, I'll have more to say on the rest of the issue. Thank you, Mr. Very Chairman. Good. Thank you, sir. Clear your light, please. Supervisor Kneisel. Thank you, Chairman. I'll take as little time as possible on this. I want to make clear that I don't disagree with anything Supervisor Brusky has said. Um, I think I already took an oath of office that covers everything in that statement. Um, so I don't want anybody to think I disagree with any of that by voting no, but I'm going to vote no. And I'm also going to vote no on the original resolution. I, I think this is all unnecessary. It's already covered, and I'm, I support the Second Amendment, and I'm not concerned about anything changing. So thank you. Thank you, sir. If you clear your light. 
Vice Chairman Lund. Yeah, I was going to make an amendment to this. In the now, therefore, it be. No, you can't stack. Can't amend it. Oh, can't amend it. Okay. Well, anything on this substitution? Well, I just think that it should uh, have more meet in the now therefore it be resolved obviously we're talking about second amendment and it just recognizes upholds conscious rights of all brown county citizens as you know it could be the right of anything i mean they were talking about second amendment so i think it should be more uh, should be less vague in the final now therefore it be resolved thank you now, clear your light please okay next up can I have that, please? Supervisor Castor. Thank you. Once again, I think we should stop trying to deflect uh, the original issue and change the words in it and uh, have the citizens vote on it. And all. I think we should do our duty and vote on Supervisor Delorier's original resolution and, and be done with it. I find it interesting that some of the same folks that were in favor of sending a message to the state with regards to medical marijuana and check the box and dark store issues and many many more are suddenly feeling that it's not worthwhile to send the state uh, a message it, it you guys are a different bunch of folks thanks Thank you. <laughs> supervisor saber Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to thank Supervisor Bresky for bringing this forward. I think uh, uh, the original resolution uh, brought about the divisiveness that this community does not need nor want, uh, nor is, is not part of our community um, as I know it. Uh, this resolution before us does reaffirm uh, Wisconsin uh, Constitution, Article 1, Section 25, that people have the right to keep and bear arms for security, defense, hunting, recreation, or any other lawful purpose. I think that's something all 26 of us agree on. I think that this resolution is uh, exactly what is needed and exactly what should be sent down um, to the state of Wisconsin or in, and to reaffirm our belief in our message to the citizens of, of Brown County. Um, it, again, as Supervisor Linson and a lot of people, other people have pointed out, the word sanctuary is the inflammatory and divisive word in the original resolution. That has been removed. Uh, that means so much to so many different people that if we send that down, nobody's going to know what message we're sending them. So it's, it's, it's pointless and meaningless to send that language down. I think this is the perfect resolution, and it sends the perfect message to the community and to the state. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Clear your light, please. Supervisor Delorier. Pointless and meaningless is what this is now. What it was as amended by exec had meaning. It is utterly meaningless now. Vote no on this. Vote on the original resolution. Vote it down. If you want to. This is meaningless the way it is. Utterly, completely, absolutely meaningless. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, sir. You clear your light. Do you need me, me, need me to read it one last time? No. Use the board. Supervisor Evans. And the motion fails. We're back to the main motion. Anything further back to the main motion? Supervisor Linson. I'll be the first sacrifice. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, going back to the original resolution, I, I was hoping we wouldn't have to address this, but I think at this point we kind of do because I'm not aware of any other proposed amendments. Um, I have a lot of concerns of, about a few things. Uh, the whole first page, no issue with it whatsoever. Um, but I do have issues with the last whereas and the now therefore be resolved. Um, the first whereas states that's desirable to declare Brown County a Second Amendment Sanctuary County. I guess I, I don't really agree with that because I don't understand where the desire is or, or why it would be desirable to do such a thing. Um, that's kind of lost on me. Um, the second part uh, that we oppose the act, many of the legislation that would infringe on our constitutional rights to the people of Brown County to keep bear arms 
okay. Um, I guess I have some issues with that, but I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but the now therefore resolve, it essentially does two things. It declares us to be a Second Amendment sanctuary county. Um, I guess I've kind of made my opinion on that clear through other things, so I'm not going to get into it too much other than to say that it, it has no meaning to anybody um, other than a select few, but the meaning it has as a select few is not shared by the entire community. I, there was people who said a few times that words don't matter and people hide behind words. The words do matter, and words matter because they have the same meanings uh, for ideas from one person to the next. That's what makes them so powerful. That's what makes the communication of laws possible is that everyone reads the sentence and they understand what's expected of them and what it means. And with these particular words, they don't convey a, me a shared meaning. And I think that's problematic uh, because different people are going to read different things into it. Uh, the second... Uh, issue I have with the wording is the second part of the now therefore, now therefore be it resolved where it states that we are opposing the, the enactment of any legislation which would infringe upon the constitutional right of the people of Brown County to keep and bear arms. There's a couple issues with that. First, uh, what is the constitutional right of the people of Brown County to keep and bear arms? I've heard a lot of people in the crowd today talk as if they were constitutional scholars about what that right means. And I think pretty much every one of them was incorrect because they were making assumptions as to what they thought it meant and not necessarily what it actually means in the context of constitutional law within the United States. Um, I get frustrated because I, I listen to some of this and you know I have a doctorate degree in interpreting law. And when I get questions from people on constitutional rights, a lot of times they'll ask me a question, well, the right says this, and well, not exactly is the answer. Or, well, what, what about this? Well, it depends. I, there's in, an entire legal profession that's dedicated to trying to suss out these tiny distinctions and how these things are interpreted, and how one person interprets it is not necessarily how another person interprets it, and what defines something as constitutional isn't what somebody thinks it means, it's what a court has ruled on it meaning. And those things are rarely black and white. And I have real concerns with us stating that, well, it's unconstitutional, therefore we should oppose that legislation. Well, what exactly is unconstitutional? I, I bet if I asked 100 people that were here today uh, a series of questions about whether they thought particular gun legislation was constitutional or not, I probably would have gotten a hundred different answers. And I, I just rattling off a few of them, uh, should felons be able to own uh, firearms? If we take it literally, the Second Amendment grants them that right. However, legal scholars, and particularly the U.S. Supreme Court, have over time carved out exceptions to certain rights. There is not, as far as I'm aware, an exception, uh, I believe every constitutional uh, amendment or rule has some sort of exception to it. There's some that don't, and there's some that are so relevant, like the third, that I don't know if we've ever even had a ruling on them. But the First Amendment, it has exceptions. You can't just go into a crowded theater and yell fire. That's a, a well-known adage, uh, but it's true. The First Amendment right is not infinite. There are exceptions, and they're considered reasonable exceptions. And courts have ruled on this. There's all these convoluted rules as to when it applies and when it does you have the same thing with freedom of religion. Um, there are exceptions to all those things. In the Fourth Amendment, there's exceptions to illegal se search and seizures. A uh, police officer hears somebody inside a house screaming for help, there's an exception for that. Uh, they can enter without a warrant. Uh, I mean, heck, the 19th Amendment, the women's right to vote has an exception. If you're a felon, you can't vote. That's not in the 19th Amendment, but we've recognized that there may be exceptions for certain particular situations. And the same thing happens when we talk about the Second Amendment. There are exceptions to the Second Amendment that I think most people in here actually probably would agree on. People who have uh, committed violent uh, sexual assaults uh, may not be able to possess firearms. Felons may not be able to possess, fire possess firearms. People convicted of uh, violent domestic abuse can't possess firearms. Uh, there are exceptions to these, and I think a lot of people agree on those exceptions. Now, there is some disagreement about how far those exceptions should go and, 
and where does that constitutional right go from being uh, a reasonable exception to being infringed. But I can tell you right now that 26 people sitting here are not the people to decide that. We're just not. Uh, we can barely draft an ordinance without tripping over our own two feet. I, 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 I guess I have an issue with us trying to define what any legislation is. What, what if legislation comes before the, uh, the, the state legislature where they're going to ban firearm possession or they're going to make additional penalties for a person who has been connect, convicted of a violent sexual assault uh, and possesses a firearm? Are we now in opposition to that? Because that's what this says. If you read it word for word and you take it at its literal meaning, that's what it's saying. We're opposing that. And I don't think that's what anybody here actually intends this to be. But the problem is, is that we all have different definitions of what is constitutional and what is a reasonable exception. And I, I, I have issue with <coughs> us stating that we're opposing vague and undefined laws. If there was a, an assembly bill or senate bill that was included in here and cited by name that we could go reference, actually review what law we're saying we agree with or disagree with it, I think that might be appropriate for us to possibly rule on or issue an opinion on. But to, to, to pontificate on vague and undefined legislation that, as far as I know, isn't going anywhere, um, because we have a fear it might infringe on some constitutional right as we define it, not as is commonly understood, uh, isn't the correct way to go about this. There's an entire court system that is built in this country for the purposes of determining whether laws infringe on constitutional rights. We at the county level do not have any authority whatsoever to have any impact on that. It does not matter what we say if Governor Evers were to sign into law some law that some people thought was unconstitutional. The correct avenue to address that is in the courts. And it can be challenged, and you can get a ruling on whether it's constitutional or not. And that's the appropriate place for this type of stuff. I, I, I get frustrated with the individuals um, in both the public and on this board that, that are painting opposition to this resolution as opposition to the Second Amendment. And that's just simply not true. A person who supports the Second Amendment and supports our rights under the Constitution can oppose this resolution in completely good faith. Rights aren't something that we can add to and legislate positively. The only thing we can do as a legislative body is chip away at those rights by creating the potential for exceptions by making certain actions illegal. We can't make a right more positive. All we can do is take away from it. And then courts act as that check on that right. And so for us to uh, paint that opposition as opposing the Second Amendment just isn't correct, and it's not the way rights work in the American legal system. And I guess this whole thing just kind of boggles my mind a little bit. I, 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 I support the Second Amendment. I support people's right to own guns, as it's stated in the Wisconsin Constitution. I also acknowledge that there's a place for some reasonable gun legislation, and I recognize that individuals have different opinions as to what that means, and that doesn't necessarily make them wrong. It just makes it an opinion. But that's what it is. It's an opinion. It's not something that we should be uh, declaring through words like sanctuary county or opposition to any legislation that we might find uh, infringes on a constitutional right. I, I think the definition or the, the comment about the sanctuary county was appropriate when that meant something. There was originally additional where at, or, uh, resolutions that were attached to this that were taken out by the executive committee because frankly I don't and I agree with what happened with it, but we didn't have the authority to do it. And I think people would be wise to be reminded that when we act as county supervisors, we are granted the power to act as county supervisors by the state legislature. We are below them. We don't have the authority to trump the state legislature in anything. Anything. They can tell us what we can and cannot do. Uh, we had this issue come up with the sales tax. They 
told us we can only have a half percent. You can't go, you know, 0.25, you can't go 0.4. You had to either do it to 0.5 or you didn't do it at all. Um, they have that type of authority over us, and if they decide that guns are allowed or Super vigilance, just way, so you know, uh, per our rules, a, per, a person can speak twice to an item, 10 minutes each, you have one minute. Sure. I, I, I'm getting to the end of it. But I, I guess it's not our purview to be making these types of laws. I mean, what's next? Abortion? I mean, really, do we need to go down that road? I mean, what's the next thing? Are we gonna are we gonna have a debate on Medicare for all? Like, I, this is not the job that we're here for. This is not what we're elected to do. We should just completely stay out of it. Period. Thank you, sir. Maybe a if you, if you can clear your light, please. No more time. Yet. Supervisor Grzynski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we've heard a lot about other countries, other states, the state of Wisconsin. I just want to bring it back to uh, this body and uh, this room as we're moving forward here. Um, so let's play this out. So let's say if some, you know, some folks in this room, their worst fear happens and the state of Wisconsin moves forward with a piece of legislation that they don't agree with, um, like ERPOs or background checks, right? Which a lot of the fervor from this is being um, being pushed. Uh, my question would be to Corp Council, because I remember going through this fight when we were talking about union rights and what we could keep on our own books <coughs> when we were moving forward here. And even though I supported that and I supported that language, the state of Wisconsin made a determination and then we had to follow it. Now, my question would be to Corp Council, we could write a strongly worded letter to the state of Wisconsin saying we don't support that legislation, but at the end of the day, what would we have to do as a body or uh, what would we have to direct our, our sheriff and our staff to do? We'd have to follow state law. Is that correct? <laughs> We would, and, you know, again, as Supervisor Brusky pointed out, 1.112 of our uh, county code of ordinances, our code of ethics, uh, says that public officials uh, are bound to impartially carry out the laws of the nation, state, and county. Uh, so we have to carry out those laws, and in, in my opinion, that would mean uh, we, we cannot be directing our sheriff to ignore laws that our sheriff feels are unconstitutional. The resolution before you that you're discussing, uh, as, as you say, it uses the word opposition. Uh, opposition could take the form of what you suggested, a letter. It could take the form of another resolution. It could take the form of scheduling a rally in, in the county. Uh, but, you know, I, 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 I mean, for those, you know, which we all do that respect our Constitution, uh, you know, please realize that the basics of our Constitution are the three branches of government. And it's the judicial branch that makes determinations whether laws are constitutional or not. If you, I, I don't see how a vote uh, to, to, to have our sheriff determine what's constitutional or not, I, I don't see how that respects our Constitution. So, you know, I'd I just like you to consider that as well. What, what can you do, though, in opposition? You know, sure, you, you could do many acts, but you shouldn't be doing unlawful acts in, in opposition. Supervisor Grzynski has the floor. Yeah, so what, well, what I'm getting at here, though, is... Like, there's only a few things that we can say if the state of Wisconsin at the end of the day goes down the road and changes this. I'll tell you right now, with the current makeup of the legislature, it was there earlier today, like, that, like that's not going to pass, even though I support both of those bills publicly. Like, they're not passing right now. But the, we are going down the road here where we're going to put ourselves with this language in a situation where what are we telling our constituents? Like, what, what is there a sanctuary from? If, if the state of Wisconsin moves forward <laughs> and passes this, and they decide that ERPOs are okay, or they decide that background checks are okay, we're going to go out and say, we're a sanctuary county for Brown County? What are we saying to them 
that we're not that we don't want to follow state law, that we uh, aren't going to uphold our oath as we move forward. Like what we really need to dig into, what message here we're trying to send? Because what we say today has long-term consequences depending on what the state of Wisconsin decides to do. And um, so there's folks that are like, oh, we shouldn't get up hung up on one word. We shouldn't get hung up on, you know, this not, you know, being bigger than just defending the Second Amendment. But it's it's true. Like, we're, we continue to be a body that is an arm of the state of Wisconsin. And if they choose to move forward in that direction, we have an obligation as county supervisors. So we should be very careful about the language we, we're setting forth and what that means to constituents out in our communities. Thank you, sir. Clear your light. A second to think that in answer to, to uh, Supervisor Grzynski's question, what would we do in opposition? Uh, my advice should our state legislature pass a law that uh, members on the board uh, view as unconstitutional, my advice would be let's file a court action for declaratory judgment, asking a court to declare whether the law is constitutional or not, and let's ask that court for a stay on the law taking effect until that's resolved. And, and that's how our court system works. You feel something's unconstitutional, you ask a court to declare whether it is or not, and you ask the court, in the meantime, please hold off on that law until we have our courts decide this. Uh, so, so that's what my advice would be should uh, members of the board feel our legislature passed a law that was unconstitutional. That would be my advice for what action we should take. Supervisor denies. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Like I said before, I the privilege to sit here for a while and listen. Um, now to address this particular resolution. Um, I agree, first off, with many of my fellow supervisors that is this really the right place for this? Probably not. We should be getting down to the business of Brown County. But you know what? It's here. Let's deal with it. Let's, let's address it. And let's take care of it. Um, I forget which supervisor it was that said that, uh, but we're, we're elected to be their representatives. Let's be their representatives. Let's be their voice tonight. So, you know, there's, there's been a lot of, uh, I, I first took my first public oath back in June of 1987. I've been under that oath since that time. That's coming up on 33 years. I don't know if there's anybody else in this room that's been that long Maybe the sheriff might be close, Mr. Dantine. I take we we take that you take that oath very seriously. Um, so when I started looking at this particular resolution as it was amended, that was one of my major concerns, and it was a concern when it was originally put forth to executive committee. After this amendment was went through there, I don't have a concern with it upholding. My uh, my oath when I look at this, um, you know, I heard I heard things from uh, unfortunately I heard things tonight that this is going to going to make it okay for bad people to do things uh, to come into the county and do things that uh, they can because we're a sanctuary. That's not in this resolution. There's things that's, there are people that said it's going to be easier to get guns. That's not in this resolution. I had people tell me that it's, it, it, this is in support of 30-round magazines. That's not in this resolution. That's all I see in this resolution as it's boiled down to be is it's a support of the Second Amendment. That's what it really comes down to. We're trying to make a decision here in a, to which way we should be moving. Um, you know, when this comes right down to it, um, what would be a better statement? What would actually do something here? It'd probably be some type of an action that would help take care of mental illness or some of the other real problems that are causing the problems of crime and guns in our community. But the, but the problem is, is that there are factions and there are position, people with position that strict, very strict gun control is the right thing to do. And then there's the opposite side that says, 
that we shouldn't be that 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 strict gun control is an infringement. This resolution just simply says that the Second Amendment, as it stands in the state of Wisconsin, is what it is, and it should, that we, the members of Brown County, should hold that. There's concerns about um, the word sanctuary in that definition. Uh, Mr. Gajinski said, "What are you know?" He just, he just asked, "What are we saying by that? What 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 does that mean?" And that's been a contentious point all night as to what that is. I think there, we we started to move forward with that when we were talking about the referendum. There was language in that that helped to define that particular point. It's not in this resolution. So I hate to say this, guys, because I know that I'm going to get a couple of groans here, but I'm going to make a, a motion for a minor amendment to this resolution. That minor amendment, if you look at the last whereas, it reads, it is desirable to declare that Brown County is the Second Amendment Sanctuary County. Then there's the word as. I would move that we strike the comma and the as and replace that with the words meaning that so that that sentence would read, it is desirable to declare that Brown County is a second amendment sanctuary county meaning that Brown County opposes the enactment of any legislation that would infringe upon the constitutional right of the people of Brown County to keep and bear arms. Who second that? Supervisor DeLore. I believe I still have the floor. I, I appreciate the second. Can you uh, put that in writing for the clerk, please? And also, you're done, Supervisor DeNise? You have further discussion on your motion? I just wanted to say that. Your I, amendment, rather? I, I just wanted to say that we've got people here that, that have problems with the sanctuary. It's been, they're hung up on the words. I believe Mr. Buckley <coughs> brought that up. I think this minor adjustment fixes this. And yet we're still upholding a constitutional amendment. If we want to, if we want to uphold the constitutional amendments, the right to free speech, the, right, the freedom of religion, all those other ones, bring a resolution. Let's take it. We'll take it to executive, and we'll bring that forward, and we'll go through that way. I understand that. Supervisor Denise has Sorry. the floor. Okay. Anything further, That's, Supervisor? No, I'm going to leave it at that. If you clear your light, please, we'll Thank discuss you. your amendment that's before us. Vote on the amendment. <clears throat> well, well, there's lights lit. Supervisor Van Dyke, there's only six more lights, don't worry. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll be very quick, but I think that, um, you know, Supervisor Delorier brought this forward, and I've heard him say on a couple of occasions this evening that, you know, his preference would be that you either – vote for what's here or you don't. And I agree with supervisors, this isn't our purview, but we're going to spend hours here trying to wordsmith this thing, and, and I do appreciate the change that Supervisor Denise just made. But, I mean, it is what it is. Either either you agree with it and vote for it, or you disagree with it and, and vote it down, but let's stop trying to manipulate it so that the half that doesn't seem to agree with this that somehow or another we can wordsmith it that we're going to get their support for it and then water down what it means in the first place. And Supervisor Dory has said a couple of times, look, either vote for it or vote against it. If you vote against it, he's perfectly fine with it, but he doesn't want it watered down from where it's at right now simply to be able to garner a couple more votes. Did second it. To be, I, I get it. And, I, and, and again, I appreciate that, but who knows if that's the last change. We might have ten more you know, in order to, to, to pull another vote or two in here. But it's like, let's, let's vote with what's there. And, and the last thing I want to say is, you know, we've had a couple of people comment about, you know, the confusion that this causes. And it strikes me that a lot of the supervisors that are talking about this confusion supported an amendment on marijuana that also caused confusion because some people thought when we passed that referendum that marijuana was legal in Brown County. So, I mean, we were okay with confusing the public on that issue, but we're not okay with confusing the public on this particular issue. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. If you clear your light, please. Supervisor Erickson. Thank you, Chairman Moynihan. I'll be very quick on this. Uh, after 
uh, listening to Supervisor Linson, uh, he made a lot of sense here, and I, th I, I think along the same lines uh, as the last changes were. I think when we look at our title, and I don't know if that's a title carved in stone or what, but we could have uh, a resolution declaring Brown County to be a Second Amendment county. Just take sanctuary out. The rest of that page one is pretty much so okay. We could re completely remove that last whereas. Right, but that's a different amendment. That's We're on this amendment. amendment. Okay, can I make can I make it? Not, not no. yet. We have to act. All right, on we got to vote on it first. Okay, I'll do that then. Thank you. Clear your light, please. Supervisor Linton on the amendment. He's not there. Oh, beautiful. Go ahead. He's done in the spring. Supervisor Buckley. I'm not a constitutional scholar, nor do I claim to be, nor do I think anybody that came up to talk really claimed to be a constitutional scholar, even though they were subsequently made fun of as they were just trying to give their interpretation of what they read, which is disappointing that we've had supervisors mock the people that came up there to express their feelings on the Second Amendment. So getting to the point of this amendment, I think it's a small amendment that maybe uh, helps clean up a little bit of this this resolution. Um, but more importantly, I, I think our Corp Council gave us what we're going to do with this resolution if something does, in fact, happen. I mean, we had people throw out that we're going to <laughs> do, we're not going to uphold our oath of office and, you know, go against all the laws of the United States or something. I, I, they were going down trying to really um, set this thing off into a different track because they don't want to take the hard vote. For some people, this is a hard vote. This is going to define who they are. And guess what? There's an election coming up. So some people don't want to take that vote, so they're deflecting. So let's keep it simple. Let's just vote it up or down. Let's get it done. But we do have we do have options. You know, when we look at it, it's opposition to the enactment of any legislation. It doesn't say we're going to do anything illegal. We're not going to instruct the sheriff not to do his constitutional oath. It doesn't say that. So let's not get hung up on what it doesn't say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Clear your light. Use the board. Okay. On denies amendment. On denies amendment. amendment. Which, in the last whereas, after the word sanctuary county, strike as and in, include meaning that. Supervisors Dwayne, Nicholson, Grzynski, Lefebvre. Oh, sorry. Supervisor Van Dyke. Supervisor Vanderleest. Vanderleest! <laughs> Too much walking around. <laughs> this this is on the amendment. Supervisor denies men, amendment. And the amendment is defeated. We're back to the we're we're. All right, we're back to the main motion. Any further discussion? S Supervisor Shadwell. So what? Wait, wait. So. Are you gonna amend this again? No, 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 no. All I want to say is that 
I support the Second Amendment. I support the Constitution. I say support the Second Amendment. But I am on the ethics board, and I have to follow our ethics ordinance. And it talks about impartiality, and the word sanctuary, I have just seen tonight from our audience, and I'm sure at the Brown County public at large, that the word sanctuary is a divisive word, and people put different meanings to it. We just defeated an amendment that said what it meant. That should tell you that the only thing we should be passing is a therefore be resolved that the Brown County Board of Supervisors declares the support of the Second Amendment of the Constitution and the State of Wisconsin Article 1, Section 25. That is my oath of office, and that is all that I will support in the resolution. Because anything else, you're opening yourself up. I cannot believe people voted against Supervisor Bresky's a motion to affirm our oath. That... No, I'm just saying, though, that that's something. So understand you can support the Second Amendment. Oh, I have the floor. I haven't spoken yet on anything. You can support the Second Amendment. You can support the Constitution. But the word sanctuary and the differing meanings and the different connotations and the different beliefs that you're supporting is the crux of the problem that we've had tonight. It is simple. We should either remove the word sanctuary or you should not, um, no, no. Here's, yeah. or I would vote no and then I would support a resolution that said, I declare my support for the Second Amendment of the Constitution and the State of Wisconsin, Article 125. But that's why, I just wanted to say why, because I have to be where I'm at on the ethics board. If you clear your light, please. Yeah. No other lights are lit. Use the board. It's the original. It's the original. It's the original. Eleven E's before us. So, Vice Chairman Lynn. And it is defeated. Then I, yeah. <laughs> it's done. Okay, we move on to approval of minutes of December 18th. Motion to approve by Supervisor Nicholson, seconded by Supervisor Tran. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. Announcements by Supervisors. Any announcements? Supervisor Borchert, announcements by supervisors. Thank you. Um, I would like to make everybody aware that January is um, Human Trafficking Month. Um, in, we oppose that. No, we do not oppose that. We, we oppose um, human trafficking. Yes, we oppose human trafficking. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. It's been a long day. Um, I would also like to uh, make aware, hang on just a second, that on, if anybody is interested in helping out to do the point in time count for housing and homelessness, um, it's with all of our shelters that's taking place on January 22nd into January 23rd. 23rd. Um, it starts at midnight at M New Community Shelter. Um, if you have questions or concerns or are interested in volunteering, please let me know. Um, I can put you in contact with the people that are in charge of doing that. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Clear your light, please. Vice Chairman Lynn. Oh, I was just going to say that it's uh, 27 more minutes. It's still uh, Sheriff Delane's uh, birthday, and we wish him a happy birthday. <laughs> Super, Supervisor Buckley, announcements. February 1st, it's a Saturday. They're all invited to the Gambler game. The Gambler game, the Gamblers are hosting the law enforcement community and the fire community in 
in a um, fundraiser, each have their own uh, camps, the, the uh, like kids' camps of fallen officers, kids that they come each year um, to raise money for these camps for the firefighters and the the um, law enforcement. There's going to be the, uh, special jerseys like they do for military night that will be auctioned off at the end of the night. There's T-shirts that are made up where uh, proceeds are going to that fund as well. And then uh, different things like the chuck puck and all that. All those funds will be going towards um, the police and fire um, groups. So I'd like to invite everybody out for that night. It'll be a good night. I'll be there. So Very good. come on out. Thank you, Moynihan's sir. buying beers. It's an Ashwaubenon. Yeah, yeah, right, so. right, right. If you clear your light, please. No other announcements. Any late communications? Any late communications? Supervisor Tran. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is for pd and Request to have the DNR give um, Brown County a report on the PFAS contamination issue in Brown County, if any. Um, public safety. Establish a master plan for the future of the downtown jail. <coughs> Executive committee. Send a resolution to the state in support of abolishing the statute of limitations and reporting of sexual assault. And I think that's it. Sexual assault, assault. to executive? I don't know. That would public go safety? to public safety. Public safety. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Tran, can you uh, clear your light, please? Supervisor denies late communication. I think this would go to public safety and admin uh, motion to take $5,500 from the contingency fund and transfer to emergency management to be used for dealing with education and notification of Brown County citizens of the pending spring flooding. Very well. Thank you. Public safety it is. When you return to your desk, can you clear your light, please? Supervisor denies. Supervisor Hoyer, late communications. Uh, thank you. Uh, to make a resolution in support of removing the personal okay. exemption for vaccines uh, to be sent to Madison. Uh, so, uh, oh, health, good. Uh, the health board. Oh, oh health board. That oh boy. You got it. Clear your light, please. Oh, you did. No, you're still there. Supervisor. No, you're still there. Supervisor Delorier, late I, communication. I have two. Uh, first one to exec to be put on the agenda perhaps after the report of uh, Corp Council and admin that Brown County cease their use of any messaging or social media platform that has the potential to create official records until a centralized mechanism is in place to capture the records and safeguard from user deletion. Excuse me, if the gentleman would yield, didn't we yes, sir. just take that up a month or so ago? It seems like the same language. The report is coming back for next exec committee and I wanted to make sure there was language that was actionable oh, after, okay. after that report. Very well. And it may not it may not be actionable after that report. Okay. I just need it on the books. Gotcha. So to exec after the agenda item for the report. And the second one is for Corp Council to carry out the request of any county supervisor for Wisconsin County's Association legal advice or legal opinion on pending or potential county business the supervisor is working on. This advice being a free member benefit of the WCA. That exec as well? It's up to you. Co Corporation Council falls under the, the executive committee. Executive. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Clear your light, please, sir. Uh, next up, Supervisor Nicholson, late communication. Thank you, Moynihan. Review the ordinance on public comments with possible action. Oh, to remove? I'm not sure what I'm not sure what you're asking. What did you write? Well, that's a problem. <laughs> Review the ordinance on public comments with possible action. Okay, executive it is. Clear your light, please. Uh, next up, Supervisor Borchard, another late communication? Oh, no, late communication, I should say. Correct. Uh, to recognize January as Human Trafficking Month here in Brown County, uh, Health and Human Services. Or to exact. What, what are you asking? Again? Just to recognize January as human. So you want a proclamation? Month. Yeah. 
course, it'll be February by the time we get back. It's now. fine. Going forward, then oh. next year we kn we know it. Oh, I see what so, you're saying. Okay. Um, and then um, for, to exact uh, that Brown County supports state legislation that addresses PFAS in Wisconsin that will properly regulate, educate, and clean up contamination she did in that for Northeast Wisconsin. And the state. This goes to exactly. Supervisor Tran just did that for PDNT. That would be for PDNT. It's got to go to the right committee. There's already state legislation out there. So, okay. Well, P send it to PDNT. PDNT. Yeah, well, you, you can hash them out. Right. Supervisor Nicholson, would you clear your light, please? You Thank you, sir. Any other late communications? Seeing none, we'll move on to number seven, confirmation appointments by the county the executive. Uh, the reappointment of Tom Collins, appointments of Christopher Lehner, Todd Delane, Stephanie School, uh, Chad Roethlisberger, Bob Meyer, Adam Butry, and Edmund Forrell to the Local Emergency Planning Committee. A motion to approve by Supervisor Nicholson, second by Supervisor Dantine. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, that passes. I uh, shall waive the chairman's report this evening. I, I, I ask the uh, county executive not to filibuster this evening. You are up, sir. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is excited uh, about the Packers being in the playoffs. Yes, go Pack Go. Uh, this Friday, we will be celebrating down here in the downtown area to um, give the Packers a send-off. So if you are available and are interested in coming down and joining that. I know there was a few supervisors last week, uh, so you're, of course, welcome to come downtown and help us uh, do a pepper rally. That will be at 3.30, right over here at the Hare Trail on the corner, I believe, what is that, Cherry and Washington Street. Um, there is, and if for those who have constituents, especially if you're doing doors right now, uh, the census is looking for part-time employees. They'll pay between $19 to $21 an hour. Uh, and so if you know anybody that is looking for a part-time job, uh, uh, it's temporarily, uh, we, we really need to have the census uh, workers out there. I think all of us understand the importance. There's roughly $675 billion that is allocated by the federal government to municipalities, counties throughout the United States. And the, the data that's collected through the census ultimately allows for us to be able to collect those dollars. Uh, it also is what decides your districts. So I remember Supervisor Delane going, hey, how did my district get so big at the last redistricting? Well, and the important part of that is, right, so the importance around that, Supervisor Delane, is that everybody needs to get counted that is in your community. Um, more importantly, in the end, as I stated, it's really critical for us to get these numbers because it ultimately helps fund education, infrastructure, health care, and so forth and so on. So April 1st is when those emails, when those things, so each week, each month, I'm going to kind of remind everyone about this. But the main thing is right now they need workers. So if you have anybody in your area that's interested, contact our office. We'll get you the information. Um, as you're probably aware, uh, f flooding is going to be a major issue um, in the in the spring. I can tell you that from the county's perspective, uh, emergency management, public works, the sheriff's office, 911, parks, anybody that has a county asset that potentially is at risk of flood damage or uh, utilities or infrastructure, we are meeting um, and we're discussing. What's going to be important, of course, is that when we do have an event, and we all hope that it doesn't happen, but when we do have an event, that we have the ability to communicate to our residents on how to best manage that. So please keep an eye and watch on what's happening. Please talk to through the Public Safety Committee about what is being prepared. Uh, on our website, uh, there is information that will be available for residents to find if in the event that they find themselves in a situation. Uh, but right now it's time for us to really look at it. The water table is high. Uh, Dean Hain from the port sent a report that said that the Great Lakes is going to be at record high levels, and they anticipate that to be the case through June. And so 
we just need to be prepared and we need to start planning for this so needless to say uh, as you're out there again when you're out meeting with your constituents during this election period uh, make sure that you're able to communicate um, especially if you're in that area of flood zone um, areas um, we wanted to say thank you to Supervisor Tran, uh, Supervisor uh, um, Brusky, uh, Borchart. Um, there were some people that were here in the audience earlier. Uh, Supervisor Hoyer, um, the Sh Nancy and Mike, Sh I can't sit, Slice. They all came out, and Supervisor Shadwell, they, they all came out to the veterans event on the Monday night football game. Uh, and, and served a meal for the veterans at the Veterans Manor. And, um, I know a lot of people were excited about that game, and um, a lot of people decided through you know taking that time to go out and serve uh, the veterans of our community at the Veterans Manor. So I just wanted to say thank you for continuing that going forward. Uh, email went out. Um, this is kind of some people know Chuck Lamine. Is Chuck still here? Hi, Chuck. Uh, Chuck has been with the county, and we'll, we'll do talk a little bit more about this in February, but an email went, did go out uh, notifying of his, re his retirement uh, come in March. And so I just wanted to publicly say thank you to Chuck. Um, <laughs> Chuck was uh, near and dear to the redistricting when I first came into the office. And look at your, you're getting out right at the second round right now. Uh, needless to say, uh, I think we all know Chuck for a long time. And so when you get a chance, give him a call, say thank you. Um, obviously, he'll be at one more PD&T meeting, maybe two, I'm not sure. But needless to say, thank you, Chuck. Uh, and last thing I wanted just to uh, talk about quickly and briefly, and I, I apologize for taking so much time. But as you know, in your packet, uh, I did not sign the resolution under the rumble strips. Uh, primarily for the purpose of allowing this to be the sense of the board. Uh, you've taken a position on how you feel that the county should uh, address rumble strips, specifically in distance, uh, and that puts our highway commissioner in a, an interesting predicament. Um, things should be looked at from a case-by-case -case position or situation, and so the board passed a recommendation of this is what we feel is a sense of the board and we want to make sure that administration understands that so uh, we are going to do this more more often more frequent because in the past nine years the board has taken some positions that quite honestly I'm not sure if I agreed to that position and I don't want to exercise when it's a sense of the board and it has no fiscal um, impact on the county nor are you asking the administration to do something uh, specifically, it's not it's not my right to take away your ability to pass a resolution that says this is the sense of the board and this is what we'd like to see. So I just wanted to clarify that. Had a good conversation with Supervisor Delore, who called and asked why didn't I do it. He uh, we, and we had a conversation around it. So I wanted to make sure the board understands that we appreciated from the administration standpoint the discussion and debate that took place. And ultimately, I think the compromise is what came about it, where when Rumble Strips decisions come forward, we're going to bring it to a, another committee that is made up of professionals to make that determination and take the politics out. Because in the end, I, I understand the predicament that these individuals were living through or are living through with having the Rumble Strips landed there and by their homes. Uh, but as a county, we're looking at the region, we're looking at the traveling public, and we have other things that we need to take in consideration. So needless to say, good night, and thank you for uh, well, you allowing can, me a few minutes. you got to hang with us, yeah. No, I'm going. I'm <laughs> okay. Okay, well, we got a way to, we, we got a, a way to go yet. Uh, when I asked to amend the agenda, I was remiss by not including 11F after 11E. We have some, we have some citizens here that have been waiting for that. And I'd like to suspend the rules to allow uh, we take 11F. Yeah. Made by uh, Vice Chairman Lynn, second by Supervisor Sever. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Okay, we're going to 11F. That is uh, ordinance to create Chapter 15 in the Brown County Code of Ordinance entitled Redistricting Procedure.
I'll accept the motion. Motion to approve by Supervisor Sieber, seconded by Supervisor Hoyer. Supervisor Sieber, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would urge uh, passing of this resolution. The Citizens Redistricting Committee worked very hard on this. I'd like to thank uh, the chairman of that committee, Supervisor Linson, as well as Supervisor Lund, uh, and a number of citizens that spent a lot of time working on this ordinance. Um, with that being said, I do have um, four uh, amendments to make. I'm just going to try to make them all in one resolution or one motion, and if we need separation, we can certainly do that. Um, what it basically is going to do, um, what it's basically going to do is just add back in that the Citizen Redistricting Committee uh, select a map that planning creates and forward that selection onto the county board as a recommendation. That's basically what these amendment, this uh, motion is going to do. Um, so the official motion reads, reinstate, uh, quote, and shall recommend one of them for passage, end quote, at the end of the last sentence in 15.05 drafting procedure, and reinstate second sentence in section 15.06 voting procedure, which reads, quote, the recommended map shall be voted on prior to any other map being voted on, end quote. And then the, these last two are just um, very simple housekeeping items on the resolution. Uh, the third one is strike uh, the desire in line four of 15.03 of mapping criteria. And the final one is add, uh, quote, and planning staff on, end quote, after committee in line three of section 1507 elected officials behavior. Uh, what that last one does basically is to uh, not allow uh, supervisors to have contact with the uh, Citizens Drafting Committee nor the planning staff who's actually drawing the maps. Uh, so those are my motions. Second. Second by Supervisor Hoyer. Under discussion. Uh, Supervisor Tran. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, for 15.03, I would like to change the number of two. We already to have I a motion. Yeah, we have to oh. dispense of these first. Okay. Uh, if you clear your light then, please. Supervisor Linson. Uh, I would just uh, urge the approval of these. Um, I, I sat through all these meetings as the chairman, and uh, I was with the executive committee. I believe the only one that had some contention was the one in 1506. The rest are just housekeeping. There was some uh, things were bounced back and forth between uh, the executive committee and corp council really quickly, and there was a lot of changes made each time. Uh, these are just, uh, outside of the one in 1506, these are just uh, correcting, I think, what were just misunderstood uh, or, or changes that were made that um, uh, I, I think the supervisors just didn't, or on the executive committee just didn't quite, uh, I think this was their understanding. This is just clarifying those understanding. I think the only one that was contentious was the one in 1506, which was a, a, a very close vote. Um, so I, I, I would urge that these be passed. I believe these changes reflect uh, what the citizens and the Citizens Redistricting Committee had wanted, um, and I believe uh, they should be reflected in the ordinance that we actually vote on. Thank you. Thank you. Clear your light, please, on the amendment. Supervisor Buckley. <clears throat> so I have a, an issue when we're trying to keep out undue influence by supervisors, but yet we're putting it in here and we're adding a different layer of influence. Now, I, I have no problem with the citizen group wanting to um, help put in parameters, help um, give suggestions, as they did, but what I do have a problem with is having them come out with a recommendation them solely as a singular group as a recommendation and then on top of it we have to vote on that one first that to me is undue influence I actually that's just direct influence and in trying to sway the supervisors de decision on the maps you know in the past and as I talked to um, Chuck earlier tonight, whether they come up with two maps, four maps, six maps, they bring them in, they give a justification of an, an understanding of why those maps came out that way, and let the supervisors do their job and vote on the maps. But if we're going to come out and have one group suggest, just one group made up of how many people? How, how big is the group? Five people representing the whole county 
on this is the map we're supposed to do. To me, that's actually more um, contentious than because I mean, that's direct influence on on our voting, and and then to have to vote on it again first before we even vote on the other maps. There there rhyme or reasons be, why each map would be um, put up, whether it be population, whether it be um, changes in, in boundaries. As I've said through this whole course uh, on, on the redistricting, let planning do their job. If we want to put down parameters for them, fine. But let them do their job. Let them bring it to us. Let us decide without any influence whatsoever. And that's why those were cut at the executive committee, cut out at the executive committee. Thank you. Thank you. Clear your light, sir. Next up, Supervisor Caster on the amendment. I too would also uh, like to see us uh, turn this down. Um, I was there at the last redistricting. Did it? Was there a lot of discussion? Yeah. Yeah, there should be. Um, was there a lot of disagreement? Were there a lot of different maps? Yeah. I hope there was. Um, there are already a lot of uh, state, federal, court rulings. Everything's laid down, all the criteria. <coughs> I don't really think we need a committee to come in and say how uh, the, the county should be divided. Um, or redistrict. Um, it's it's everything's already laid down. Um, there's only a small group of people that is interested in this, uh, and they seem to be very interested in it. Um, I'd be interested in having this redistricting done, having the planning department do their job without any influence from anyone. Um, that's all I've. Thank you, sir. Thank Clear you. your light. Supervisor Evans. On the amendment, um, <clears throat> well, I'll, I'll just say all of this at one time. So, on the amendment, I certainly don't under support. I I didn't support this to begin with. So, I mean, so to speak against everything, this is kind of because in the beginning I didn't. But I got to tell you, uh, this is really. I'm not supporting it. First of all, one, it abdicates any responsibility or authority we have as a county board. I know this county board really likes to do that. Um, we like to, you know, weaken the county board as much as we can with all sorts of uh, of different things that we've passed, and that bothers me. And, you know, we don't want to give no pay raise, and we want to get rid of our staff and all all this stuff, and because it's all, you know, mash. Oh, wow. But so the other, so the second thing, is, I don't think we can abdicate. Isn't it against state statutes to have them just come back with one format. statute? No, they're saying they're only presenting one. They can't do that, right? We can't. It says you recommend. Well, I don't know, but that doesn't make anyways. So I appreciate. What I feel bad about is all the people that put in their time and effort. So I think put in, people put in a lot of time and effort to to do this. And I mean, and if it comes back, county board wants to do it. I'm not. Gonna, I will t tell you. So many people weren't here in the last redistricting, um, and. I just appreciate how the county executive said he won't sign anything as it as at the recommendation of the board or the sense of the board with rumble strips. But you remember the county board passed, and I think we we're going to add three supervisors, and then the county executive vetoed it. You might remember that, and then we didn't come, and then we had to go back, and we were in front of Judge Atkinson. Remember that? That happened the last time as well. Went to the city of Green Bay when we had it that Supervisor Vanderlees and Supervisor Burnett were going to be put together, but then politics got involved because uh, some, you know, maybe this takes it out, but I don't know. I, th I think it's going to be messed. But then it was put in for. Then the city changed it because they have to make sure that this committee understands that they need to go to the municipalities as well because. The city controls a lot of what happens with our districts. So I've got my Taylor Street nice to the west and Bond Street nice to the north, Oneida Street nice to the east, and Mason Street to the south. Oh, except for those three little streets that they put in, you know, to put me with Jesse Brunette. I mean, so uh, this thing about elected officials' behavior, elected officials are forbidden from consulting? I, I have, I'm, I'm elected 
for all sorts of things. But now, because of some redistricting, I'm forbidden. You want to talk about a mess? Well, if you see, if I see somebody in the planning department or somebody on the committee or whatever, hey, how's it going? Things like that. Well, the next thing you know, oh, there's an ethics charge because somebody, oh, this is all bull. It, elected, elected officials are forbidden from consulting with or discussing the citizens' draft committee, any aspect. Or dis, uh, read it, yeah. This is, that is really malarkey and that really should be out of there. I don't know what you think, Corporation Council, but I think that really can potentially set some people up for some some shenanigans and some problems. I mean, I have a real diverse district, and I'd be more than happy to go. I mean, I have, I, you know, I've got, like, Western Avenue, Shano. I mean, that's a lot different than uh, the other part of my uh, areas where I have, you know, some of the... And and I tell you, it's... Uh, th I just don't like any of this stuff. I didn't like it from the begin with. Um, I think it's the county board's responsibility to work with the uh, planning department, I appreciate that we have this, but anybody, any citizen can put in uh, uh, district maps for redistricting. So keep that in mind. And I, I, I don't even know if in state statute we can really even give this authority. Can we, Mr. Chair, or Corp Council? I mean, I have some issues with this. Authority to vote on the ultimate map, so I think that's what saves it, you know, so I believe yeah. the ultimate maps. But it's my understanding. What was it? Wasn't it saying that we're? Are they, are they going to be presenting us with four maps? I'm not supporting with it, anyways. Is that the understanding? Was Seabird just put in? Was it one or four? Four maps recommended one. So they so they're going to give us four maps, but we only see one, or do we see all four? Yeah, it doesn't matter. So I, I tell you, it doesn't matter to me because I didn't support it to begin with. I know how this is because I'm the guy that got a shaft last time. I feel bad for the people that came and and, and put in all their time and effort because. I'm not going to I mean, everybody, there might be 25 yes and me no, so I want to apologize for the people that put their time in. I voted against this before you were even put on the, the committee, so uh, I was against it. Well, and there were people on the committee I voted against because there's some people that uh, don't necessarily care for me on that committee. And so uh, I know you find that hard to believe, but <laughs> especially me, right? He loves me. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Burn a few bridges, right? Um, so I'm not supporting any of this. You can make whatever re you can make whatever you want. I'm not supporting this. I think uh, we take the responsibility on as a county board, and, and we do it. But once again, a lot of people on this county board are more than happy to abdicate any sort of authority we have, or power, or, or responsibility. So I'm not supporting any of this, Mr. Chairman. So Thank I you, won't sir. be speaking any more on this. Thank you. Thank you. Clear your light, please. Next up, Supervisor Hoyer. Uh, thank you, Chair Moynihan. Just want to say that I'm very much in favor of it. I encourage people to really take a careful read of it because in terms of abdication, this isn't uh, uh, an overwhelming uh, abdication of things. We're just having the coordination. I think it adds some really great things to the process, uh, and uh, I hope you vote for it as well. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Sieber, second time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, very briefly, I'd just like to address why I think this is uh, important to add this language back in. Um, if, if 10 maps are presented to the county board without a recommendation and nine of them have, uh, you know, me drawn out of the district, but I got 14 votes to pick the one map that puts me back in my district, you know, I don't have to explain that at the county board. I can just get the 14 people to vote for that. Um, I would much prefer that the redistricting committee select a map, bring that forward, and then the county board supervisors have to discuss the merit of that and why they disagree with that committee. Uh, obviously, the power to draw these lines is with us. Uh, this does not take that power away. What it does do is create a very fair and independent and open process in how those lines are drawn. So thank you very much. I hope you would support this uh, amendment as well as the resolution. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If you clear, please. Vice Chairman Lund. Mm. Supervisor Siebert, I would say that that if they bring us four maps and rank one of them as their top map, and we have the right to vote on the map or not vote on the map, I mean, I don't think we should uh, be putting the county board at the, what if that map is just bogus? You know, and we have other maps of, that are better and, uh, and define the process better those are the maps that we should vote on. I mean, I don't see why we, we have to vote on a map that we don't know 
you know, I think they send us four maps. Yeah, we're going to have to vote on one of the maps to decide. <coughs> or if we don't like all the maps, we'll just vote them all down and, and have them draft a new map. But I, I don't think we should get caught up in the minutia of this. I think we should pass it so that uh, pass it the way it was passed at the executive committee because that was a compromise to get this thing passed by the board. I don't want to see it n fail and we go back to, to having the chairman talk to the, uh, uh, to the staff and, uh, and put together the maps and, and the whole thing was uh, really a very underhanded type thing and then it came out to us not, and we not are, this chair not not you <laughs> but before and it could happen again i i just think that it should be uh should be done this way so that we have something solid to work with instead of having some somebody with their own agenda behind the scenes putting together the maps i don't think that serves the people of brown county very well so Thank you, sir. Where I'm at. Thank you. Clear yeah. your light, please. Okay. Supervisor Van Dyke. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't have a big problem with the changes that were made, but I do think that there are, I guess we have to vote on these, and then I do believe there are additional, a couple of additional things that, that have to be cleaned up because to to the point that Supervisor Sieber was making the way it reads right now if you read 1505 it says the citizens drafting ad hoc committee shall submit a minimum of two of the four maps to the county board chair so it it doesn't address I mean if there are eight maps that are drafted the advisory committee is only obligated to send a maximum or minimum of two the other six go away they're not presented to the county board as this is written. So the comments that all of the maps are going to come to the county board is not, in fact, the way that this language is written. All you're going to get is two maps, minimum of two. You might get four. You might get whatever. But that's up to the discretion of the committee. So if that's what you want, that's fine. But I think there was a misstatement about the fact that all the maps that our planning does and gives to them are going to come to the county board. That's not, in fact, the case. So I'll probably be looking to clean that up as a another amendment, I guess. Have it written, written out ahead of time. If you clear your light, sir. Supervisor Linson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I want to clear some stuff up. I didn't think we were going to need to do this on the amendment, but I, I think it's probably appropriate to, to address this now. Um, this I, I just want to give a little bit of history because I know a lot of people weren't involved with the the subcommittee, uh, the citizens subcommittee. Uh, we spent about a year uh, researching and reviewing and discussing uh, the issues that were of interest to the people on the committee. Uh, members of the public came in and spoke about this. Um, uh, a lot of research was done on this. Uh, a lot of the the basis for this redistricting. Uh, ordinance is based on best practices. Uh, a lot of it comes from recommendations from the State Legislative Reference Bureau. Um, some of the language comes from there. Uh, it also comes from a number of different think tanks that specialize in this type of uh, policy discussion. Um, the, the, the ordinance that came to the Executive Committee was a little bit different than this. There were some uh, different things that the Citizens Redistricting Committee wanted that not necessarily all the everyone wanted, but it was uh, an agreed upon compromise. It was forward. Uh, executive Committee took some of that out. Um, I don't necessarily disagree personally with some of the changes that were made. Um, it was then referred over to Corporation Council for amendment uh, to, to put it in resolution form and to make some of those changes. And when Executive Committee got the ordinance back, uh, there were several significant changes that were made uh, to the ordinance that I don't think the committee ever told anybody to make. Uh, a lot of that stuff came from administration, uh, from their own volition. I'm not sure why some of those changes were made. That, that change from two to four maps, 
Um, that was not in the original ordinance that, that uh, Mr. Van Dyke brought up. I don't know when that really popped in. The change about removing the county planning staff from the elected officials' behavior, I think, was just a typo that wasn't caught at that executive committee meeting. So a bunch of changes came in all at once. It all came in at the last second because it was revised at the last second for the executive committee. And I just think some of the changes weren't caught. The, the purpose of these, uh, outside of the discussion on the 1506 one, are really just to put it back to what I, I believe the executive committee intended. Um, it's cleaning up uh, the language in 1503. It's uh, re-implementing the 1507 uh, uh, the county plan staff because there used to be a, a county drafting committee and it was, it was just structured different so some of these things were changed and uh, the names of things were changed and they just weren't put back in into the correct place so that's where that change comes from uh, with regards to uh, the recommendation for the passage I, I don't recall where that got changed because I didn't think that was changed as a <coughs> committee uh, uh, the, I think the really only the content the only contentious one with the the, the um, actual amendments is the the one in 1506 about whether we take the vote on the recommended map or, or not first um, that was something that came out of the citizens redistricting subcommittee uh, the citizens felt that uh, you know the committee was going to present a generally unbiased neutral map they wanted the supervisors to vote on that um, I, I want to correct some incorrect statements from Supervisor Evans that supervisors are giving up their authority. They are. What's your point of order? I, if, if that's your uh, motion to refer. I, I have the floor. I have the floor. <laughs> I have a motion to refer this back to the executive committee by Supervisor Dwayne. Who seconded it? Takes precedence. Who second it? Right here. Supervisor Nicholson. It takes precedence. <sighs> Fine, I'll address that. On referral. Well, we got lights. Well, you got to clear the lights. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's point of order. Uh, you got to clear the lights. Supervisor Linson still has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Addressing the potential referral, the reason I don't want to just refer these back to make these changes is because the change was a was it a 4-3 or a 3-2 vote at executive committee? This isn't going to get cleaned up at executive committee any more than we just addressing it now. That's why I'd like we just take the amendment vote now. If it fails, it fails. If it passes, it passes. I don't think sending it back to executive committee is going to get us a more perfected version. There was all sorts of discussions happening. I just don't think the thing that was presented to us tonight was what I understood the executive committee to have intended. Um, so I am just asking, the, I mean, two of these are just corrections. One is just the recommendation, because without it, there is no purpose for that committee. And uh, the 1506 one, I believe, is the only uh, issue. And if someone has an issue with that, separate. Like, I guess that's fine, but let's not send this back to committee and just redo this again next month. It's not needed. Thank you. Clear your light, please. Supervisor Lefebvre on the amendment. Not for the... Uh amendment let's just vote on what our original motion that we have on the floor and let's take care of this clean it up tonight why are we dragging this on we're gonna probably if it comes back to the committee then it comes back here people are gonna come here and they probably might want to talk and we're gonna drag it out again come on we've dragged out too long let's come on so what are we let's get it done no oh, he, he, he did that was under point of order I can't accept that you have the floor. Okay. Well, I'd like to put it back to that, but let's let's let's. We're still on the amendment. I'm not for the amendment. Thank you. you clear your light, please. Supervisor Dantine on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I can't support the amendment. There's, there's way too many things wrong with this with this amendment, as the resolution as it is. I mean, I can't see giving up giving up power to an ad hoc committee that's going to direct one of our county employees to do our work for, for them. That, that is the way this, this county board works. It's, it's, it's not how a, an advisory committee gets together and makes recommendations to our staff and then the staff can draw them. It's, it's just backwards here. I, I'll, I'll, I won't support that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You clear your light. <clears throat> Supervisor Dantine, if you clear your light, please. Supervisor Grzynski on the amendment. 
Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I support the amendment and I support moving this forward. Um, I just wanted to thank the subcommittee and uh, Supervisor Linson for drafting this and moving it forward. I'd like to thank the people that are still in the audience at midnight that care about this issue, that uh, that support this and support moving it forward. I, I guess with all the lively personalities on the board, I guess I'm kind of surprised we're scared of a recommendation coming from a... Uh, subcommittee uh, <laughs> moving forward. It's, uh, I mean, I think we have all the protection we need written in 15.06. If none of the maps presented pass by this board, then the county board may draft their own map. So, like, if you have all these problems with the way they're drafted and you don't trust the committee and you don't like the maps that were presented, whether it's two or four, the way this is written, we have protection as a county board to go do it ourselves, if that's what we decide to do. Right now, the way this is written, we're getting citizen input, we're going to move the process forward, and uh, we can take the recommendations of the subcommittee. But I don't know. I just think it's funny that like, we don't want to get mixed up in a recommendation from a draft committee. When The way this is written, we have the perfect opportunity as a county board if we so choose to say that we disagree with their position and we're going to move forward with our own maps. So um, I hope you support this amendment and I hope we support this and move it forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Clear your light, please. Supervisor denies. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I can't support this either at this point in time. I've got a little bit of a problem with the whole um, shall recommend them f for passage, especially with the wording prior to that, that the minimum of two of the four maps, um, unfortunately, we come up, you know, I, I know we've, not this particular chairman, but we've had contentious chairman in the past who, who knows who they're putting on a committee, and now you've got a situation where we, the, this board would get two maps, one of them that would be leaning one way or the other, and the other one would be totally unworkable and now here we're stuck and now we're we're back to again we're rejecting the ad hoc committee and and we're we're looking like a bunch of idiots i think some some simple language change here so that we get four maps at least and bring it forth and let's move forward but at, at the way it stands i can't support the amendment thank, thank you, you sir uh next up supervisor buckley on the amendment a second time yeah, I I uh, don't think it's funny. I think this it's serious that we and we need to take it serious that um, we we have to make sure that there is no undue influence from anybody. The maps need to come out the way planning has been instructed to to draw them up. There's input by several different levels of government, and then they've had their committee. They need to bring them out. And we shouldn't be forced to vote on one particular map before we can vote on any other ones. That's not a fair process. So I would encourage to vote against this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> if you clear your light, please. Next up, Supervisor Nicholson. Thank you, Moynihan. I want to make a motion to send it back. Motion to refer back. To refer to back with the changes. That's fine. Is there a second? Second. Second by Supervisor Dwayne. You still have the floor, Supervisor Nicholson. Too many changes. It's almost 1230. Does anybody really have a clear mind? We're tired. We're making amendments. We send it back. We look, re revest at this. We look at it. And what's the rush? Chair, there is no rush. We can take one month to look at this. The executive can look at the changes, confirm whatever needs to be done, take care of it, comes back 7 o'clock at night, and then we take care of it. 1230, seriously. Thank you, Moynihan. Thank you, sir. Clear your light, please. Supervisor Sieber, you already spoke to. Oh, no, that's a new motion. New motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. New motion. I get two more times. I get two more cracks. It's on referral. All right. Are we ready? You got are we ready? Floor. On All right. referral. Just make, I, I, I just make sure I got the floor here. Thank you. Um, we, two, two, 
two points on uh, referral. One, uh, there's uh, citizens that sat through four and a half hours of nonsense to uh, see how we vote tonight. I would, I would appreciate, and I'm sure they would appreciate a vote tonight. The second thing I would say is that we're, what we're simply doing with this amendment is adding language in that the executive committee already took out. So if we send this back to executive, we're going to come back and have this exact same discussion all over again next month, exactly the same thing that we have before us. This isn't to clean up language. This isn't to modify things. This is simply adding language back in that executive took out. So if we send it back, we're going to get this thing back in exactly the same format next month. I think we're close to making a decision on this. I think we should make that decision tonight and not refer it. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Dwayne, would you clear Supervisor Nicholson's device? Okay. Now we get a vote. We have a motion on referral. All those in favor of referral signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Referral is defeated. We're back to the amendments. Okay. Anything further on the amendments? Vote on the amendments. All those in favor of the amendments signify. Oh. Hold on. Supervisor Van Dyke. First amendment? We're on the. Seaver Amendment. I want separation. Can you use the microphone? Yeah, use your microphone. Sorry. <laughs> Couldn't hear me. I you like separation on the change to 15.06, please. Okay. Yeah, so you're okay with the rest? I'm okay with the rest. Okay. We're going to have separation on 15.05? Six. I only asked for separation on 1506, which was to add back the recommended map shall be voted on prior to any other map being voted on. Okay. So the remainder of the amendments, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Use the board. <laughs> well, you could have. You didn't well, you just think. Yeah, you'll get to It's on the amendment. That. Yep. To explain what they're voting on. I need the. Thank you. Yeah, here, you do it. I can't read your writing. <laughs> now, exclude 1506 for now. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Okay, so uh, the motion then would be reinstate. And shall recommend one of them for passage at the end of the last sentence in 1505 drafting procedure. Uh, Van Dyke asked for separation of the second one, so the third one would be strike the desire in line four of 15.03 mapping criteria and add, quote, and planning staff on, end quote, after committee in line three of section 15.07 elected officials' behavior. Voting on those three. Okay, just hold on because you're going to have to read 1506. So that's the three amendments. We have separation on 1506. It's the other three that Supervisor Sieber just read. Use of the board. Okay. Oh, sorry. I'm still on the board. He's trying to run for chair. I'm running for chair. Supervisor Van Dyke. Oh. And it's defeated. We're good at that one. We're good at that one. Okay, uh, now 1506. 1506. It says 1506 is reinstate second sentence in section 15.06 voting procedure, which reads, quote, the recommended map shall be voted on prior to any other maps being voted on, end quote. Use the board. Supervisor Buckley. <laughs> and that's defeated. Okay, let's just go on. Now we're back. Now we're back to what's presented before us tonight. Supervisor Van Dyke. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I hate, I hate to belabor this, but you know, whatever. We're, well, I'm sorry, but you guys, hey. okay, so I'm going to make an amendment. I'm going to make an amendment, okay? No, Supervisor you guys, Van Dyke has a floor. Done. So on 1503, the original was to strike the words, the desire. If you're going to vote for this at all, the, the, those two words don't belong there. Okay, so it's not changing anything. That needs to be there. Then 
I'm suggesting in 1502 to change the number of members from five to seven. Okay. And in 1505, I'm going to change it to read the following. Upon the release of the necessary census data, the director of planning shall select two planning staff members to create a minimum of, minimum of two maps each, comma, within 30 days, period. The director of planning shall send the maps to the citizens drafting ad hoc committee, period. The citizens drafting ad hoc committee shall submit all maps to the county board chair and shall recommend one of them for passage, period. That's my changes. Is there second by Supervisor Sieber? Did I hear that correctly? Supervisor Sieber? Under discussion. Supervisor Tran on the amendments. Okay. Anyone on the amendments? No. Seeing no lights or lit, all those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Aye. Now on the amended resolution. Motion. Motion by Supervisor Sieber, second by Supervisor Tran, Supervisor Buckley. You have the floor. No, no, no. She wants to make another motion. Oh. No. Just a simple one. Set. Supervisor Tran, use your microphone, please. I'm trying. Okay, for 1503, I would like to change number two, um, the current number of supervisors by more than two. I would like it to be an odd number because we have seen tonight there's 13, 13, like all the way, and it's just some good things were defeated. And no, two is not odd. Two is even. It's by more. It's by more than two. So it'll just, be more than two with the way it is. It says so. Can we just more say two. an odd number rather than just? That's your desire. I just can't go quietly into the night. We got to do this. Ninety-seven. I know. Well, I'm no, just saying that. Days now. You know, I just don't like thirteen, so thirteen, and it. What it what defeats, specifically you know? do you want to amend, Supervisor Tran? She has um, the floor. The desire to not increase or decrease the number of the current number of supervisors by more than. We already, <coughs> we already changed part of 1503. What does it read now after Sieber's thing? Sieber's oh, defeated. Oh, Sieber's defeated. What did you change? He left the desire. The desire, which doesn't belong in there, it was just striking those two words. They're they're not supposed to be there. Okay, so you just struck the words. Correct. She wants to change the number. She wants to change the number. Yeah. She has the right to do that. Yeah, it should be just one or three. So no more than three? No more than three, because well, our population didn't really increase that much, I don't think. I want an odd number. I don't care what second? number it is as long as it's odd. Is there a second to the amendment? Is there a second to the amendment? Second by Supervisor Ballard. Anything further, Supervisor Tran? No, thank you. Under discussion? Supervisor Linson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to address this. Uh, the original language uh, was different than what's in yellow. It used to read that uh, we, the number of supervisors shall be 26. That was requested to be changed by the planning director who indicated that some flexibility may be needed uh, to prepare a proper map. Um, which is why the executive committee changed it to, to not increase it or decrease it by number two. Uh, the, I understand what uh, Supervisor Tran's concern is, but this was from planning that hitting a specific number, whether it be even or odd, may be kind of difficult. Um, if, if Supervisor Tran wanted to change this later on, I, I think that's a separate discussion. Uh, but simply changing to three doesn't prevent the situation where we still get an even number of supervisors, because it can still be zero, it can still be plus two, it can still be minus two. In all the situations, the same issue arises. Um, if, if Supervisor the, Linson has the floor. If that is the intention, and we still want to respect uh, what the planning department has conveyed to us as being their concern with the way it had been written, uh, is that uh, at some point somewhere else, we indicate that the number of supervisors shall be odd, but it still has the flexibility. I think it's more of a headache mathematically than it really should be. Uh, so I guess I would oppose that but I think if that's the change that is intended to be made I think that's the way it should be made 
to address concerns from the planning department as opposed to just simply change the number to two to three. If we feel three is appropriate, that's fine, but I don't think it addresses the actual concern of Supervisor Tran. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, clear your light, please. Supervisor Buckley on the amendment. Well, I think I found one thing that I agree with Supervisor Linson <coughs> on tonight, so um, that's a plus. Um, I, I don't think we just, no offense or anything, change the number of supervisors because we have potential for ties. I think it, it does have to go to what planning suggests to us the potential needs are. And, and otherwise, are we really doing it for the good of the community or are we just doing it for votes? So I would, I would be against it. Thank you, sir, for clear your light. Vice Chairman Lund on the amendment. Yeah, I'm gonna oppose the amendment also. I think a lot of times you have one supervisor missing, so you have odd numbers. Sometimes you have two supervisors missing, it's an even number. Very seldom do we have all 26 supervisors in the chamber. During my time on the board, it's almost 18 years. Uh, you could look it over the rosters and you would see that very seldom is there a full roster of supervisors at, at a meeting. So. Um, I would just I would just keep the language as it is. I think that's the language that's least divisive, and just go from there. Thank you. Thank you. Clear your light, Supervisor Shadwell, on the mo uh, amendment. Well, I just want everybody to know that I was the only one here on the board of 43 county board supervisors. So that's history, and I'll tell you that. But what I would say is I understand what Supervisor Tran is looking at but it really does come down to numbers and municipalities. So whatever we write in there, believe me, folks, it's going to come down to the census. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Clear your light, sir. Supervisor Shadwell, clear your light, please. No other lights are lit. All those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. The amendment is defeated. We're back to the amended version. Anything further on the amended resolution? Let's just do a. Uh, He's going to vote no. Use the board. Yeah, let's use the board. We're voting on the, the amended resolution. The whole thing amended. The whole thing amended. I think it'll pass. The whole Supervisor Tran, Vice Chairman Lund. Supervisor Tran. Hold on. And that passes. Sixteen ten. Yay. Okay. Thank you. Moving on, we move on to the report of the administration committee of January second. Motion to approve but yes, sir. I'd like to suspend the rules to take 10A through 10E together unless someone has anything they want to separate. I have a motion to suspend the rules to take 10A through E. e. Seconded by Supervisor Erickson. All those in favor to suspend the rules to take 10A through E signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. You can I make still a motion to approve 10A through 10E so we can uh, get to the resolution. I have a motion to approve. By Supervisor Shadwell, second by Supervisor Tran. Under discussion, anything pulled separately? Right. I just want to pull the executive committee. I just have a. Um, oh, hold on. Which one? Hold on. The one from January the 6th. Executive committee? Yes. The whole thing? No, just uh, number four, uh, letter I. There, uh, I voted to. Uh, you want to make a correction? Yes. I have to find it. It's just a correction. It's just a correction. Yeah, can't, can't. It's nothing. Well, you just have to submit. Why don't you just correct it at the executive committee? Submit a late <laughs> communication. We'll correct it. I'm at not going to be there. We just have uh, to he, on the motion. Supervisor Caster has the floor. On the motion made by Supervisor Buckley, seconds by Supervisor Caster. I voted uh, Buckley, Sieber, and myself voted aye on that. Uh, duly noted. Thank you. That's it. Thanks. All those in favor of the report of the executive committee, number four, aye. Signify by saying aye. 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 Second. That passes unanimously. 
We move on. We move on to resolutions and ordinances. 11A is a resolution approving budget adjustments to various department budgets. I have a motion made by Supervisor Nicholson to approve. Do I have a second? Second by Supervisor Ballard. Under discussion, Supervisor Tran. Um, she just has a correction. There's a correction on a wrong date written. Oh. Okay. December 16th, but they're not. We'll collect that with the clerk. Okay, Supervisor Tran does not want to speak to the motion. Anyone under discussion on 11A? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Next is a resolution to approve state trail connector easement. Motion at N Rec is to approve. Motion at Exec was to approve. Motion to approve by Supervisor Ballard. Second by Supervisor Knizel. Under discussion. Under discussion, seeing no lights are lit, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Next is a resolution to approve electric line easement regarding Fox River State Trail. Motion was to approve at both exec and ad and rec. Motion to approve by Supervisor Sinnott, second by Supervisor Lefebvre. Under discussion, seeing no lights are lit, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Next is uh, 11D, Sense of Board Resolution Supporting Passage of 2019 Senate Bill 460 and 2019 Assembly Bill 513 to create an independent prosecutor motion board. I have a motion to approve by Supervisor Brusky, seconded by Vice Chairman Lund. Under discussion? Under discussion. See no lights are lit. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, we show an abstention from uh, Supervisor Linson on a 11D. The remainder is in the affirmative. Uh, well, we took care of E. We took care of F. And we now move on to G, an ordinance to amend Schedule A of Section 340.0003 of Chapter 340 of Brown County Code. Motion to approve by Supervisor Erickson, seconded by Supervisor uh, Denies. Under discussion? See no lights are lit. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Next is an ordinance to amend Schedule A of Section 340.0003 of Chapter 340, <coughs> Brown County Code. Motion to approve by Supervisor Denies, seconded by Supervisor Shadowald. Under discussion? Seeing no lights are lit, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Next is an ordinance to amend Schedule A of Section 340.0003 of Chapter 340, Brown County Code, Village of Hobart, Town of Pittsfield. Motion to approve by Supervisor Deny, seconded by Supervisor Synod. Under discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. We have no closed session this evening. Such other matters as authorized by law. Is there any late communications? Engage your device. Seeing none, I'll accept a motion to pay the bills over 5000 ending December 2019. Made by Supervisor Grzynski. Did you make that? Who made that? Supervisor Ballard? Second by Supervisor Hoyer. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. We have the closing roll. I'll uh, accept adjournment at this time. Motion to adjourn by Supervisor Dantine, seconded by Supervisor Sinan. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.